What's wrong with that? There's no wrong with it. I'm just not hungry, that's all. You know, you're always hungry. I'm not hungry this flaming morning, all right? Well, all right, all right. Just get yourself in a state. What do you expect after what you've done? Well, what did you want me to do, eh? Roll over and die? There was no need to write a flaming letter. Look, I was stitched up, Jack. And nobody stitches me up, especially a little rat like Holesworth. Yeah, well, you've blown it now, haven't you? Well, if I have, I have. But if I'm going down the pan, I'm going to make sure I've got plenty of company. Yeah, well, what are we going to do? I mean, how are we going to manage on what I earn, eh? But maybe I can get in touch with Curly. He can ring the head office and stop it, say it were a mistake or no. something. No! Fear her! Look, I don't want it stopping. For all I know, he might be in on it with him. Come on, Vera Curly. I honestly don't think he'd know how to fiddle. You are, but as thick as thieves, them two. Vera, there is no way his Oldsworth's going to tell Curly he'd fix the flaming trolley race. It'd be more than his job's worth. Yeah, well, maybe not. But say no, cos I'll fix Oldsworth on my own. Manager's office, Reginald Albert speaking. <laughs> hey, Malcolm Bristow, you old dog. Long time no see, eh? How's things in sunny Middlesbrough? You've what? Head office? My, my, things are looking up, aren't they? Oh, no, 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 things are very quiet in this neck of the woods. Yeah. Trolley dash? Well, yeah, we did, actually, yes. It generated a lot of interest. Yeah, but uh, how come you heard about it? I mean, we haven't exactly broadcast it. You've had a letter? Or, or what kind of letter? That's preposterous, that. Who would spread such sort of stories? Well, what do you mean you don't know? Haven't you read it? Was it unsigned? Well, if you haven't seen it, how do you know about it? Hey, Brendan Scott? What's he doing at head office? No. Hello, Malcolm. No, 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 I'm still here, lad. Yeah. No, I am, I am. I'm very grateful, I'm grateful. After all, to be forewarned is to be forearmed, as they say. Yes, yes, I'm, Malcolm, I owe you one, all right? Yeah, yeah. And I'll watch me front as well. Yeah, I'll see you, lad. Bye. May we remind our customers that frozen chickens are on uh, special Taylor, offer in the meat uh, department. A word. Thank you. Look, Kimberly, we've got to talk. Is this about my transfer? No, it isn't about your transfer. Well, I don't want to talk to you then. Oh, please, Kimberly. What you did to Adrian yesterday was just despicable. What I did? Did you know what he accused me? I don't care. Look, I can't bear it you and him together. Well, we'd just better get used to it. You can't be serious. Not about him. Why can't I? He's nice, he's thoughtful, he's considerate, unlike some I could mention. I've always tried to do what you want. You're joking. You spent most of your time trying to get me to do what I don't want. Oh, and I suppose he doesn't, does he? No, he doesn't. He knows how to treat a girl with respect. Oh, and that's why he was kissing you the other night, was it? I wanted him to kiss me. Oh, look, Kimberly, can't you see what he's up to? Can't you see what he's trying to do? Well, I'd expect someone with a mind like yours to think that. Look, I'm just trying to protect you. Well, I don't want your protection. Now, will you just leave us both alone, please? Ah, oh, Mr. Watts, I've caught up with it. I'll ask a word. Hey, you haven't sent off Miss Taylor's transfer request form, have you? No, no, no. We've got more important things to do today than worry about transfer requests. Like what? Like today, this story is about to be visited by a man I can only describe as a snake. A man so venomous and low, you wouldn't even believe such a creature could exist. He hasn't got a son called Adrian, has he? I wouldn't have thought so, no. Brendan Scott is incapable of reproduction. Uh, it's a one-off. When they cast him, they took one look and threw them all the way. Look, I'm sorry, Mr Holdsworth, but I've got a lot to do. You've got a lot to do? Listen. If I don't move and move quickly, I'm in danger of being about as much use to this store as a pound of bacon ten days past its sell-by date. Better by a special appointed investigator, Brendan Franklin Scott, is at this moment on his way here with the express desire of stitching me up so tightly that when he throws bits at walls, it'll take him four days to unpick the stitches. Special investigator? Exactly. Because there's been, Mr Watts, what I could only describe as an act of calumny. I want an act of calumny perpetrated by a person with a very deep desire to see my downfall. Eh? Yes, Mr. Watts. You see, somebody has sent a letter to head office, and as yet is unnamed, accusing me of wrongdoings and crooked dealings on our recent and much fated trolley dash. A person with a vengeance, Mr. Watts. Hey, hang on. I hope you don't think I've had anything to do with this. Well, I have to be sure. 
Norman. After our little tussle over Miss Taylor and your subsequent threat apropos my wife and Mrs. Fairclough. Well, I I'm shocked that you think I could stoop that low. Aye, I know, lad. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But somebody has, haven't they? Somebody's put their boot in. And I've got very, very little time to prepare my defence. So I'm asking you to man the guns while I'm away, Norman. Will you do that for me, lad? Yeah, yeah, of course, Will. But what I don't understand is why are you getting all worked up about something you didn't do? Because, Norman, lad, nine years ago, I was appointed to carry out a similar investigation at the Wakefield branch of Better Buys. An investigation which I carried out with all fairness and due diligence, and which resulted in the remand and temporary suspension of a fellow manager. A man who, through cunning, managed to shrug off the evidence that I amassed against him and rise to even greater heights at said office. Brendan Franklin Scott. Brendan Franklin Scott. A man sworn to vengeance and a man on his way even now as we speak. Martin says you've got 14 days and he's taken you to court. Yeah, but Alf reckons it's a trial. Look, Sally, don't you think you ought to take professional advice? What, a solicitor, you mean? Well, it's the way things are usually done. But do you know how much they cost? It's better than ending up in court. Gail, it's going to end up in court anyway. Yeah. So you're taking Alf's advice? Yeah. But we can't give him what we haven't got. And Alf says that's the attitude the judge is going to take if it goes to court. So he reckons it win with a chance. It must be driving you both scatty. Oh, it is. I wish Kevin had never met this Mr Seymour blow. I bet. Still, it's not over yet. Alf could be right. Let's make a list, eh? Of your weekly expenditure. Oh, my dear Stan. Well, nappy. Come on, Alf. It'll do you good. Oh, no thanks, Audrey. You know, I'm not in the mood. Well, for the sake of my sanity, honestly, half's driving me mad with his leg in Ken Barlow's flat. No, I'm sorry, you know, I'd come if I felt like it, honest, but I just want to be on my own, OK? I think you're still carrying a torch for my boards when I am. Well, maybe I am. Let it go out, love. Honestly, there's no point in torturing yourself. Well, it's something I can't help, Audrey. Believe me. <laughs> All I normally get this time of day is a cup of tea and a biscuit. 30 years' time, that's all you might be getting. In 30 years' time, that's all I'd be good for. Hard to imagine, isn't it? The pair of us living out our duty to some quiet backwater. Well, as long as the backwater is only a stone's throw from some sun-kissed Caribbean paradise, I won't be all that bothered. I'm convinced you're just wooing me for my money. <laughs> Have I ever denied that? Oh, you're a swine, Baldwin. You know that. No. Nah. You need me. Well, I hope you mean that. Because I'm talking lifetimes here. I'm burning bridges like there's no tomorrow. You and me both. True. Now, I think you ought to leave me. Let me get on with my work. Otherwise, things could get out of hand here. You've forgotten, haven't you? What? The house. We were going to look at the house this morning. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. I've got it in my diary here, look. 11 o'clock. Go with Jackie to look at house. Oh, I hope we like it. I do so want us to have a place of our own. Have to go some to beat the one we got already. You do understand about that, don't you, Mike? Yeah, of course I do. I want us to have a place of our own as much as you do. I think it would have been joint names, though. Because if you ever give me the sack, I don't want to be out of a job as well as a home, do I? <laughs> Miss Taylor! Miss Taylor, excuse me. I'm sorry, you're going to have to cancel your early lunch. Something's come up. I'm sure your, your friend here will understand. Mr Watts, we meet again. Yes. And this time on my territory. Yes, and I must say you do look at home amongst the deodorant and shampoo. Yes, so if you could just resume your post, Miss Taylor. No! What do you mean, no? I'm in charge here, you can't refuse! Well, I am refusing you. Come on, Ed. If you set foot outside these four walls, you faced instant dismissal! Really, Mr Watts, haven't you got anything better to do than bully your employees? That's no. right, you tell him. He's trying to get me to collect them trolleys up and he knows it's a casual's job. My, my, the decisions you have to take when you get to the top, shall we? Miss Taylor! Miss Taylor, I'm warning you! It... 
I assume from your authority there that you're in charge here. Yes, yes. And if it's something to do with the produce, please see one of the assistants. You'll find them in the main body of the store. No, I don't think you understand. Let me introduce myself. My name is Brendan Scott. Mr. Scott. And you must be the young Mr. Watts that I've heard so much about. Well, if you've finished with the young lady, do you think you can show me the way to Mr. Holdsworth's? I'm so looking forward to seeing him again. <laughs> shouldn't be long, Mr. Scott. He, he's probably gone to the bank. Doesn't he let you know where he's going as a matter of course? Oh, yes, yes, uh, of course, usually. So you do observe the company procedures? Uh, to the letter, as a rule. It's just that we've been extraordinarily busy lately. Yes, I've been hearing about some of the things you've been getting up to. The trolley dash, for instance. The, the trolley dash was very, very successful. Did you have a hand in the organisation of that? Oh, of, of course, Mr. Scott. Well, uh, of course, on uh, every venture we uh, undertake, I do try to give Mr. Holsworth my full support. And would you consider yourself to be a loyal employee of Better Buys PLC? Well, I hope my loyalty's not been called into question, Mr. Scott. No one's doing that, Mr. Watts. We know your record and we're well pleased with it. I meant to cast no aspersions, merely to point out that loyalty to the firm isn't always the same thing as loyalty to your direct superior. Area. Well, well I, I would have thought they were one and the same thing, Mr. Scott. Ah, yes. Yes, that's a very reassuring answer, Mr. Watts. I'd be glad to have you on my staff on that basis any time. <laughs> Do you know why I'm here, Mr. Watts? Why you're here? Well, why should I know why you're here? I, I didn't even know you were coming. Absolutely. That's another very good answer. Very... Whoa! Reg! Well, Brendan Scott, <laughs> God, oh, this is an unexpected <laughs> surprise. Well, what on earth brings you to this neck of the woods? A bit far from the old bright lights for you, I would have thought. <laughs> oh, well, we grow older, Reg. We, do, yes. we grow older and we change. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I seem to be sitting in your chair. No, you stay where you are, Brendan. I'm only sorry I wasn't here when you arrived. <laughs> That's all right. Mr Watts has been taking very good care of me. He's been telling me what you've been getting up to, the... Uh, trolley dash you were having? That's fascinating. I was just explaining to Mr. Scott. Yes, yes, he did, yes. Right. Well, I don't think there's any need to keep Mr. Watts any longer. He must have a lot on his plate already. Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Well, go to it, Mr. Watts, go to it. <laughs> Reg and I have a lot of catching up to do. Don't we, Reg? If he goes on once more about that damned ankle, I'm off. I sent him to the pub to cheer him up. He came back worse than he went. What's so interested in that? Jackie Ingram's house is up for sale. Oh, oh look at the price. Yeah, well, if she gets that for it, he sells his flat. They've been rolling in it, a pair of them. Well, he won't sell that flat in a hurry because somebody told me they're not shifting at all. Well, that's where you're on, Gaudry. I went past with the kids Sunday morning. Had a soul sign up. Well, you never said anything about that to me. Well, I thought Baldwin was past tense with you. Yeah, right, right. He is. He's a good lad, that assistant of yours. Solid as a rock, Brendan. Yes, it's good to have men about you who you can trust. You do know what this is about, don't you, Reg? Well, I didn't think it was a social visit, Brendan. I know how keen you are to uh, be about building your empire. <laughs> Nobody tipped you off. Oh, well, that does surprise me. I mean, you're not totally unliked at head office, Reg. You've still got one or two allies left on the lower echelons of the executive suite. Shall we get down to business, Brendan? I do have a store to run. Yes, of course. One so easily forgets when one has climbed the ladder the pressures that fall on ordinary branch managers. However, I will take all that into account during the course of the investigation. Pressure can persuade us all into making mistakes. Oh, I've made a mistake of it, then. Well, I hope that's what it is, Reg. Because if it's not a mistake, it's a deliberate conspiracy to defraud. Yes, well, you'd know more about that than most people, wouldn't you, Brendan? I don't think it does anyone any good, Reg, to rake up the past. 
As far as I'm concerned, your investigation of myself, however inquisitorial and incompetent it may have been, is best forgotten, buried in the past. I bear no ill will. However, my investigation will be performed professionally and without bias. Oh, I'm the one to be investigated, am I, Brenda? Oh, of course, I, I keep forgetting you don't know. Well, for the sake of the record, Reg, I'll tell you why I'm here. We've had a letter, Reg, accusing you of what amounts to dishonesty. It's absolutely ludicrous, that, Brenda. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. And may I ask if this letter's been signed? <laughs> yes, of course it's been signed, Reg. <laughs> You don't think I'd take the time to come up here for an anonymous letter, do you? I wouldn't have even made the effort for a customer complaint of this nature. But this is someone on your own staff, Reg. Someone who claims to have faced you with the alleged deed, which she says resulted in her sacking. Vera Duckwin? That's right, Reg, Vera Duckwin. Oh, no, no, Brendan! The woman's a stirrer! A barrack room lawyer. Nobody gives Vera Duck with any credence. She... Except me, perhaps. Look, I believe you're innocent, Reg. And if that woman's ability to tell the truth is as suspect as her spelling, well, you've got nothing to fear. But you do have to look at this from head office's point of view, Reg. You did sack the woman, you see. That looks bad. Well, if it does look swollen. Aye. Have you been down to the hospital and had it x-rayed? I've <laughs> not a chance of her. I mean, Audrey's supposed to be helping in the shop, but every opportunity she's either down at Caffey, she's over at Gales. Well, you won't be careful. I mean, they do say a bad sprain's worse than a break, oh, isn't aye. it? Everybody's saying that. Oh, hello, Rita. Fancy seeing you here. Fancy. Only matter of knitting pattern, you know. But on that board watching Sally, I thought I might knit our Jack something for his birthday. You know, a sweater or something. Is there something you want to say to me, Vera? Uh, what do you mean? I'm talking about a letter. Oh, has our Jack been opening his big mouth again? No, he hasn't, as a matter of fact. Reg Holsworth. Somebody's written to head office complaining that that trolley dash was a fiddle. Yeah, and so it were and all. I want to know if it were you. And what if it were eh? I were only protecting my future. I see. Nay, hey, Vera. Never mind, nay, Vera. I lost my job on account of her fancy man. You're trying to impress her. You lost your job because you couldn't keep your gob shut. Well, maybe I did, but there again. Happened had cause. I hope you're not inferring that I had anything to do with any fiddle. Well, I never said that. But you won the draw, didn't you? And I might as well tell you here and now, your name's mentioned in the letter. Yes? Only I wouldn't like you going round thinking that I'm doing things behind your back. And I'll get my pattern somewhere else. <laughs> do you know, Brendan, I must admit I find it very strange that head office can spare a man of your elevated status to come up here and conduct an investigation onto what is, let's face it, the word of an unbalanced and bitter ex-employee. <laughs> I can't believe Well, justice must be seen to be done, Reg. And head office takes all events such as these very seriously. I mean, what would it look like in the Sunday papers? Supermarket race rigged by sexy Reg? This is not a joking matter, you know, Brendan. I wasn't joking. That woman, she's a... a a rampant rumour monger. A long term tale teller. That may business. well be so. And if she is, be sure I'll find it out. But you see, Reg, hers isn't the only letter of complaint that we've had. What do you mean the only letter of. Vera Duckworth's was, as they say, the final straw that broke the camel's back. What's all this? Oh, no, no, no. Look, Brendan, Brendan, some of these go back years. Exactly, Reg, yes. So, you see, I haven't come here on the word of a one-off rampant rumour monger. Oh. Ah, there are some very respectable signatures amongst this lot. Firstly, Miss Taylor, I tell you not to go to lunch, which you ignore, incidentally, in front of one of the top men from head office, and I have to tell you, it did not go unnoticed. Secondly, you have returned back to duty seven minutes late. And thirdly, this company does not encourage liaisons between members of staff and their suitors during opening hours. Mr Watts to the manager's office, please. Mr Watts to the manager's office. Thank you. Now get your uniform on and get back on that shop floor. He can be quite masterful when he wants, can't he? He's a pig! 
You weren't saying that a few weeks ago. Well, I hadn't met Adrian then. Yeah. He's quite dishy, isn't he, Adrian? It's a bit Mediterranean looking, if you know what I mean. At least he's decent, and he doesn't spend all of his time trying to get you into bed. And Wimpy Watts did. Interesting. Come in, Norman. Ah, oh, Norman, is it? Well, that's a lot less formal than Mr. Watts. Do sit down, Norman. Right. This won't take long. I just wanted you to know, Norman, that in the light of certain written allegations from various parties, your landlady, Mrs. Duckworth, being one of them, head office in the shape of Mr. Scott here, have decided that they've got no alternative but to instigate an immediate and thorough investigation. And in the light of that, I've had no alternative but to withdraw honourably from the scene while that investigation takes place. Now, uh, I, I have several weeks holiday, Owen, and as Mr. Scott has pointed out, this is probably the time to take them. So, the throne is yours, Norman, so to speak, until the event of my return. Um, keep safe the kingdom, Norman, lad, won't you? Keep safe the kingdom. Aren't we uh, forgetting something, Mr. Holdsworth? Nay. The keys. After all, what good's a kingdom without its keys? No. I only said you paid too much for your perm. You're joking, but I'm telling you, I'm tempted. Oh, I trust you, just when things are looking up, eh? You are. I'm out of work, unemployable, over 40. Looking up, how? It's curly, isn't it? He's your salvation, your guardian angel on the other side. Eh? Promotion, me. He's now El Supremo. Ask him for your job back. Well, I would if he didn't keep avoiding me. I got up early to talk to him this morning, but he'd shot off. Oh, stuff him. Why should I ask him for work? Because you're out of work, unemployable, and well over 40. <laughs> As some of you may know, Mr. Holdsworth is on unexpected leave for a while. What's he mean, we, some of you may know? I Did you know? A bit sudden, if you ask me. On the store will be run as it's always been run, except that I'm in charge. Temporarily. I told you to allay any fears. There was more mystery in that than in a Ruth Rendell. He said to be ambiguous. I couldn't tell him why Reg has been sus why Mr. Holdsworth has been instructed to take holidays. But you told them less, not more. It's the only way to keep a tag on information. Well, keep it up, Norman. Make the store your own. Could be an exercise well spent. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just the holiday relief. Yes, yes, all right, all right, if you like, if you like. But I'll tell you this for nothing. There aren't many better by managers that take that much holiday that soon after receiving that many complaints about their professional misconduct. Whoop, there you go, love. All right. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. Oh, my lot of toast! Oh, God. Sorry, oh, look, can sorry. I do us both a favour? Can I chuck this in the bin? No. Look, so he's sold his flat and she's selling her house. What's it to you? Is this true, Yeah, yeah, of course he is. Oh, look, I stayed in bed for a week when Jessica Morley ditched me in the third year. And then it clicked. I've been completely taken for a mug. There I was spending a fortune. All I got was here. <laughs> oh, come on, Alma. Stop punishing yourself, eh? Yeah, somebody else's problem now, eh? Yeah, too right. And that must be worth <laughs> celebrating. Hmm? <laughs> Reg! I didn't ask you to fix that trolley race so I'd win. So stop talking to me as if we'd planned it together. I knew nothing about it till the mud started flying. Oh, Brendan Scott, the heretic of all humanity. I mean, we've got to think of something quick, Rita. 
Well, there you go again. We. Oui. Look, I'm very sorry about your job, but you brought it all on yourself. Well, I know, I made a mistake. I mean, we can all make mistakes. Look, I made enough of my own without being dragged into yours. I gave the shopping price of the hospital. What more can I do? Hey, hey, that's right, you did, didn't you? So tracks are covered, of course they are. Well, I don't know. You work for them. How sharp are they? But listen to me. I'm even beginning to sound guilty. Oh, see, we used to be good mates, me and Brendan. Till I was elected to uh, investigate one of his misdemeanors about nine years ago. Some scam on cook meat. Oh, they're not letting me out of this one on bandage, Rita. Do you know, he makes the KGB look like the Boy Scouts does, Brendan. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. I'll sleep even less tonight. Oh, no. Oh, no. I swear on the soul of St. Jude, I'll protect your good name with every breath in my body. Reg, hmm? St. Jude's for hopeless causes. Is it? Yes. Well, uh... Who's honesty and integrity, then? I don't know, but whoever it is, Vera Duckworth beat you to it. She's named me as your handmaiden in a poison pen letter to head office. Oh, no! They'd run out of eclairs, so I snatched the last two jam turnovers. Well, I mean, interview? I wasn't expecting a visit, you know. I put everything down I wanted to say in that letter. But you must understand that your letter to head office could be viewed as sour grapes because Mr Holdsworth dismissed you. Oh, well, I wouldn't have complained, would I? If he hadn't have fired me for no. He fired me because I started asking questions. About the competition? Exactly. Oh, yes, he had to ditch me because <laughs> I'd sussed him out. Oh, I'm on your side, Mrs... Um... Duckworth. I understand perfectly that if you wanted to be, well, let's say, covert about informing head office of the incident, well, you wouldn't have put your name to the letter now, would you? No, of course I wouldn't, you're right. Well, I said to our Jack, I said, I don't think people realise what I'm going through. And it were him that had his hand in the till. I beg your pardon? Well, not really the hand, you know, in the till. I'm on about the competition, you know. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, the obvious questions that I have to ask concern the competition winner. Oh, well, I don't know whether I wanted to go Mrs. into that. Mrs Duckworth, it's not something I want to delve into, believe you me. And good evidence can be very painful. But you and I will have no chance of getting a job back if your complaint falls apart. No, no, like it or not, Mrs Fairclough is the mainstay of your allegations. Yep. Oh, hello. Suits you. Beg your pardon? Well, they say they promote people out of palm's reach, don't they? Do they really, Miss Taylor? Mm, mind you, at least it keeps you off the shop floor and away from me. Oh, come on, Kim. I've got stop... about my transfer. Mr Holzer said he was going to deal with it for me. Well, look, as you know, uh, people have to have very good reasons for being transferred. A death in the family, moving house, and you've neither of these, have you? No. But my position here is unbearable and I want to move. Miss Wollstone-Hume to the office, please. Miss Wollstone-Hume to the office, please. Well, I I'm sorry, Miss Taylor. I'm going to have to refuse your application on the grounds that, well, it's just too much paperwork for, for little or no reason. But you can't. I hate it here and I want to go. Well, the only other way around it is for you to hand in your notice. And you don't need me to tell you how difficult jobs are to come by these days. <laughs> Yes, yes. Could you take over from Miss Taylor? Fruit and veg. My pleasure. And what am I supposed to do? Swap with Raquel. Uh, cheese counter. Cheese counter? I hate the cheese counter. You know I do. Oh, I see. I get it. Blackmail. Well, if you think that's going to drive a wedge between me and Adrian, you've got another thing coming. You'll have to do a lot better than that, Mr Watts. I don't think I were ever that young. <laughs> know what I mean? Sorry? Mind you, I'll say one thing for Kim. She certainly knows how to hang on to what she believes in. You're telling me? I'm opposite. You get nothing out of life without a bit of a flexibility. Oh, by the way, I bought you this. Just something to brighten up your office. <laughs> Call it, um, a welcoming charge present.
doing? I am not serving you. What's going on, Jack? He's not in my contract says I've got to betray my family for the likes of him. You haven't got a contract, Jack. Yeah, well, if I had one, I'd tear it up before I'd serve that creep. I just want to talk. Well, you'll talk to me instead. Lager, was it? Yes, please. Give over, Alf. You're all torn. Hammer, you wait and see. Look, you'd no sooner evict Ken Barlow than you'd open half days. Look, got you over a I don't care what folks say, it is still my flat. Well, not in law, it's not. An Englishman's home is his castle until he sublets. He's a tenant, Alf. He's got more clout on his side than the Pope. He's only telling half the truth anyway. I mean, that, that wet ceiling, it's a damp patch about that big. And that rotten bit under the window, he could soon fix that himself with a bit of putty. Picky, picky. Didn't leak his sink. Well, it's always leaked. Nobody else has ever complained. Well, in that case, you want to play on your leg. I can't even walk on it, can I? No, no, what I mean is use it. Eh? I mean, if there's one thing Barlow's not, it's hard face. He'd not take advantage of somebody that limits. Well, it's only swollen, it's not permanent, you know. Look, you're going to have to fork out the brass in the end. I mean, you may as well had it earn a bob or two interest, offset expenses. Yes, sir, Governor. Half a lager, please. You, uh, you new round here? Sorry. No, 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 just uh, passing through. There's no I feel as if I've let Rita down in some way. She must know I would never do anything to her, she must know that. Yes, well, quite... Oh, 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 oh well, we do quite best. frankly, Mr. Holt, Save the there. There. I think you ought to keep a low profile where Rita's concerned. I mean, I don't think she's at all happy, I mean, it doesn't cost anything to put them first, Are you in the business? Retailing. I'm in supermarkets. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm inquiring about a property in Elmgate Gardens. Your final home. You all right? You're fine. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. I'm juggling next time, though, you know. Yeah, well, I'll be down in a minute. Well, can't hear Wait, we're packed. Uh, Martin, please. Yep, yes. Uh, yeah, number 17. And uh, I'd like an early viewing, if possible. And I'd like to go around while it's uh, unoccupied. So if you could arrange from somebody from the estate agent to accompany me. Yeah, today. Uh, Mrs. Um, Mrs. Halliwell. Uh, yeah, H A W -L, L I W E W -L, L. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Well, I'll um, I'll see you this afternoon then. Bye. <laughs> They just vanished. Well, what were you talking about? You. Oh, come on, Will. I was just suggesting that he laid low for a while, because every time he comes and sees you since this blew up, you end up in a foul temper. Well, for good reason, Mavis. Look, I know you mean well, but I'd rather you didn't discuss me with anybody right now, especially in public. I know it sounds paranoid, but Reg Holdsworth got me feeling like Mrs Nixon. Mind your back time. Can I help you? This is Fairclough. Yeah? I wonder if I might ask you a few questions. I really am very sorry you had to wait, but uh, the office is hectic. For a so-called recession, we're selling extremely well. Mainly properties like these. High demand, you see. This is the uh, very spacious hallway. I measured myself, so you can rely on the dimensions being accurate. And I know it's a bit of a joke that estate agents have a job living up to their own descriptions of property, but I'm sure you'll agree that the present owners have maintained it to impeccable standards. It's um, clearly a house of family proportions. I. Uh, Take it you'll need to canvass your partner's advice before you commit yourself. No, no, I make my own decisions now. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean... Oh, I'm terribly sorry about this. Hello, Janice? Yes, I'm aware of that, but I'm with a client. No, tell him I'll get back as soon as I can. But he knows how I'm fixed. Problem? What problem? Oh, for heaven's sake. Chesham Road was sold two weeks ago. Look, tell Mr. and Mrs. Davy from me that I'm an estate agent, not a plumber. If they don't like the bathroom, they shouldn't have bought the house. Listen, Janice, I'm in the middle of a view. 
it's a trial, but these details do have to be ironed out. Oh, I appreciate that. Impartial assessment, you see. Well, the picture is becoming clearer. Now, are you absolutely convinced that the first prize for the trolley dash was, uh, well, an unfortunate coincidence? Unfortunate's the word, but uh, coincidence, yes. So why did you give the prize to charity? Oh, well, I live on my own. I don't need a trolley full of shopping. Oh, well, so it's a grand gesture, getting it as far out of harm's reach as possible. What are you suggesting? Well, it could be construed that you, being the embarrassed winner, did it out of guilt. Who do you think you are Mrs. coming round here? Please, please, please. All possibilities must be considered however unpleasant. I must at least pose the question. You don't. And you won't. Because I'm damned if I'm going to be treated like a criminal. But, but you're a shopkeeper yourself. You must appreciate the sensitivity of a chain store being marked by accusations of fraud. And what about my reputation, Mr Scott? I have a lot less customers than you have. Stuff like this gets round like wildfire. Well, it does if it's pushed. Meaning? Oh, give over. Take an idiot not to see you've got your teeth in Reg Holdsworth. Well, I'll not be a pawn in anybody's vendetta. Now, oh, come on, I'm busy. As I was saying, I'm just trying to get the whole picture. You see, now, it would be a great help to me if you could tell me just exactly what your relationship with Reg is. For your information, Mr Scott, there is no relationship. And if there was, I don't see what business it is of yours. Right, well, I'll, uh, I'll be seeing you, Mrs Fairclough. You won't, you know. Well, I finished my business. Good, you can give me a hand with these timesheets. I cannot. If you must know, I'm planning to get home early and put my feet up before tonight. Well, there's plenty of time for that. We're not going out for dinner till half past eight. Oh, nearly four hours on the bus for me, then. You're a little gem, what are you? Mad. Anyway, they're showing people around the house today. You'd only be in the way. Well, with any luck, I might get back and find it doesn't belong to me anymore. Just when I was getting settled, to. Oh, come on, Mike. It'd be great fun getting a place together. You won't have to keep referring to it as my house. Maybe. It's just I feel I've had more house moves than Pickford's in these last couple of years. Well, we both had it rough. A fresh start do us the world of good. Slate. I'll take the money now, if you don't mind. Oh, come on, Alf. I'll replace them when my stock comes in. You won't, you know. I've seen the crisp seal stock. It tastes like old insoles. Oh. Come on. Uh, Afternoon. Uh, hey, oh. it's all right for some, isn't it, eh? Finish work before day's got a grip. Some of us are only halfway through, you know. Yes, me too, as a matter of fact. I was up marking essays till one this morning. Oh, ah. Oh, ah. Uh, uh, excuse me, Ken. Can I just... Uh, ta. Oh. Oh. oh, yes, valiant, Alf, valiant. Foot like that, I'd be on my back for at least a month or so. He won't be told, you know. No. No, oh, well, I've got a shop to run, you know, Alec. Yeah, yeah, he's a public treasure, isn't he, eh? Have you had it seen to, Alf? Oh, it's not that bad, you know, no. No, I'm just soldiering on. Well, if appearance is anything to go by, I'd be straight up to casualty if I were you. You? I've uh, not had time. No, nor the inclination, if the truth be known. Now, what's that supposed to be? Well, let's face it, if you did report the accident, you'd have to say where and why it happened. In black and white, that the flat stairs are dangerously in need of repair. You see, he will use anything, even some poor bloke suffering. Uh, yes, well, don't drag me into this, Alf. I'll leave you gentlemen to it. I mean, for heaven's sake, I only want what's due to me. I don't quibble about the rent. Yeah, well, I should think you wouldn't have paid more to Ken and Dogs in me time. You're too damn short-sighted to see that you can't lose. It's your property that's rotting. Now, that is slander. Good. Take me to court. Save me the job. Mrs. Halliwell, I'm so sorry to have left you, uh, but the kitchen, it's a wonderful kitchen. Mrs. Halliwell? Yes, Janice? <laughs> 
Hey, why aren't you at home with my daughter? Hey, she sent me down here. Honest, she did order it. No, I'm supposed to be going out for a drink with Kev tonight, but, you know, money's a bit tight around there, so I'm going to take some sunshine into the lives. Please? Cheers. Oh, let out so you're getting off licence from here. Now, we will buy you from the shop the moved. I'll have to hide in there, won't I? <laughs> oh, incidentally, you've not seen Alma, have you? Not that I can remember, no way. Uh... Oh, well, she went out for an hour this afternoon. Never come back. Come on, Martin. You passed the mat nursery folks <laughs> on that one. Oh, no, no, no. She was in a bit of a funny mood. I tried to ring her earlier, but, you know... I've given up with her, actually, to be honest. I am sick to the back teeth of hearing about Mike Baldwin. <laughs> Not on your own, Audrey. Listen, uh, you can't fix it up with a nice fella, can you? Oh! Right? Go on. <laughs> Chip it. pan into the <laughs> fire there, Lord. Ta-da! Ta-da! Cheers, yeah. I don't know. Ken, okay. do us a favour. Not here, please. I should think so, no. Alec. He's better about it. Yes, she's just scored double top. Oh, very good. Not really. They only wanted a five. She's off the team. What kind of questions? About him and her. Uh... So you kicked him out, right? No, did he? He's going to get my job back. Did he say that? Depends, but he's going to do all he can. Vera, when will he ever learn to keep your gob shut? For all you know, Red Jordan could be sat back in the captain's chair tomorrow. Uh, what you know, that Brendan Scott's too sharp for that. No, he's got them well sussed. Anyway, I don't care what anybody says, I'm innocent. If she's got herself involved, well, that's her lookout. I just want my job back. What have you got in them darts? Aviation fuel. Bet. You got a minute. Oh, I hope to get away from this lot. Never trust a fellow with long arms, Rita. I'm going to get Alex for a smaller boarding for you lot. You all right, No, not really. <laughs> Alec, yes, sling us a couple of brandies over here. Oh, yeah. Will you be wanting your foot spas as well? Jack? Yeah. Two brandies over there. Right. No soul sign, then? Well, give him a chance. I've only had it a day. You know, I must be crackers letting you soft soak me into doing the timesheets. I could have done all sorts by now. I could have finished my novel, I'd have soaked in the bath. As it is, I've got to dash round like a neurotic moth to get ready in time for dinner. Hang on a minute. Look, I'll tell you what. You take it easy, I'll pour us a drink. We we'll spend five minutes with the feet up relaxing, and I might, I said I just might, pop up and scrub your back. Oh, am I a pushover? That depends who's pushing, I hope. Anyway, this bloke what came sniffing took a full statement, you know. What is this, Jack? A witch hunt? There's been more folk dragged into this than a co-op raffle. First young Curly, then Reg, now Rita. Yeah, well, touch wood. It'll all come out in the wash and, and our Vera will get her job back, won't it? Oh, I see. I was forgetting, yes. Madam's career's behind all this, is it? There'll be a trail of bloodshed and slander, but your Vera will be back stacking shells, and that's justice. Principles, isn't it? Fight for work, I oh, mean. Well, it's like she said. I mean, she got fired for, for just asking questions. Gave over. Jack, then his Skinner asks questions quieter than your Vera. I know, do you want to stand here, propping the bar up all night, or do your principles only extend as far as your wife's job? What were you going at? Same as everybody else. Certainly the same as Vera Duckworth. It's supermarket competition. Do you know, I wish I'd never set eyes on the damn place. Hardly slept a wink last night. What gets me, though? A raffle's a raffle, isn't it? You didn't pull your own tickets out, did you? No, I didn't. So how could you possibly pick it? I couldn't. Well, there you go then. They've got no on you. Clean as a whistle. Mind you, sound of this Scott fella, your best player's a bit mysterious, make him work for you. I couldn't personally, but Reg did. He told me. Oh, hello, Frank. Mike. Look, uh, I'm sorry, mate. Uh, we may be a bit late for dinner tonight. No, no, it's no problem. It's uh, just a little snag at the uh, factory. I've got to nip in and sort it out. But we'll be there, don't you worry. <laughs> you keep that champagne on us. What do you mean, what champagne? What do you think we're catching a cab for? <laughs> well, well, if there's no champagne, I don't know if we're becoming at all. 
<laughs> okay, see you, Frank. Breaking nothing. So it's got to be someone that was shown in by the estate agent, isn't it? Is it? Well, it's no good standing there looking at it. But don't do that. It's mad. Look, I'll clear up. You go downstairs. Well, I'm going to call the police. Now, hang on a minute. Do you want to spend half the night talking to the coppers? You need your sleep. When somebody's been in the house slashing the bedroom apart and you don't know who? Don't you? Well, who? Think. Start with Sandra. Oh, no. Well, it was a pretty spiteful thing saying she was having an affair with Peter, wasn't it? She doesn't love you, and she certainly hates me. You sure about the police? Look, do you want a lot of press blokes sitting around on your doorstep? You'll get your photograph in the paper, so will Sandra, not to mention Peter. I mean, they'll love it, but you won't. But if she'll do this, I... Yeah, well, there are other ways. I mean, it's not as if it's the only bed in the house, is it? We'll do something about it. Tomorrow. It's a bit of depression she's got, you see. I think it's all this business, you know. Don't come to me, Jack. I can't do anything. Of course you can. You're the boss. You say somebody gets taken on, they are taken on. Say it the Lord. I cannot give her a job back. Of course you can. I can't. She accused Reg Holdsworth of fixing the trolley dash. Well, he did. Jack, it's a special investigation. If I take Vera back on, it looks like he's guilty even before they've started. He is. Jack, look, I'm not enjoying this investigation. Oh, now, come on. You're the boss. You're the cock of the world. You're loving it. Well, it has got its good points. Pick any one of them checkout girls. You know anyone you choose? Never mind that, Kimberly. Well, that's what I think young Raquel's trying to impress upon me. Raquel? Who's, who's Raquel? Only Miss Betterby. Oh, a cup of tea? Yeah. All right. Raquel. Mm. You see, it does it every time. We'll do it again. It does seem to be repeating itself, doesn't it? Look. So if you press this one, it's like it's got hiccups. Just try it one more time, just to make sure it isn't, um, finger trouble. Although I'm sure it isn't, not with, uh, clever little fingers like those. Well, one for the engineer. Now, the thing is, I've got to find something else for you to do. Any preferences? I wouldn't want to make you blush. It's lucky for you I'm not a man who takes advantage of his position. What position's that, then? Your manager, and don't you forget it. At least while we're in the store. So, where do you think we should go? What, now? No, 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 tonight. Don't mind? I'm sure we'll find somewhere. <laughs> yes, Miss Taylor? Uh, Mrs. Dinneber says, can she have someone on fresh bread? Raquel, go to fresh bread and tell Mrs. Dinneber I'll be over there shortly. Yes, Mr. Watts. Yes, Mr. Watts. No, Mr. Watts. I thought some of us weren't supposed to be bothered. I'm not. It's just sickening watching people begging for it. Oh. I thought that's what you enjoyed in a relationship. You've only fanced him since he's been made up. Acting manager. Exclusive upmarket executive type of residence. Can I help you, sir? Yeah, I'm looking for a bloke called Simpson. That is myself. You're selling a house for my fiance, Mrs. Ingram, right? Mrs. Ingram. I believe we may be doing that, yes. Who'd you take round there yesterday? That is something I can only discuss with Mrs. Ingram. Well, she'd like you to discuss it with me, because at the moment she is very, very upset. I'm sorry, sir. I don't know you. You've no introduction, no identification. I'm not going to say Will that do for an introduction? We don't know whose calling card it is, but we'd like to. I'm sorry, I was Because just... that was the state your client found her bed in when she got back last night. Are you saying this was... Uh... The state of the bed, sunshine. Cut to ribbons. I can't accept this. I mean, look, this could be... there was no breaking. You had the only key. So what have you got to say, eh? I'm sorry. I can't take any more. I can't stand this. All right, all right. Now listen, just tell me, who did you take round there, eh? Uh, there was a couple in the morning and a woman in the afternoon. Alone? Yeah, I was with her. What, all the time? Oh, the phone. Phone call. Oh, three minutes. I mean... Yeah, but what did she look like, eh? I mean, uh, tall, dark, fair, blonde, I mean... Dark. Well, describe her. Dark. 
again. Big eyes, very striking. And slim? Slim. Very slim. Well, if you know who it was, then all we can do is phone the police. No, no, that's right. Leave it to Mrs. Ingram. I'm sorry, Mr. Watts. I thought Mr. Holdsworth's desk would be available. Certainly, certainly, Mr. Scott. Well, you've made yourself very comfortable here, haven't you? Of course, if you want to put me elsewhere, just say. Of course not. Of course not, Mr. Scott. Um, what will you want me to do, if you want me to help? Are you a trained interrogator? Unfortunately not, sir. That's uh, one of the company courses I didn't go on. Yeah, me neither. But somebody's got to ask a lot of questions, and the buck seems to have reached me. So you'll be wanting a complete uh, list of the staff, then? Got that already, thank you. Could you, uh, on my list, tick off the people who are in this morning? Oh, I think so, but they won't necessarily have been here during the trolley dash. You've risen quite a way, Mr. Watts, haven't you? Acting, manager, hmm. Yes, that's a long way from the corporation dust cart. I thought only me and the KGB knew about that. <laughs> it's in your CV. Are you interested in astronomy? Well, uh... See, all of us are in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. You've ticked yourself. Good. So, would you, uh, would you like to start with me? You see, this isn't the first allegation against Reg that we've had, and it's always been with women. Susceptible to the fair sex, would you say? Me? Am I? No, no, no. Reg. Is that Reg's problem, would you say? Well, uh... I was just wondering if there was anything at any time between our Reg and that woman who's put the poison in. A woman spurned, eh? What was her name? Mrs. Um, uh, Duckworth. Ah, yes. Well, well, I think I can put your mind at rest there, Mr. Scott. Yes, yes, I think I can. Please, boss, don't ask me to serve him. Who's that? Bladder. Now, listen, Jack, if you can't trust yourself to be polite... Polite? It's all I can do, not to stick the nut on him. He's got that kind of face, hasn't he? Yes, well, listen, while he's in here, he's a customer. Yeah, well, after all what he's done, I mean, he's fired out over here. Yes, I know, but look, you go down the cellar. There's a barrel of bitter needs setting. Thanks, Alec. And, uh, mine. Do people suddenly start hoarding tenpence pieces or what? I think it must be some sort of government thing controlling in flesh. All I know is they keep disappearing. Yes, I heard a very interesting talk at the uh, Institute of Retail Management on that very subject. Well, I'm afraid I can't wait to hear about that. Uh, when the Romans was here, it was a denarius that they get going missing. Same thing. Well, thank you very much anyway, Bert. Um, excuse me. I I wonder if I could ask you to relay a communication. No, I don't think so, Mr. Holdsworth. I don't think it would be very welcome. Yes, but it's very... Um, I wonder if I could trouble you for a pint of shandy. Alec, customer there wants serving. A pint of shandy, was it, you said? Yes, yes please, Alec. And what was that you were saying about something going missing during the Roman times? Well, it was a denarius, actually, Alec. Oh, yes. That would be Latin for ashtrays, wouldn't it? <laughs> Nothing changes. <laughs> of course, everybody's saying he's guilty of sin, but I don't all with that. Well, I don't. I'm surprised to hear you taking the opposite point of view. <laughs> I'm not taking any point of view. Well, you should. The laws of this realm uh, state a position, and that position in a man is innocent until proved guilty. No, that's not quite it, first. Oh, it is, you know. Sorry. All right, then you tell me what it is. No, a man is to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. That's just what I said. No, no, you said he is. But if he's actually done it, he's guilty whether he's fought and tried or not. He's merely presumed to be innocent. Is that what your university education's done for? You go three times round the house, it's end up in the same street. <laughs> it's not the same street. <laughs> Mind if I join you, fellas? I might be able to separate you there between the rounds. Oh, your faith in your own cuisine is encouraging. <laughs> oh, lordy Miss Chloe. Look who's turned up. Oh, don't let it spoil your lunch. I know it can. Is this something you want? I've just had it. Sooner not discuss it on the pavement, Jack. 
You'll be having a discussion with the pavement. You come poking your nose round here, son. I just wanted a civil word with Mrs. Duckworth. I was, uh, I was honestly hoping that uh, it wasn't you. Well, I didn't go there for that. I just wanted to, to see you, that's all. I wanted to see what she got, what it was all like. It's all done nice, isn't it? It's all her taste, you can tell. But it's not you, Alma. I mean, this is just not you. Oh, well, we all know what's me, don't we? But I saw them scissors and suddenly I was sick to death of being me. Sick of being the world's good loser. Look, have you any idea how terrifying it is to oh, come home? Oh, it's terrifying doing it at all. But you just let the scissors do it and they just do. It's frightening. And then you think, well, what if I couldn't stop? What if, what if it wasn't just a bed? What if it was... Look, I didn't want it to be me, but it was. It was. It was. Yeah, well, OK, come on. We'll all get over this. Anyway, look, what do you think will cover it? Cos... Uh, hey, 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 just what? a minute. I'm more worried about you than this. Um, this is mad. Do you know that? Oh, really? Well, thank you, Dr. Baldwin. No, seriously, oh, I'm... So anybody who hates Mike Baldwin is mad, like anybody who loves Mike Baldwin. So she's as mad as I am. It's just that she hasn't got around yet to... Oh, Alma. I swear to God that I never thought that you felt... Well, f felt this strongly about anything. About me, anything. Well, I wish I hadn't let you know now. Because when I'm done with being appalled at myself, I just feel a fool. Yeah. Well, it uh, probably did you good. I mean, let's forget it. You're sorry, I'm sorry. Let, let, let's just forget it. So, right, what, uh, what do you think will cover it? No, then? no, forget it, forget it. it. It is not just the money. Oh, it's all about money, Michael, admit it. It's all about money. So at least give me the chance to buy a bit of my pride back. I don't know how much it costs, I mean, I, I don't know, I've got no idea. Well, let's just leave it blank. I'm... I'm sorry I've done this to you. Try to understand what I'm saying. This sort of hostility is not getting any of us anywhere. Now you're out of a job, and I'm being put under a searchlight, and all because of this... Yeah, because you fiddle the trolley, Ray. Right. That is slanderous, you know that, don't you? And you have not got one shred of evidence to back it up. No, because she went and gave all the stuff away. Proof that she has a charitable disposition, she that's knew, all. She knew, she knew all right. Jack, please. She is like me. I have got a charitable disposition as well. <laughs> when it comes to letting bygones be bygones, letting the past bury its dead, Mrs. Dorwood, now, we both stand accused. Hey, now nobody's accusing me. Of acting hasty, I mean. To that I, uh, I plead guilty. And I'm talking about uh, your dismissal now. I might have rushed to judgment, as I think you may have yourself in the matter of the trolley race. Oh, come on, come on. Don't be giving us all like this flannel. No, hang on. No, no, no listen, Vera, Vera, I know what he's at. He's crawling. He wants you to forget about what you said to them. Yes, that's right, Jack. If you withdraw your allegation, and I withdraw your notice of dismissal, as and when I resume my position. Well, let me get knotted. Curly's top man now, you're well in. Like a son to this woman. Yes, and he is very close to me as well, remember? Very close as far as that company's concerned. He's my protégé. Throw mud at me, it spatters him. Hey, uh, now hang on. Nobody's ever said out against him. If he is loyal to me, and you make your scandal-mongering stake, he goes down and all. Says you. And if he sides with you, it won't make any difference whether I go down or not, because there's never a manager in our company that ever want him as a number two. He'll be dead in the water, career-wise. You've put him into an intolerable position, you know, Mrs. Duckworth. Oh, yes. And there's only one sensible thing you can do now. Close the door, Mr. Watt. Relations between captain and crew around here seem a bit reminiscent of HMS Bounty, it seems to me. Well, I wouldn't have thought that was entirely fair, Mr. Scott. Well, I was just reading between the lines, but I do get a whiff of mutiny. Well, I think mutiny is overstating it a bit. Oh, really? What word would you choose? 
Holmes. Well, I'd rather not choose a word, but if there has been a mutiny, I've not joined it. All right, I'll offer you another word. Our Reg seems to run this ship in a somewhat eccentric way. Well, Captain Bly had his faults, but he was an extremely good navigator. <laughs> so I believe. <laughs> well, it's just an impression. Nothing I'd hang a man for. But I can't entirely dismiss Mrs. Duckworth's allegation. No, as yard arms go, Mr. Watts, it's just about high enough. Well, good to meet you. I admire your loyalty. Don't worry. I know the way. You know this fellow they've sent? Mr. Scott, and I'll tell you what, he's had us all grilled in that office. Oh, did you have to go? Yeah. Uh, and what did you tell him? I didn't tell him anything, but he still kept writing stuff down. I'll tell you what, you ain't half started something. Oh, well, I'm here to try and finish it. So where is he then? Oh, well, that's him there. Right. Mr. Scott! Saying I'm glad it was her and not Sandra. Yeah, well, you would be, wouldn't you? Well, I don't know. I don't think I should be. Of course you should. Sandra's put the poison in before. You'd think it was some sort of uh, campaign. This is just... Uh, yes. Me. This is just... Hmm? Now what you want about? Well, with Sandra, it was just spite. This is... A brainstorm. She'd never do it again. She is desperately in love with you. Nah, she was just trying to get something out of her system, that's all. Desperately in love with you. Well, she's not in love with herself just now. Oh, and by the way, she sent a check to pay for the damage. Well, I hope you tore it up. No. I thought it was kinder to take it. She was feeling that bad. We are not sleeping in sheets paid for by her. Did you not know just how much she... Well, didn't you? No. Nah. Honestly, never thought she'd do something like this in a million years. Well, if you didn't know, you do now. Oh, I wish it had been Sandra. At least she hates the both of us. I'm telling you, if they put them up here, you'd pay to see them. Oh, you would, you would. You could consider them as part of the decor. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hey. This could be part of the decor for me, and Oh, lad, Curly, God, this'll be back hell. Oh. We're not staying here all night, are we? Oh, no, no, I thought we'd just come in, you know, see who turns up and see if they're going on somewhere. We don't need other people to give us ideas, do we? Certainly not, Raquel, certainly not. What do you fancy? Oh, can I take your coat? Oh, well, my mother always said if I met a lad and wanted to take my coat, I should grab it. <laughs> grab away, Raquel. <laughs> now, what do you fancy? If I hear one more word... Look, if we're not making a profit, why are we doing it? One more word and I'll dorm you. And if you think I'm paying for it by giving up my gin and tonic, it's your great little mistake. Vera's not in. Oh? She's gone to bingo. Cheer herself up a bit, you know. Really? And I'm going to be stuck in here till closing time. Right. So there's nobody in the house. That's all I'm saying. Oh, never mind, Jack. He's got a one-track mind. According to some people, he's not the only one. No, you shouldn't believe everything that Kimberly tells you. Um, am I going to be disappointed then? That's two seventy-five, Alf. Thank you. He's made a very tidy job of it, Alf. Uh, very pleased. I'd like to send a tidy bill as well. I'm not too pleased about that. Who'd be a blooming landlord? Well, Prince Charles and the Duke of Westminster don't seem to mind. Yeah, both blokes are going to afford it. Alf, I've told you. So, I suppose Kimberley used to discuss our relationship in lurid detail, did she? I want any lurid detail to discuss, either. I thought that was the old point of you two. Oh, so she did. The girls do. We don't have to, do we? No. We could, uh, go back to your digs and talk about something different. Am I dead forward? <laughs> yes, you're very direct, yes. It takes a bit of getting used to, you know, after Kimberley. We weren't going to talk about Kimberly. Do you know there were certain words she wouldn't say? She used to spell them. She... Lynn. I'm sorry, yes, yes, you are very direct. Would well, you mind? No, no, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I think the modern woman should be direct. 
you know, say what they mean, what they want. Right. Well, let's sup up and go back to your digs then. To be honest, I don't feel like this evening, if you don't mind. Why? Fred Scott won't have his spies around the hostelry. I don't care. You're not still upset with me, are you? Well, I'm not best pleased with you. Oh, not the only reason why this has got blown up is because Scott's got it in for me, always has, and. It's not just that. I mean, you fiddled that draw, didn't you? No, no, I wouldn't Red, say Reg, you that... told me you did. Well, I might have said it in Red, the Red, you know speech. perfectly well you did. Oh, well, I was foolish to say it, I know. But I just wanted you to be aware that if it lay in my power to do something, some little thing for you, but it sprang from regard, you must see that. Well, I don't think we need say any more on the subject. No. No. Well, I'm waiting to hear my fate, really. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it, that little Achilles heel? The fatal flaw that delivers a man into the hands of his enemies. Still, I, I hope you enjoyed the tea dances. I mean, you weren't just... No, no, they were... Uh, it made a very nice change. Pleasant interviews. They were. Anyway. Yes. Well, then, good night, Mrs. Fairclough. Rita. Good night, Reg. I thought, I thought you liked me because I talked to you a lot. Well, yeah, but not all the time, Norman. Well, I suppose Kimberly said I talked to you all the time, did she? I told you what Kimberly said. Mm. Are you comfy? Mmm. Mmm. Oh, God! Oh, you've got lovely warm hands. Mm. That's not what Kimberly used to say. And my hands nice and warm. Mmm. 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 That's a good sign, that, actually. It means you've got very good circulation. Well, I ought to have right now. Mm. Only, you see, Kimberly, her hands were freezing. That's why she wore those stupid mittens all the time. Oh. I used to say to her, Kim, where are you going? She's right, Norman. You have got a one-track mind. Kimberly, Kimberly, flaming Kimberly. Oh, look, I'm, I'm sorry. If I've talked about Don't Kimberly... Don't bother helping it. me on with my crow. Derek, before it goes. Before what goes? It's a fox. What? A fox. Oh. Where? Well, it was over there by the fence. Maybe. It was, Derek. I saw it. It'd be a dog. It wasn't. It was a fox. I know it was a fox. How do you know it was a fox? And that's what it looks like. And anyway, I have thought I've seen it other mornings when I got up early, but I've, I've always said what you're saying now. It must have been a dog. Well, yes. But, uh, Derek, it wasn't. It was definitely a fox. I could see it as plainly as I could see you. Well, it's not there now, is it? Oh, no, no, it must have gone. Yes, well, I'm going to. Back to bed, get some sleep. It's only 6.30. Uh, just imagine, though, Derek, a fox in our own garden. Very nice, yes. <laughs> So, uh, how did you go on with this new bird of yours, then? Well, if nothing else, Jack, it made me realise I'm not ready for any new relationships yet. Well, you know what you want to do, eh? You want to go and see a doctor because there's something wrong with you. Not ready at your age. And she's the one that the voted Miss Better by. Mm -hmm. Very nice bit of stuff, yes. Well, she's generally considered quite attractive, yeah. Well, I don't know what to say, Kirby. I really don't. I mean, OK, Kimberly gave you the push, but that was like a blessing in disguise. But when you consider the harem that you have got to choose from, I mean, you've no need to sneak with one. You, you can play the field, lad. Do you know, for a man your age, it's disgusting what you've come out with. There is no disgusting about it. It's, it. it's just normal, isn't it? I mean, which is why I'm worried about the lad, because his girl chucking herself at him and he doesn't want to know. I think the lesson to be learnt, Jack, is never mix your working life with your private life. It should be kept totally separate. Yeah, well, I ain't got a proper working life, have I? 
So when you see that precious souls, we'll just tell him. Say, I stuck my neck out for him, and I want to know what it's going to do for me. No, I still think uh, Mr Holdsworth's fate is very much in the balance of era. Now, look, there is a perfect example for you. He let his personal life interfere with his professional responsibilities. And look what happens. Yeah, I get the staff. That's what happens. So, uh, we've seen her again, then? But... Not much choice, have a Jack. But I'll tell you something, any dealings we do have will be kept strictly on a professional basis. Right, I'm off. I'll see you later. Right, thanks, Bill. Can you believe it? He's got young women there wandering about with you. Nile on overalls, and he wants to keep his dealings with them on a professional basis. Yeah, well, at least he don't spend all his time leering and drooling like a dirty old man, does he? Well, that's what I'm saying. Why don't he? We do. Why should he be a flaming difference? Do you get a chance to read any of this sort of stuff? Uh, yeah, sometimes. You know, we have quiet spells. Well, if you have a quiet spell tonight, how about you and me getting together for a drink? What do you say? No particular reason. Only I never seem to exchange more than two words with you. I mean, you can tell me what's happening in your life. Um, well, I can't tonight, Rita. I'm, I'm busy. I'm out working. Oh, you're still doing that demonstration lot that Steph Barnes runs? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's nearly every night now, but oh. um, I will see you. You know, I'm, we'll sort something out. All okay. right. Right. Yeah. Sure. What are you up to? I was just looking. Oh, yes. It is Mrs. Bradshaw collects that series on wildlife, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, well, I, I, it's for us, I think. I was just wondering. I see. So we stood there and you were just wondering if Mrs. Bradshaw still took that wildlife magazine. Mm. That's right. Just forget to said anything. Mm, Mavis, it's not budgies, is it? No, it isn't. I, I'm just going to make a cup of tea. Do you want one? Hmm. Night. I beg your pardon? Did you brainwash him or what? Because I can tell you, you're about all he can talk about. Oh, well, I am sorry. So am I, because it makes it dead boring. This, uh, Mrs Duckworth. Yes. I might mention she's changed her tune somewhat. Of course, you haven't seen anything of her since she was dismissed, have you? Yeah, every day. She's my landlady. Landlady? Yes. Oh, I see. Well, uh, would you uh, tell me something about her? Is she uh, reliable, sensible, the sort to make a good witness? No. No? No, none of those. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, the inquiry, is it not uh, progressing? Have you ever read A.J.P. Taylor's The Origins of the Second World War? No. It was the most complex study of deceit and betrayal I'd ever known until this lot. This case makes it look simple. Really? Well, today's D-Day. I'd better be off. I dare say we'll be speaking later, Mr. Watts. Yeah. Time we're moving now, ladies, please. Hey, let's keep it. What's my for? Just for now. Something I want it for. And a packet of fags, please, Lord. Oh, right. Uh, it's for the Rovers, but said, will you put them on the bill? Yeah. Uh, cigarettes as well, Jack? I better pay for them, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> it's a good job one of us was. Uh -huh. thanks. <laughs> you see, where you went wrong, we to have got two or three different estimates, we're going to compare the prices. The way you've done it, them cowboys can charge out the life. No, they can't, because you will haggle with them. You will haggle them down to the last penny. What's that, then? Repairs upstairs. Now, think about it as an investment. An investment to your own property. It's an investment in Barlow's ease and comfort. That's an investment. You know, I'll never understand. What's that, Jack? I'll never understand why the more money you have, the more you worry about it. Oh, true. Hey, mm. just a minute. If this is me we're talking about, I don't have all that, you know. Oh, come on. I don't. Now. Come on. It's a well-known fact. The only time you get out of the bank is when they run short and they want to borrow some. <laughs> well, I'll just tell you something, shall I? There's four crown here. They'd be amazed if they knew how little I'd got. And I'm one of them. I'll tell you what, then. I'll tell you what. We'll do a swap. I'll bring my bank boot, you bring yours, and I'll swap you. Now, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. And you take the wife and the lodger who connive behind your back, because that's part of the deal. Fine. <laughs> Time for all this daft talk. I've got some work to do. 
Jack, remind me to buy you a drink next time I'm in the Rovers. As long as it's his money, then I'll enjoy it. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, Hello, Derek. Um, just a minute while I get my coat. Don't mind if I go now, dearie. No, you go on. Have you had any more sightings this morning, Mavis? Sightings of what? She not told you? Oh, I'm, I'm ready. I was just Derek. telling Rita about... Uh, yes, I'm sure you were, but I, I think we ought to have a little talk about that, don't you? Come on. Oh, hello. Hello. Well, hello, I'm on my Ed. way, Rita. The uh, jury is about to return. The verdict is about to be announced. Well, I'm sure it'll be favourable. Oh, well, that's because you don't know the world of better by like I do. It's a world of intrigue and jealousy. Oh, yes. There's plenty who have resented my success. Well, now they'll have the little moment of triumph, won't they? The Get Holdsworth campaign will finally have succeeded. Well, I hope you're wrong. I really do. Thank you. Um, you don't mind if I call round later, do you? Only a man has most need of a friend when he's surrounded by enemies. You call in all you want. Thanks very much. I'll let you know the verdict. Mm. <laughs> Only I'll tell you this much. I shall not beg and I shall not grovel. If Holdsworth has to go down, he'll go down with his head held high. There you go, Derek. Thank you, Jack. I don't think we should tell anyone. Or we'll have them hanging over the garden wall or all sorts, and all that'll do is drive it away. I was only going to tell Rita. Oh, yes, well, I don't think we should tell anybody. And anyway, what were you going to tell her? You're going to make a joke of it, I suppose. No, I wasn't, but I still don't think you can rule out the possibility that it was a dog you saw. Oh, Derek, I know what I saw, and what I saw was a fox. If you say so. Yes, I do say so. And I will go on saying so, but only to you, not to anybody else. Pint a bit of please, Jack. Coming up, Desla. Can't you get Curly to pull a few strings and get you taken back on? You know what he could do with somebody pulling a few strings for him? Anyway, his management isn't it? Side with them when chips were down. Well, you've got the consolation you told the tooth, so your conscience is clear. Well, that's a lot of good, isn't it? If I haven't got a job. You've got your self-respect, though, haven't you? What is it the good book says? Who can find an honest woman for her price is far above rubies? Oh, well, yeah, there is that. So you'll be looking for another job then, V? Well, it looks like it. But I'll tell you what, I've learnt my lesson. Next job I get, I'm keeping my mouth for in future. You have that in writing, 95 days. You see, I get no help from him. Well, that's not very nice. You ought to be proud of your wife. It's a pity there aren't a lot more like her. Like her? You sound like you've been nightmares, Percy. Excuse me, Des. Hiya, Mavis. Only I, I was looking across at your garden this morning. Yes, it's a mess, I know oh. it is, but once the better weather comes, I'll get step out with a pickaxe and a shovel. No, no, I wasn't going to complain. I would if it was next door to uh, me. No, I, I was just thinking, when you do start work on it, you won't be using any chemicals, will you? I mean, pesticides, that kind of thing. I hadn't really thought about it, no. no I mean, it, it's just that they can be very toxic, and if any wildlife happened to stray in there, well, it could easily be poisoned. Yes, I suppose it could. Well, I, I just thought I'd mention well, it. Well, thanks. I'm glad you did, Mavis. <laughs> thanks. <clears throat> oh, uh, could you keep the door open, please? Well, I think you'd rather I closed it when you hear what I've come about. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'd rather it be open, thank you. Suit yourself. Now then, um, what can I do for you? Well, now, it's uh, more what I can do for you. Oh, oh, oh please, please. Miss, Miss Wollstone, you, while we're on the premises, I'll be oh, a black... Oh, so, uh, do you not want to know what they're all talking about, then, eh? What they're saying about you and your precious Miss Taylor? Miss Taylor? Miss Taylor and a certain letter in a certain magazine that I happen to have here. I mean, if you're not interested, then OK. What letter? What are you talking about? I'll read it to you. Dear Alice, because it's like one of them columns, it's called Ask Alice, where you write in with your problems. Dear Alice, I am beginning to think that all young men want only one thing out of a relationship. I have recently been forced to end my engagement because my fiancé did nothing but pester me into anticipating our marriage vows. This was made all the more difficult as we worked together and so saw one another every day. Go on, go on. Now I have a new boyfriend who I thought was a Christian like myself. But now I find he is no better than the first. He claims he will never be happy until we have carnal knowledge of one another 
and that I am being unnatural in denying him this. Am I so out of step with the world, or have I just been unlucky in my choice of boyfriends? Well, is it signed? Is it signed? Well, they don't give the full name, just the initial. And this initial's letter K. And then it says Lancashire. Uh, I'd be obliged if you give me that magazine. Well, it's not mine. Give it to me. All right, keep your hair on. Right. Now you can go. Yeah, well, um, thought you might be interested. I said just go! I think she's in the canteen if you want her. <laughs> Hiya. Um, give us a packet of mints, please, Rita. Twenty. Hey, when's that wife of yours going to give Jenny a night off? What, from the promotions, you mean? Yeah. I've been trying to arrange a night out with her. She reckons she needs six months' notice. Can't be the promotions. Hardly got any work on. Well, she's thinking about packing the whole thing up. I'm back. Hello. Hiya. There's no pesticides in these, is there, Mavis? No, I think you're safe with them. Yeah. Mind you, they won't kill the weeds either, will they? Have they got a promotion on tonight, then? No. Be lucky if they've got one this month. I'll see you. Yeah, ta I thought Jenny said they did have one. She must have been lying there, mustn't she? So, your knight in shining armour is not too dissimilar from me, is he? That must have been a, a disappointment for you. You are? Well, let's see what Alice has got to say, shall we? Obviously, you are a girl of high principles, and you must not let these two young men pressurise you into doing something against your will. Well, there's not much chance of that, is there? You have never done anything against your will. You know what you've gone and done, don't you? You've made us a laughing stock, all of us. I don't know what you're on about. Don't you? No! The letter, the letter. That's what I'm on about. The letter? The what? Yes. Um, there hasn't been any whispers, have there? Any signs as to where the wind is blowing? I'm sorry? Scott, head office, his man, has he said anything to you? Oh, no, 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 no. All right, well, wish me luck then. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. This isn't me, I haven't written this. Oh, come on. I haven't. What, you used to work with your ex fiance? You've got a new boyfriend who's a Christian? I don't care, I still haven't written it. Well, I would have thought you'd have the courage of your convictions. I just wish you'd leave me alone and stop mithering me. Well, I just wish you'd stop writing letters to magazines about me. It isn't about you because I didn't write it. And if you don't stop pestering, I'm going to tell Adrian about it and see what you have to say to him. Yeah. We'll go and see what he's got to say, shall we? Regulations have been breached. The main one being that you as manager should not have made the draw. And lo and behold, the ticket you produced belonged to a Mrs Fairclough, who happens to be a particular friend of yours. Coincidence. Well, yes. And then we come to Mrs Duckworth. Oh, yes. A well-meaning woman, but not always reliable, I wouldn't have thought. Oh, I'm sure. Especially as yesterday she announced that she may have been mistaken and she wants to withdraw her letter of accusation. Oh, really? Really, yes. yes. Now, why should she have done that? I have no idea, Brenda. And then this morning I learned that she's Mr Watts' landlady. Oh, yes, yes. I believe she is, yes. I'll tell you what I think, shall I? And I believe that's what we're here for, Brendan. I think you're all in each other's pockets. I think it's a cover-up and I think you're as guilty as sin. But I won't be able to prove it, not even if I stay here for another six months. I think that's a trifle uncalled for, Brendan, frankly. Uncalled for? I'd call for the death penalty if I could. But as it is, now that Mrs Duckworth has been nobbled, my report to head office will simply say, not proven. I beg your pardon? It's a Scottish legal term. It means you've got away with it. Yes, well, this is England, isn't it, Mr Scott? This is England. In which case, I think the appropriate term is going to be innocent. Oh, I don't think I can bring myself to say that, Reg. It might choke me. Well, then, let me say it for you, Mr Scott. I have been found innocent. This time. So I take it I'm uh, reinstated. This office and this desk are once again mine. Until you slip up again. And next time you may not be so lucky. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Scott. Thank you for your kindness. Do call again any time. <laughs> innocent. Totally innocent. 
Mr. Watts to the manager's office, please. Mr. Watts, here. Right. Oh, no, not you again. Yes, it's me again. Now, don't come that holier-than-thou routine, because it won't wash. Not anymore. Look, I don't want to talk to you. Tough, because I'm going to talk to you. No, you're not. Stop! Sit down. Don't move. Just don't move and read this. <laughs> okay. Lancashire. Now, I wonder who that could be. It's not. Oh, yes, it is. She wouldn't. Not Kimberly. Kimberly would, and Kimberly has. Now, what I want to know is why you're putting it about that you're all innocent and wouldn't hurt a fly, and then we find out she's writing to magazines for help because you can't keep your hands off her. It's not true. Ask Kimberly. Anyway, I don't have to talk to you. Oh, about yes, this. you do, pal. Oh, yes, you do, because if I find out you've been giving her a hard time, I'm going to start giving you a hard time. So why don't you just keep your filthy hands off her? Listen, you really want to know the truth about me and Kimberly? No, what? I don't know when she wrote this letter. I'll tell you something. I think you'll find she's changed her attitude since. What are you talking about? All this stuff about carnal knowledge. What about it? It's already happened. Step outside. No chance. But I'm just telling you because I think you should know whatever it is you think you're defending, you're too late. So you might as well take your magazine and get out of here. I don't believe you. Believe what you like. All I'm saying, if Kimberly wrote that, then she's changed her tune since. I'm gonna kill you. Take it easy. You win some, you lose some. And this one, you've lost, OK? I don't believe you, and I'll never believe you. All right, perhaps I am no better than you are, but I'll tell you something. Neither is Kimberly, when you really get to know her. Thank you. Oh, aye. So what do you want me to do for you this time, then, eh? What is in it for you, that is the question. No, I don't want you to do anything. I've simply come to tell you the good news that I've been found not guilty in all charges. Good news for you, aye. Well, yes. Oh, aye, and has this something to do with what I said yesterday about dropping my allegations like? Well, that may have played some part in it, who knows. And if it did, then let me say right away, thank you, Mrs Duckworth. Now, uh, is Mr Watts not here? Because it really is him I came to see. No, he hasn't got back yet. No. Oh. Well, then I don't know where he is, because he's not been at the store. Must have been away half the afternoon. Look, never mind, Curly. What's happening with our Vera? That's what I want to know. Yes, me and all. Right, you reckon you have got your job back, right? Yes, well, it was never really taken away. You, you have got your job back, so that means you can give our Vera her job back, if you've a mind. Yes. Well, I think we should let the dust settle before we give that due consideration. Yeah, but I only did what you wanted me to. You did. Yeah, so I want my job back. You do, huh? Ah. I wonder if that could be a yes, it is, Mr. Watts. Good evening. Good evening. Have you heard the good news? No. Mr. Oldsworth has got his job back. Good. Yes, I thought you'd be pleased. I did actually try to find you earlier on to tell you, but you had disappeared. Well, the responsibility of leadership is no longer yours, and you can breathe again now as I take the reins. Can I? Yes. One thing or another, it has been quite a day. Well, does anyone want to hear about my days? Are anybody interested? I still want to know what's happening with our Vera. Yes, well, I will be in touch, Jack. I, I when, though? To well, it takes when? time, doesn't it? You can't oh, I... Go... Right, Vera, are you going to hear about my day, whether you like it or not? Oh. Oh. You are my day, Vera. What? My lousy, rotten day. Not only yes, has my I love life been the subject of a most entertaining letter in a woman's magazine, Who? I've been made a fool of by my ex fiance I've also been made a fool of by my ex fiance's boyfriend, who, it turns yes. out, has had a rather more intimate relationship with my ex fiance than I ever managed. And then, on top of all that, I've just spent two hours in the local Wait. nick being questioned about my attempt to hold up and terrorise the offices of the local building society. Curly, it's for you. Reporter. You're not going to stay here all night. Not all night, no. Look, maybe I'm sorry if I was a bit off-hand earlier. It's all right. It's just I was tired and had other things on my mind. But if you say it was a fox, well, then I believe that. Of course I believe it. And you don't think your wife's some sort of crank? <laughs> oh, of course not. <laughs> anyway, I've put some food out for it, so if it does come back, I'm going to take a picture and then you'll have to believe me. Is there anything I can do? 
I'm all right. I'm just going to watch. And if it doesn't come tonight, well, I'll watch again tomorrow night because he'll come back sooner or later. I'm sure he will. So am I. So Foxy didn't show his tail last night, I take it? No, he didn't. Which is hardly surprising, given the attitude of certain people. Oh, I see. So the fox only appears if you have the right attitude. Like Tinkerbell. I suppose you think this proves something. Well... Well, it proves something to me, Derek. It proves to me that you think I'm some sort of flippity gibbet who hallucinates in her own kitchen. I never said that. But you must admit, a fox in Weatherfield does seem unusual. <sighs> I don't know why I'm even sitting here talking to you about it. Because you know absolutely nothing about the subject, Derek. And for your information, foxes don't have tails. They have brushes. Hey, shouldn't you be gone by now? I can't face it, Vera. I don't think I'll ever set foot over that threshold again. I'm trying to keep his head down a bit till he eats off, you know. What are you talking about, eat off, yo? Listen, I want him to go in there and get Mr. Sloppy Chops to give me my job back. They'll be whispering and tittering round every corner of every aisle. Look, he can't get your job back, can he? You've blown it now. What are you on about, yo? He was said... bobbing you off. I mean, it was bad enough when it was just a letter in a magazine. But now, when they find out about this bank business, and they will, or well, they will, because she'll tell them. Yeah, well, he only got his job back because I perjured myself exactly. for it. Exactly. Well, he's got it now. You've served your purpose. You've been cast aside. Yeah, well, I made trouble for him once. I can make trouble for him again. No, you can't. You're a discredited witness, an embittered former employee. What are you talking about, discredited? Hey, Curly, I'm not discredited, am I? I suppose you get some kind of thrill having men make fool of themselves over her in public. Makes her feel important. He's discredited now, isn't he? I mean, you've got the police round to him. I bet she's not so quick to tell people the truth about Adrian Gosthorpe. Oh, no. I bet they're not giggling about that at the cheese counter. Oh, no. She's still Miss Butter Wouldn't Melt. Purity in blue overalls. Yeah, well, you're right. I should have never stuck up for him. Well, I can soon put a few people straight on that score, can't I? Eh? Why should I skulk in the shadows? I've done nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not the lying, twisty-faced two-timer, am I? I didn't succumb to Adrian Gosthorpe. Well, nobody said you did. I'm going to work. Yeah, I think he's going a bit. Ah, he's been driven wild by the love of a beautiful woman here. It does happen sometimes, you know. So, so do you still think I'm gorgeous yes, then now I'm a mother? Of course I do. Oh, oh there's Curly. Oh, very flattering. Cheers. Oh, I can get a lift off him. All right. I'll see you after, all right? Oi, Curly. Any chance of a lift, mate? You know, you don't know how lucky you are, Kev. Ah, no, another cup of tea. I know what I missed you. No, no, I mean you and Sally. I mean, some women have very fragile egos. They're never really secure unless you've got your riding with desire. I take it this is that new bird you took at Rovers, eh? Giving you a hard time, is she? They're all the same, Kev. At least the ones I'm attracted to are. Vampires. And some of us are just born victims. But you and Sally, well, it's happy ever afters all the way, isn't it? Go on, get in. Oh, no. Oh, God! Hey, uh, get this down, you. Yeah. I know Could... when you're young and passionate, the night belongs to love, but have you oh. thought what it's doing to your complexion? Oh, I don't want to discuss last night, Rita. Oh, is that good? Oh, yes, Mrs. Duckworth. What can we do for you? Oh, oh hi. <laughs> uh, I was just wondering, I don't suppose you saw what Mr. Rolls with last night, did you? All I saw last night, Vera, was the bottom of a chip pan and a documentary about if I don't stop lacquering my hair, the ice cap will melt and we'll have homeless polar bears wandering up and down Inkerman Street. Well, it's just that he's not set out about giving me my job back yet. You know, and I'm getting a bit worried. Well, he doesn't discuss business with me, Vera. Anyway, I don't see why you should expect Rita to act as a gull between. You're quite able to confront him yourself. I know rattled your kids. But if I do hear anything, Vera, of course I'll let you know. Right. Yeah. Tra. You're a bit touchy, aren't you? All my life I've tried to be tolerant and considerate, and what's it ever brought me? Well, it's Derek, I suppose. Ooh, don't love, mate. You pull some funny faces. 
Well, I used to respect you for your standards. But now, it's not about standards at all, is it? No. It's just another way of exercising your power over me, tormenting me with your law. Well, I'm telling you, I'm telling you this. Right, yeah. Colonel. Yes! Will that be all, Miss Wollstone Hume? All right, keep your hair on. <laughs> Miss Taylor. The more consistent you are with the placing of the labels, the smoother the throughput at the checkout. Yes, Mr. Ross. And furthermore, I believe you've lost some of your inhibitions to Mr. Adrian Gosthorpe, to be precise. How was it for you? Very nice, thank you. In fact, we're thinking of doing it again. I don't believe you! Well, it's true, so stick that in your throughput. But how could you, though, eh? How could you? With someone called Adrian Gosthorpe, eh? Hey, Wait. Curly. Where do you want this you knew, didn't you? You all knew. Don't come the innocent with me. You're all the same. Adrian Gosthorpe's his name. If you want a good time, ring Adrian Gosthorpe. Apparently, he's really good. And there's this little flap at the back, so you don't have to get her undressed every time you change it. It's brilliant, oh, isn't it? Oh, it's good. Yeah. Hold it up to her so I can have a look. Do you, um, do you think that the catalogue will take these back, Liz? Oh, yeah. Listen, I'm not giving you the hard sell, you know. If you don't like them, they'll change No, them. no, it's not that. It's just that... I don't think we can afford this kind of stuff just now. Is it this stupid car business? I thought it was all sorted out. Well, I've offered to pay him back week by week and he's just refused us. We got a letter this morning. I don't know how I'm going to tell Kevin about it. Hey, there must be some way around it. There isn't, Liz. It's a summons. Oh. Come here, let's have a look. Oh, we've had a few of these. They don't mean much. I've never been in trouble before. This is really scaring me. They send these out to put the frighteners on people. You'll sort something out with the bank, maybe. I know it sounds really stupid, but I feel like I've let her down, like I've, I've not been a responsible mother and like I'm just playing house or now something. Now, that's daft. Listen, will you let me buy her this one? No, Liz, she doesn't need it. She's got loads of clothes. Like I said, I, I feel like I've just been playing house. Oh, come on. Anyway, you're not the only one who likes playing house. <laughs> After all, I practically brought her into the world. Didn't I, Rosie Webster? I did. Yes. But why him? Why him? Why not me? You're embarrassing me. She did it with Adrian Gosthorpe. That's why she's so cheerful. Go on, smile. Smile. You did it with Adrian Gosthorpe last night. Wait, wait. No, what is going on now here? Um, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, just a small personnel problem. Just... <gasps> Mr. Holmes with me. Please tell Mr. Watts he's got no right to discuss my private life like this. Private? It's splashed across the best woman's magazines. It's the talk of the cheese counter. The only person who doesn't know about this is Miss Taylor's mother. Oh, Mrs. Wilton, I'm glad I've caught you. Only I couldn't help noticing you'd left some bacon out in your garden overnight. Hey, you're not that hungry, surely, Percy. Yes, very amusing. Now, I know you're of a sympathetic disposition, and I imagine you left it out for a stray cat or some such. Well, I don't see it's any of your business, Mr. Oh, Sutton. Oh, but it is my business and yours too, Mrs. Fairclough. In fact, it's the business of every resident in this street, because however unintentionally you're attracting vermin to the oh, area, It's Mrs. not vermin. There you see, I was right, wasn't I? It is a cat. Well, like I say, I respect your intentions, but I would ask you to be aware of the consequences. And will that be all, Mr. Sutton? Yes, thank you. I bid you good day. Mm. Oh, honestly, didn't even buy anything. <laughs> Come on, Mavis, what's going on? I'm sorry, I don't follow you. Why are you being so shifty? Hey, you've got Victor tucked away behind them lupins, haven't you? Surely you can come up with something better than a bit of bacon for him. Anyway, I thought he was vegetarian. Yes, and I thought you were going to meet Mr. Holdsworth for lunch. Don't let me delay you. Well, I'll, I'll get this. I thought you were collecting glasses. Do you want to have here them open on your bar all afternoon, every afternoon? <laughs> ah, Mr. Alders, what can I get for you? Half oh, a On the house. On the occasion of your restoration to your proper place at the Elm of Better Place. Ah, Rita, what can I get you? Oh, uh, just an orange juice, please. Ah, on the house again. On this momentous occasion. What momentous occasion is that, Jack? Well, it's been vindicated, hasn't it? He is back at the Elm of Better Place. Yes, not before time, I can tell you that much. 
whole place was seething, like the decline of the Roman Empire. Oh, what's happened? Well, Watts, he's had a bust up with his fiancée. Now he's calling down death and damnation on all womankind, staff and customers alike. Then there is the girl Kimberly, crying into the freezer. I've had to send her home. You see what happens when you leave a place like this without the strong hand of leadership, Rita? Oh, I do, I do. Well, Curly's all right when he gets home. Mind you, our Vera, she's like a mother to him. Mm. I think that translated means if you give Vera a job back, she can keep Curly under control. Oh, well, yes. I mean, uh, she's, uh, she's very welcome to a job back. Of course she is. In fact, I was only waiting for this investigation to blow over, Jack. Vera, you've got your job back. You start tomorrow, love. Oh, you little belt of... Oh, what are you there? <laughs> hey, and you... I don't care what anybody says. Oh. <laughs> Look, look, here's your daddy. How you go? Just been sat here and marrying your wee girl. Oh, hi. Which one? <laughs> Jim's call round. Yeah, listen, uh, Liz has told me all about your problems, so I'll just pop round and see if there's anything I could do to help. Oh, it's very good of you, Jim, but no thanks. I've already arranged to pay the fella back on the weekly. Kevin, he's refused. We got a letter this morning. So I figured you might as well pay me back on the weekly, mightn't you? Oh, no thanks, Jim. It's very good of you, but we'll sort some out, won't we, Sam? So? Well, I don't know what. Hey, listen, Kev, don't worry about Look, it. Look, I said no, OK? All right. For All a right. start, I don't think you realise how much it is. All right, go on, then, how much? Over 1,200. Right. Exactly. And anyway... We can fight our own battles. OK, well, listen, I'll tell you what, I'll leave the parry yeah. just to do that, all right? All right, thanks, Jim. Not thanks for all. calling round. It's a lovely thought. And thank Liz for that baby girl. All right, what, yeah. don't mention it. Thanks. Listen, I'll see you around, Kev, all right? Do you have to be so rude? Have you got no pride? Pride? What have I got to be proud of? Come on, what's going on? What do you mean? Well, most nights you can't wait to dash back over there and snuggle down in your little love nest. Look at you now, dithering. You've had a row, haven't you? No, no not really. Well, I've, I've had this experience, you see. I mean, it was a very nice experience. Quite uplifting, only... Well, Derek hasn't been able to share it with me. In fact, now he's gone so far as to say he doubts it ever happened at all. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Can you not go and see a doctor about it? What? Oh, no, it's not like that. It's... Oh, you wouldn't be interested. Really. Well, I have had uplifting experiences of my own, you know, in my time. Hello, Angelo. Hiya. Got to dash. Oh, well, say hello to Jenny for me. You know, I don't see much of her. She's still in the land of the living, that is. Oh, well, she's a pretty girl, is Jenny. Yeah, is that right? I'd heard this promotion lark had more or less died the day. Yeah, well, I'm only the lodger. Angie? She's not in any trouble, is she? No. Look, don't tell her I told you. She's got a new boyfriend. She seems quite carried away with him. Well, that's wonderful. Why didn't she tell me? Don't know. She must have thought you wouldn't be interested. Bye. Bye. Nobody tells me anything round here anymore. How come half the street knew about this before I did? You were at work and it's not half the street. Well, I would have waited. You could have phoned me up. Oh, for goodness sake, Kevin, that's not important. What's important is how the flaming hell are we going to pay Yeah, it? well, I don't know how we're going to pay it. It's as simple as that. <sighs> what are we going to do then? I don't know. We'll have to economise. Economise? You can't economise on 1,200 quid. I mean, we don't even spend anything as it is, do we? I bought baby clothes, I sent all them back, you know. Do you know how much that saved us? Well, what was you buying her baby clothes for anyway? She's got piles of baby clothes. You can't take this out on me and her. It wasn't me that smashed that car, was it? Thanks, Sally. Oh, go on, go out. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Listen, uh, Gail's making the tea tonight, so I thought I'd treat myself. Anyone fancy a pint to some scintillating conversation? Yep, he does. I don't. Yes, you do. I said I don't! Well, I'll tell you what, eh? I'll go and find a seat. If you change your mind, you know where I am. Right. Say that. 
you know, for someone who wanted to keep this quiet, you're doing a damn good job of making sure everybody knows about it, aren't you? I know marriage has its drawbacks, Jack, but at least you've got someone. Someone to go out with, someone to stay in with, someone who thinks you're important. Depends who that someone is, son, doesn't it? Are you not ready yet? Do you not know, just want to die in this? I'll have to do it now. Look, time's getting on and Curly's had a bad blow. I was thinking we might, like, stand by him like eh? Oh, don't be so soft. No, it'll be all right, won't you, Curly, eh? Hey, it's not every night a girl gets to put a glad rags on, is it? Look, you yeah. don't even like the job. You'll be moaning about it in a week. I know, that's why I want to celebrate tonight, before the excitement wears off, eh, Curly? Oh, my world's been drained of colour and meaning, Vera. I can understand that, but you've got my happy, smiling face to look forward to now on the checkout. Help, Curly. Fancy a pint, mate? You see, somebody loves you. <laughs> Come on, get yourself out, drown your sorrows. No, I don't think so, Marty. Am I losing my touch or what? This is the second time I've been turned down tonight. Come on, I'll buy some. No, no, thanks all the same, but there's no room for me in that bright, happy world of laughing couples. What are you doing? I'm seeing what's on the telly. We're supposed to be talking. And we're not talking, are we? I wish you'd gone out. I'm sorry what I said about the car. Why? It's the truth. But that could happen to anybody and... This is not what this is all about, you know. Well, what's it about, then? I'm scared. There's no need to be scared. Not while we're together. But we're not together, are we? I'm not bothered, you know, what they do to us. I'm bothered what we do to ourselves, you know, all this shouting at one another and, and blaming each other for things. I've been through all that before, Kevin, and I don't want to go through that all again. What's that supposed to mean? With my mum and dad. You know, whenever they were in trouble, you know, he blamed her and she blamed him and the pair of them would blame us. And I always thought that's the way things were. Till I met you. And, you know, I thought, it's not going to be like that for me and Kevin, you know, because we're... We're gonna back each other up. We're gonna, we're gonna help each other out. We're not gonna smash things up. We're gonna talk about things. We're not gonna drift apart. We're, we're gonna get closer to one another. Now look at us. You know, maybe my mum and dad thought that they knew better ones too. And perhaps we're going to end up like them. Oh, don't be daft. We are different. Of course we are. And do you know what made them drift apart? It was the same. It was all about money. When my dad had money, he was like the king of half the world. He was lighting pints up on the bar for everybody. When he didn't have any money, he was the lowest of the low. And he really measured himself in money. That's the way you're gonna be. Oh, sure, you know, you're really bothered about paying this man off, but you're more bothered about, about paying this money off yourself to show the world what kind of a man you are. And I don't want you to be like that, Kevin. I don't want you to be like my dad. I won't. How can I, eh, when I've got you? This time's not what it might be. Shall we try with Rosemary? Maybe?
Good Foxy. No Jack tonight then, Ali? Oh, no, he's out celebrating. Vera's got her job back. Of course, he don't come in here to celebrate, does he? But then, who expects loyalty of the lower orders these days? Eh? Oh, I don't know. Anyone who keeps Vera Duckworth's miserable face out of this bar must have your interest at heart, Alec. Hey, up. Either of you two want a drink? No, thanks, mate. We're just gone. Only came in while the pizza was cooking. Is this a wind-up or what? Someone put a notice on me back just saying no to Martin Platt. Only came in for one nice convivial pint. I've asked everyone now, except Percy something. Oh, he's someone I won't say no. Who? All right, Curly. Why are you staying at home? Well, see you, Jack see and Vera are still there, you know, getting ready to go out. I can't stand the party atmosphere. It reminds me of a happier time, you know. So you thought you'd come here and be miserable. Aye. Got a pint, then? Yes, please. You know, Andrew, I'm thrilled for her. I just would have thought if she got a new bloke, she'd have been right round to tell me about it. What's wrong with him? He ain't got ten heads, has he? No, but he's got a big Ford Sierra. Mm. They seem to be seeing a lot of each other. She seems very happy. Well, I'm always happy when she's got somebody. Always hoping this'll be the one to help her sort herself out. Alec, I'll have a vodka and... Uh... Thank you. Thank you. Right. The funny thing is, it's made her more desirable, more womanly. She's different. She's got she's got more confidence. Now, I didn't really fancy her at the beginning, but now... So I... is the way, Curly. Mate of mine, never had bacon in his life. Couldn't stand the stuff. So I'm vegetarian. After that, you sing it up every day with a craving for bacon buses. You used to come in the shop just for the sound of sizzling pans, inhaling the aroma of frying fat. Weird. And now look at me. On my own, as usual. I mean, you've got someone, Kev's got someone, even the Buckwiss have got each other, even greasy Adrian Gosthorpe's got someone. Oh, about that fit piece you were with the other day? Oh, I didn't want her. I want Kimberly. Oh, there's nothing I can do about that. Do you want to chase her? No, no, you better get off. Gail be wondering where you are. Cool. Imagine that, eh? Having someone wonder where you are. Yes, Gail knows exactly where I am. I told her. I'll come out for a nice, cheery pint at the end of another long day. I shall be there at home now, waiting for you with open arms. <sighs> now, I've been on edge all day, Derek, because I knew I'd seen it, but until you saw it, it didn't seem to count somehow. Oh, Mavis, my love, I should never have doubted you. In fact, I shall never doubt you ever again. <laughs> Do you know, it looked me straight in the eye. It was just me and him out there in the moonlight. Oh, I wish I'd been with you. But you were, Mavis. Do you know what I thought when I first saw it? I thought, Mavis's fox. That's Mavis's fox. Oh, no, it's our fox, Derek. <laughs> it's our secret, and we're not going to share it with anybody else. My lips are sealed. Ta da! Oh. Hey, what do you think, Ben? Flaming lust! Oh, God, you don't half make a girl feel good, you, don't you? Do you think I look beautiful? Ravishing, come on. <laughs> hey, hang on, what was that? Come on, what is it now? I've been hanging about here a flaming hour. Oh, that noise, isn't you? Look, it was now, come on. Well, you must have heard that. Believe it, dead eye. Oh, Jack. Oh, there's some upsetting them. You get through that gate and see if you can see them. Right. Oh, my God, Mocky, Dolly and me, Molly, me, best pigeons. Best birds. Just put Scott in there and kill them. No locks. Yeah, all right, Percy. No locks and you want to put the yard bolt on either. What do you expect? Well, you shut up, Percy. Can't you see he's upset? I'm only saying, if he had proper locks fitted, he wouldn't have to be upset, would he? His pigeons had been safe and sound. Hey, me lovely Dolly Palm. God bless her, she was the best pigeon I ever had. Hey, look, Jack, it might have been my fault. I think I left the back gate open. No, son. Percy's right. It was my fault. The lock on that door's been dodgy for months. You see? Two beautiful birds dead. Just because I couldn't be bothered fixing it. Oh, Jack. Ten minutes. That's all it ever took me. I couldn't be flaming bothered. Oh, aye, aye. What's going on here, then, eh? Oh, just in time for the barbecue, then. Cat's got in and killed two of Jack's pigeons. Oh, right. You could have fixed a lock on that door in ten minutes. Will you shut up, Percy? I'm only saying. Well, go make Emily a cup of cocoa or something and leave us in peace. If four could only think on. That's all I'm saying. So, it uh, forced its way in, did it, this uh, cat? Yeah, it must have done. It dodgy lock, it must have forced it. Yeah, must be a pretty strong cat. Do you know, I, 
understood if it fear of Etam. Killing for killing's sake. What kind of flaming world? I wish you'd gone out with Martin instead of sitting around moping. I'm not spending money on beer. Well, what's that then? This was him, wasn't it? Oh, and I don't suppose that cost anything, that one, did it not? If I'd gone to the pub, I would have spent what? A fiver at least. What's this cost? 80p. I just wish I knew what we were going to do. Go to court. Now what else I can do? But then what? I don't know what. What did they expect? We get the money by magic? If we haven't got it, we can't pay it. But, Kevin, they'll come and take away our furniture. Anyone comes in this house and I'll break the flaming legs and I mean that, Sally. I still think we should get a bank loan. <sighs> we can't afford it. Well, you could do some overtime at Walker's, couldn't there you? There's no overtime at Walker's. It's all stitched up. There's none left for idiots like me. God, I hate that job. No, oh, you hate everything you, don't you? There's a lot of things I don't hate, Sally. So let's not get on that track, eh? Look, we're in a lot of trouble right now. Let's not make it worse by scrapping, eh? Sitting on your backside drinking beer, that's not going to do anything, is it? Saying you're going to break people's legs if they come through the door and take away our furniture. I don't want anybody to take our furniture away. I want that debt paid. Yeah, and you think I don't? I don't know what you want sat around here, moping. I'm going to bed. Fine. This is Hinkley, this is Hinkley. Please, not jams, pickles. I distinctly said pickles. Sorry, Mr. Watts. Oh. Good morning, Mrs. Duckworth. Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> I, uh, no hard feelings there. No, no, life is too short for hard feelings. Mrs. D, mm. glad to be back. Well, yeah, but I wish they'd have uh, washed me over all. I mean, it was just screwed up in the corner where I'd left it. I've had to iron it. Um, I trust you won't be discussing the, the incidents of the past few days with the staff. Oh, you mean keep my gob shut? In a word. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you did give me my job back, didn't you? And you did apologise. Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. What do you mean, you didn't? Oh, no, I didn't say that. No, if that is what you want, fine, fine, yes. All right, then. As long as we know where we stand. Just don't make a joke out of it, that's all. Who's making the joke? You did just now. No. You did, saying it was voodoo sacrifices or something. It's not funny, you know. Like family to me, them birds. I think they were family fuss, you reckon? The little Dolly Parton were more family than anybody else in that flaming house. At least I could talk to her. Why? Did she talk back? No, no, no. She knew. I mean, she couldn't say out, but she she could understand everything I was saying, you know. Why? I don't know why I'm telling you, cos you're all this flaming mock. Of course I won't. Do you know, she was nigh on human, that little bird were, you know? I could open the cage some mornings and she'd jump on my hand and look into my eyes. And it was as if she was saying, go on, go on, Jack, tell me. Do you remember that time our Vera crashed the car and, and I went into the windscreen and my face and everything? Well, next morning, I went down and I told Dolly all about it. And she listened, bless her, like, like she always did. And, 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 do you know, it's, it's a God's honest truth, this Alec. She, she rested a little head on my cheek and, and stroked my face with her feathers. Do you know, I could have cried, Alec, I could, honestly. Do you know, we had a real relationship, me and that bird, you know. Oh, you don't believe me, anyway. Of course I do, no, Jack. No, you don't. You, you think I'm a flipping idiot. No. We could communicate, you know, we really could. Of course you could. One bird brain to another. I knew! I knew! What? I knew you'd mock! I knew it! I knew it! Hmm, she's gorgeous. Yes, she is. Oh, she is sometimes. <laughs> but she's got to learn to go to sleep at nights now, haven't you? Do you know she had me up five times last night? Oh, oh it's the same with me and our Gail. But honestly, love, it does end. I know that's no comfort now, but it does end. So. Yeah, but when, though? Oh, who knows? Oh, it's a shame. I mean, you should be enjoying her, your first little baby. Is that right that she should be getting you into this state? Well, I am enjoying her. It's just that I feel tired all the time. Oh, no. Sally, love, is it just tiredness? I mean, well, you and Kev, everything's all right, isn't it? Yes, I do. We're fine. You know, you shouldn't bottle things up at this stage. I'm not. 
If ever you want someone to speak to, well, that's all I'm saying. You know where I am. I'm going to have to go, cos I'm late for the clinic already. Yeah, love, but don't quackle it up, all right? I won't. Thanks, Audrey. All right. Sally, you know where I am? If it's rats that's responsible, we've got to find out where they're coming from. I thought they reckoned it was cats or something bigger. What made them think that? It was something to do with the door being too hard to shut. Get on, the baby could have crawled in. No, it's got all the mounts of rats as this. Oh, that's all we need is that rats in the street. Why folk make a fuss about rats is the easiest thing in the world to get rid of. How? Well, you bait them, don't you? What, you mean poison them? Aye, that's right, but first of all, you've got to find where they're coming from. Yeah, and how do you do that? Well, you look in the likeliest places, and in the street, the two prime candidates, in my opinion. Go on, then. Places where there's food stored in quantity. That's this public house and your shop. Yeah, I thought you were going to say that. Alec, Alec, have you got a second? Yeah, other pound, is it, Al? Just, just tell him what you just said to me. Yes, of course. I said if we're looking for rats, you've got to look where there's food about. And the rest? Well, and in this street, there's this place and his shop. Hear what he's saying. The mouth on this block is saying we've got vermin. Forgive me, Percy, I'm getting a bit slow in my old age. Why should we be looking for rats? Don't wish pigeons. It could have very well been rats. Jack? Yeah? Percy's got a pigeon theory. What? Rats. It's not rats. It's bigger than rats. And I am not talking about it. I'm going to be cellar. Now, did you hear that, Percy? Not rats. From the horse's mouth. Now, any more daft talk from you, there'll be a solicitor's letter through your door. My word. Anybody think you've got something to hide? Now, I'm warning you, hey, look, Percy. Look, look, Percy, look. Percy, look, look. Forget about rats. It's, it's a red herring, these rats. Between you and me, it's something much bigger, much more worrying. Oh? Yeah, but I don't want it to get around, all right? Well, you can trust me, you know you can. It's, uh, the Puma. The what? The Puma, the Weatherfield. Weatherfield Puma? Keep your voice down. Cause there's a lot of panic on the streets. Yes. Oh, he's smiling at me, Rita. I'm sure he's focused. Wind. Wind? Spends half his day smiling. <laughs> Talk about perfect. Does he have your breakfast ready in the morning? No, <laughs> but I'm working on it. Oh, he's gorgeous. He is. What did you do to deserve him? Oh, I don't know. He's so well behaved. I can't believe oh, it. It's a lot different then from Sally's Rosie. <gasps> oh. oh, it's awful that, isn't it? Oh, I'm embarrassed to go around there with Rosie yelling her lungs out all day. It looks like I'm showing up. Oh, no, you shouldn't feel like that. No. I'll go around now. I think. Oh, yes. I mean, she needs all the help she can get with that little mm. one, doesn't she? Yeah. All right. Give him here, then. Oh. <laughs> bye bye, then, David. <laughs> hey, and watch out for that killer cat. Talking about pigeons, Nicky's friend, Darren Twanky, from back in Gingerman Street, he lost his rabbit the night before last, just the same thing. Whatever it was, broke into the cage. Oh, dear. Oh. Hey, just a minute. Did you say Twanky? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I swear to God. <laughs> I think his mother's a widow. <laughs> hey, Curly, have you seen paper? I have. Oh, it's just that one Miss Trollsworth asked me to keep an eye on you and, and well, they know, you know. Who? What? What girls in here? There were no name mentioned, but, well, they know. Do you not think I don't know that? Every time I look in someone's face, they snigger behind me back. And you know who told him, don't you? There's only one person who's mean enough and underhand enough to do something like that. Look, Curly, don't get yourself in a state. I'm not in a state! And it's Mr. Watts to you! Everything all right, Mrs. Duncan? Uh, yeah, I think so. Jezebel! Mr. Oldsworth is at it again! He's calling me names again! <sighs> She's gone for her dinner. Did you want her? No, I'm quite glad she's not here, actually. Oh? Well, I'm not being rude, but... Well, I've not known her long, but I get the feeling if you want a secret kept, you best not tell Mavis. Hey, where did you get that idea? Very discreet is Mavis. Oh, and I'm sorry. Well, not very good at hiding her feelings, but she can keep a secret. Oh. Well, come on, what is it? Yeah, well, no big deal. We're having a party. You are, are you? But Jenny doesn't know. I see. A birthday on Friday. Yeah. Same oh. day as my mum's, actually. But I'm not inviting my mum. Not her scene, I take it. Not quite. No. 
<laughs> so anyway, I thought I'd better let you know you've been landlady and all. So if you're seeing a suspicious people going in and out, you know why. Are you having many? No, 30 or 40. But the important thing is don't tell Jenny. Well, I think with 30 or 40 people in the house, you might just notice. Well, this is a painful duty, Norman. But a duty nonetheless. Sit down. Right. What have you got to say for yourself? Right. Well, you know the rule, Norman? The golden precept? What is the golden precept, Norman? Hmm. That's right. The store comes first. And quite honestly, Norman, I've had the feeling over the last few weeks that the store comes last in your book. In fact, so far behind the field that we might as well have walked it down to Knacky Yard with a pot for the glue. Tragic. Tragic to see it. Fine, upstanding specimen of a man. Every advantage under the sun. Youth, good looks, vigour, strength. And look at you, like damp pastry. And all over a girl. Well, this has got to stop, Norman, hasn't it? It has. And you are going to stop it. You're going to stop it yourself. And do you know how? You are going to come to me and you are going to say, Miss Taylor is to be transferred. Have you got that? Because I am not going to do it for you. For yourself and for better by sake, you are going to take that bull by the horns, wipe the slate clean with it and turn over a sparkling new penny. Because you owe it to all of us, Norman. Have I made myself clear? I'm home, Mavis. Hello, Derek. Oh, Mavis. What are you doing, sitting in the dark again? I was just having a quiet five minutes. I was just thinking. You don't want to do too much of that. Bad for the brain. What were you thinking about? Oh, just general things. Power of rumour, the cruelty of nature. Oh, That gracious. sort of thing. <laughs> oh, I just had a very trying day, Derek, and I'm very worried about our foxy friend. Have you seen it again? No. No, it's just that all day people have been talking about animals being taken and killed. It's been very upsetting. Apparently, two of Jack Duckworth's pigeons were killed last night, and a little boy called... Darren Twankies had his pet rabbit taken. Are they saying it's our fox? Oh, no, of course not. They don't know about him, do they? But, I mean, if anybody else sees him, well, they're bound to put two and two together. What, you mean you think it is him killing these animals? I don't know why you've come to that conclusion. No, it's, it's what they do, Derek. That's what foxes do. I mean, Jack's never lost pigeons before. It's too much of a coincidence. Yes, I see. You could have a point. Well, I couldn't bear it if they tried to trap him or anything. I mean, you read these awful stories about what they do to foxes and badgers and things. Just imagine what they might do with these men. Some of them have very primitive urges. Well, I think you're distressing yourself needlessly, Mavis. I mean, after all, you said yourself, they don't know about our fox. And another thing, he's well able to take care of himself. I mean, that's what he's about, isn't it? Survival. I must say, I feel a bit disappointed in him. I, mean, I know all about nature, red in tooth and claw, but well, he always seems to have such a nice manner in our garden. Hunter, though, you see, Mavis. You can't expect him to tuck into the cucumber sandwiches. No. Well, I think he could draw the line at people's pets, though. I mean, poor Darren Twanky's rabbit. That's very distressing. Did you say Twanky? Yeah. Apparently, his poor mother's widowed as well. But he called me a Jezebel. Yes, so you said. And, and, and you had my every sympathy. But that is no reason to yell like a fishwife down the whole length of the cat food dial, is it? It's not fair, Mr Holdsworth. I shouldn't have to put up with that, you know. It's harassment. Now then, that is an emotive term, Miss Taylor. I could steal well clear of that particular word, believe me. Well, what else is it if it isn't harassment? Don't keep saying that word. Let's just call it a, a temporary instability from an otherwise exemplary member of the management team. You're just washing your hands of it, aren't you? It's not fair. You've got to do something. Well, I have tried. Hell's teeth I've tried. Don't you think I've tried? I've got a store to run here, you know. And all of a sudden, I am an Arabian amongst the comestibles. 
I've better things to do, Miss Taylor. Mark my words. Head office wouldn't like to hear about harassment. Oh, don't keep mentioning that word, please. Harassment! Oh, you don't realise the effort I'm making on your behalf, do you? I've had Norman in my office this afternoon treading on hot coals, a severe dressing down, ashen he was, shamefaced. And what's happening then? What? Nothing, I bet. Nothing. He is in an emotional state, Miss Taylor. And you should know that more than anybody, eh? Yes, yes. Now, these things take time, you know. He's here. Come on. Oh, hello, hello Norman. Mr Holdsworth, <clears throat> I'd just like you to know if you're considering transferring any of our staff to our Bolton branch, I have no objection. No objection at all. In fact, in certain cases of certain employees, it's a case of goodbye and good riddance. <laughs> well, there you are. What did I tell you? These things take time, but we win in the end, don't we? Oh. Kevin, they're lovely. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. See, that's how she gets flowers off me, Elsie. Uh, just gives uh, me the hard word uh, before bedtime. That way I'm feeling guilty all day. Yeah, well, it gives you good guilt. It's good for your soul. Uh, yeah, that's a good for the pocket, though, eh, Kevin? They must have cost you. Flaming fortune. So, are you there by chance or did Sally invite you? Oh, just a flying visit, Kevin. No, spur of the moment. I've got to keep an eye on my granddaughter. Yeah, well, I think she's doing all right. Mm. Some babies are very hard work, you know. It's just the look of the draw. Yeah, most people reckon she'll grow out of it. Even if they're easy in themselves, new babies take a lot of adjusting to. Oh, say that again, ain't Sal. But we're adjusting, aren't we? I mean, we never thought it'd be easy, and it's not. It's hard work, but we're coping, aren't we? Kevin, our Sal tells me you've um, got a spot of trouble at the moment. What trouble? Court case. Oh, great. So who else have you told, eh? Hey, does the whole flaming world have to be in on this, eh? Why the hell can't you keep things to yourself? This is between you and me. It's got nothing to do with anyone else. Just you and me. Kevin, she's my mother. She's got a right to know about this. Ah, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Wilton, hello. Oh, How hello. nice to see you over weekday evening. Well, Mr. Gilroy. You're getting away from the pressures of life, no doubt. What pressures? What? Oh, nothing, just a turn of phrase. <laughs> anyway, welcome, as we say in the licensed trade. Sup up. Mm. He's very perky tonight. Yes, one might almost say makes a change. Well, maybe you don't need to bear your cross quite so openly. What? He doesn't know about our fox. When he talks about the pressures of life, he's only making small talk, not accusing you of harboring a dangerous animal. Good evening. Uh, Hello. Sit down. Yes, yes. yes. Of course. Just you carry on with your conversation now. Just you pretend I'm not here. Oh. It's quiet tonight, isn't it? Yes. Mm. I say. Oh, good evening, Hello. Mr. Mr. Wilton. I, yeah, uh, I thought you might be interested in this. I've just come straight from the bowling club. Now, there's a lad in there, he's a year or two older than me, a retired gamekeeper. Now, I believe you've got a theory about Duckworth pigeons. Do I? Yes, about them being killed by a bigger animal than uh, a cat, what is it? Look, all I said was, Percy, it would take an animal with a lot more weight to break through that door. That's all I said, and I don't want to get into a debate about it. All right. No, but you know what this sex gamekeeper said it was? A fox. How did you know that? Well, it seems very obvious to me. I mean, it's got all the trademarks. An urban fox. You get plenty of them around, and it's my theory that that's what we've got in our patch. And have you told, don't we? No, I haven't. Well, I think I'd better add. Make sure he locks up properly in future. Did you see that? Hey, hey. He came straight up to me before he even went to the bar for a drink. After a free one. Poor wee man. Oh. Nobody thinks it was your fault, Kevin. Oh, don't they? Oh, anyone can bump a car. Not the faults with this Mr. Seymour for being so stupid and greedy. Well, I don't agree. It was my fault. I was knackered, I wasn't concentrating. This bloke swerved straight across me. I ended up in a load of roadwork. So, I'm a prat. Seymour's greedy. I still think you're being hard on yourself. Oh, tell me. Are you really here by chance or did Sally send for you? I promised Kevin. I just wanted to come. Well, it's nice to see you, but I'm just sorry you've come to all this. I give up. I think she's fast asleep. I'll get near the door and she's wide awake and yelling. Oh, great. So we've got her for a couple of hours and all, have we? Well, you try and get her off then. Will you let me help you? No, Mum, honestly, she'll only start yelling again, so... I don't mean that. I mean this. Now, there's still money left from when your dad died. 
I can manage and you can pay me back when you're able to. Oh, no, Mum, no, no, you mustn't. I can manage, Sally. I don't need me savings. Now, let me write you out a cheque and have done with it. You need it far more than I do. What do you think? What do you think? Are you sure you could manage, Mum? I've more than enough. It'd be nice to put it to good use. Oh, Kevin, hold it for a minute. Oh, Mum, thanks. You're wonderful. Oh, don't be so daft. <laughs> it's the least I can do. Yeah, well, you're not doing that either. What? I said she's not doing that. We don't need flaming handouts from anyone. This is my mess and I'll sort it out. Oh, you're a right hero, you are, aren't you? No, I'm not, but I'm not going capping hand to anyone. This is my problem and I'll sort it out. Oh, it's your problem. It's not my problem. It's not Rosie's problem. It's just your problem. Well, you sort it out then. But don't come to me with one more word about this. not being rotten to your mother. And I didn't throw the offer back in her face. You're going to be late for work. It was a very nice offer, but we're just not taking her money, and that's it. You're going to be late. Look, the point is... Are you going to work or what? Yes, I'm going to work when I'm ready. Only right now I'm talking to you. And you're talking stupid. Oh, do you think so? Because I don't, and I'll tell you this. I'm not taking anybody's charity. Charity? There's only you thinks this is charity. It's down to me to get the money we need. Nobody else. Oh, just... Go to work, Kevin. I'm going. It's a flaming pleasure. <sighs> I suppose it was too perfect to last. Hmm? What was? Our wildlife experience. Our contact with the throbbing pulse of nature in the raw. Ah, the fox. Mm. Yes, I'm afraid so, Mavis. I mean, if people are beginning to suspect there's a fox about, then its days are numbered. Oh, but it's such a beautiful creature, Derek. So proud and free. I know, I know. But why do people have to be so prejudiced? I suppose it's because it's not one of the herd. Possibly, possibly. Oh, Derek, let's put this bacon out for it if you're not going to eat it. I mean, we know it likes bacon. Maybe. If people think we're encouraging the fox by feeding it, they're going to think we're odd. What, just because we don't feel the need to chase it and kill it? Exactly. We think it's beautiful, but to them it's vermin. Well, then, we must never breathe a word of it. And there's always a chance people will forget about it. Oh, come on. Let's put this bacon out for it. Do you mind me asking what you're doing? Aha. Uh -huh. Let's see. There's buried treasure, and you found the map. No, but you're, you're in the right general area. I know. We're going to have a swimming pool. Well, in a way, you're close, but um, still completely wrong. Oh, Derek, don't let them see you bacon. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, morning, Steph. Hi, Des. Hello. Morning, Derek. Planning a garden layout? Something like that, Derek, yeah. I've got big plans for this land of mine. Finally decided what I'm going to do with it. Oh, what sort of a garden? A drastic change, Mavis. You know, you must have looked over this fence a hundred times and thought, why doesn't the idle beggar do something? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Yes, you have. Well, as from today, it'll be different. Can you make it home for lunch? <laughs> I don't think I like the sound of that. I wouldn't put it past him to have the whole garden concreted over. I shouldn't think Reynard would either. Who? Oh, Reynard. I'm sorry. I'm with you, Mavis. <laughs> Reynard. Close come. All for you. Look like birthday cards. Many happy returns, by the way. Thank you very much. I don't know, though. 20. Makes me feel ancient. Here's my card. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this one's from Robert. Oh, him. Yes, him. <laughs> What's up, Bonnie? <laughs> oh, it's just something he's written. <laughs> I can't show it to you, it's personal. <laughs> so come on then, Freeman. Where's me wonderful Prezi? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked about that. You get your Prezi tonight. It's a party! Hey? A birthday party for you here tonight. Full fix, the booze, the eats, everything. I don't want a party. Of course you do. Anyway, it's all fixed now. Well, then you'd better unfix it, hadn't you? Oh, come on, Jenny. Everybody will be here. I've asked everybody. Robert? Well, no. 
I haven't invited him. Well, I couldn't, could have, because I didn't have his address. And even if I did have his phone number, I couldn't ring him because his wife might answer. Oh, come on, Jenny. I've asked everybody. People from Alnea, people from Polly. From the Polly? Angie, that's all over as far as I'm concerned. He's dead. Look, if you want to have a party, you have a party. But I ain't going to be here. You don't mean that. Yes, I do. I'm what? going out with Robert tonight to somewhere special. It's going to be my birthday party. But I've invited people. Well, that's not my problem, is it? Like I say, you do what you want to, but I won't be here. Kevin? Yeah, it's me. I wasn't expecting you on. I haven't made you anything. Doesn't matter. There's nothing wrong at the garage, is there? Me? Hey? No, no, no. I just... I just come home to say I was sorry. I didn't mean to shout this morning and... I didn't mean to take it out on you. I'm sorry too. I'm just really touchy at the moment. What with the baby and money and Mr Seymour and everything and... I'm sorry. Ah, shut up. It's nothing to do with you. It's all down to me. It's not. It's me as well. You know, whatever happens, we mustn't fall out. We just mustn't. No, no. That's what I've been thinking all day. Which is why I've come home. <sighs> Do you know, Jack, while you're stuck there, them pigeons of yours could be cooing their last coo. No, oh, safe enough in daylight, Alec. Um, half a lager and uh, medium sherry, please. Coming What's up? What's daylight got to do with it? Cats don't care whether it's light or dark. I have no cat that had my pigeons, it was a fox. Oh, it could easily have been a cat, Mr Ducker. There has been a strange cat about, Lake. No, oh, love it. It was a fox. They're about the towns now, you know. They're everywhere. Oh, I hardly think so. Look, I'm telling you, it was a fox. Because my pigeons, you see, they had their heads bit off. Now, according to a mate of mine, that is a sure sign of it being a fox. That's a fox's trademark. Oh, really? Hey, Mr Duck. Percy, you've it? not oh, got yes, a gun you. tucked away at home, have you? Something you bought back from the war? Oh, if he brought home back from the war, it'd have been a ladle or a wooden spoon, something for stirring it, eh, Percy? <laughs> I did my share of fighting, more than my share. And I didn't bring a gun back, no. What do you want a gun for, Mr Duck? <laughs> Thank you. See, this fox off. Don't worry, though, there's other ways. I don't believe there is a fox. He could be right, you know. And not an English fox, neither. It could be a French fox with rabies. To get through the Channel Tunnel, you see. Mr. Sugden, the Channel Tunnel's not even open yet. Not to the public, no. Not not to humans. But foxes don't wait for some big wing cutting a ribbon with a pair of gold scissors. You're right. Foxes don't wait for trains. They just sneak through the old they made. And if this one bites you, as good as had it. I can tell you all the signs, twitching and acting strange. Well, he does that already. Hydrophobia, you know, fear of water. Hey, Jack, you don't like water, do you? For supping or washing. Uh, putting poison down, that's the safest oh, way. Oh, Mr Sugden, that's a terrible thing to say. Poisoning of the creatures. We haven't got the monopoly on this planet, you know. Other species are entitled to live. So were my pigeons. You hope it's a flaming tolerant if your budgie got its head bit off. Oh, I'm not going to stop here and listen to this. Come on. Well, I'm not finished with drink yet. Oh, Derek! Mm -hmm. What's the matter with her? She's touchy, isn't she? She's very keen on wildlife. Give over. She wanted wildlife. She's not a married middle lad, though. there. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting, absolutely. You get angry. People are going to suspect. the help of. If you was me, you'd know. But what's so wrong about it? Well, there's nothing wrong about it. It's a very nice offer. But I got us in this mess, so it's down to me. But she's family. I mean, you're always going on about charity. It's not charity if your own family help you out, is it? That's what families are all there for. Yeah, you think so now. But if I took her money, you'd think less about me. No, I wouldn't. Well, you think you wouldn't, but you would. Kevin, don't tell me what I think. I wouldn't. And what about Rosie? What about her? Well, looking ahead in the future, maybe one day she's going to be married and she might need our help. Are you saying that you and I can't help her? <laughs> of course we can. Well, then, if we can help her, why can't my mum help us? And like I said, if she was married and she needed our help and her husband wouldn't let us... Well, I think he was a right idiot. No, 
Okay. <laughs> I see what you're getting at, yes. I was wrong. So does that mean that we can borrow this money then off my mum to pay Mr Seymour back? Yes. But it is borrowing <laughs> it and we are going to pay it back every single penny. Of course we are. Oh, Kevin, I can't tell you how much better I feel. I'm going to write that cheque right now and I'm going to have done with it. I've been a right fool, haven't I, eh? Right from the word go. Right from servicing that bloke's car. I've been a bloody fool. You haven't. I wouldn't have you the least bit different. Do you know, I wouldn't swap you for any other man in the whole wide world. Yeah. This bloke comes in the betting shop, see, and last week he lost his shirt. He knows I've always fancied a boat. He paid 500 quid for this thing. Oh, it's a bargain, Steph. Honest. I'll be worth thousands when I do it up. Uh, excuse me, but isn't the proper place for a boat on water? Yeah, well, of course it is. And that's where it'll be once I get it all done up. Get it all ship -ship. Oh, can you see yourself, Steph? Lying on a cabin top, sunning yourself. Oh, yes, topless like as not. Going round the world in it, are we? Well, I don't know about round the world, but we'll have some fun. How long is it going to be here? Now you're asking me, well, there's a fair bit once doing. No, only I'm thinking that as long as it's here, it's taking quite a bit of sun off our kitchen window. No, no, you don't get the sun from this angle, Derek, do you, Steph? It's like what you call a conversation piece, something interesting to talk about. Pardon me, but I would call it an eyesore. Oh, no, Mavis. Boats are beautiful. When I get it all done up, it'll be a thing of beauty. A joy forever. Well, that's a matter of opinion, of course. I must say, I think you need council permission to have something like that in the garden. No, no, Derek. An Englishman's home is his castle, and his back garden is his kingdom. Right, we'll see you, children. All right. You be good, you two. See Aye. you some more now. Turn out now. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Hey, uh, boss, you won't forget it's, it's my night's off. Uh, don't worry, Jack, don't worry. We'll struggle along without you somehow. Taking Vera now, are you? I mean, yeah, looks like. We've got better sport than that. We're going after that fox, me and my mate Bert. Who's your mate Bert? Bert Latham. Had more foxing than you've had at dinners. Bert Latham? Hey, just a minute. He's that bloke that wore that flaming dog on you at Christmas, isn't oh. he? He's the man's a rough. No, 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 no. I'll get it. A rough diamond, I'll grant you. Yeah, dog rough. And with this dog, that's saying so much. Ah, well, all the same when it comes to foxes. Are you telling me that he's part of the Prince Charles's set? You know, the red coat, bugles, tally ho, and all that palaver. Oh, no, no, no. He, he catches them in, in other ways, don't he? He, he, he kind of he shoots them and traps them lots of other ways. But you don't know where to start looking. Oh, we do. Bert does. You see, that fox had my pigeons, and he's got the taste now. When it comes back for seconds, we're going to be there. Do you know, I think I'll have its brush over the fireplace. Just next to me bullfighter poster. Look, you just have to raise your eyes to the window and there it is, an incredible hulk of a thing. Well, you can't be reckoned to keep it there long, can you? I mean, boats are like flowers, they need to be in water. But men get these enthusiasms and then when the fancy fades, what have you got? A permanent monstrosity. Is he going to do it up himself? Mm. He says so. You don't strike me as a do-it-yourselfer. I bet he gets craftsmen. Mm. Oh. Well, that'll be even better, won't it? Workmen clambering all over the place. Water in me wallflowers whistling at me. Oh, you should be so lucky. Oh. Hiya. Can I pay my paper bill, please? You certainly can. <coughs> hey, we're going up market round here, aren't we? Buying boots now. Oh, you've seen it then. We can't miss it. And Jack Duckworth is taking up fox hunting. Oh, oh, oh. they'll be playing polo now. How do you mean? Fox hunting? Him and his mate. He reckons they're going to get it tonight. It's a fantasy. Oh, no, he means it. I dare say he does. But seeing as there's no foxes round here, it don't matter much, does it? <laughs> Hiya. What are you doing? I'm doing what I should have been doing all day, but didn't get a chance to do because I spent all day cancelling your birthday party. Well, you should have invited people in the first place, should you not, without asking me? Some people weren't too pleased. Gail and Martin had got babysitters. It's not my fault. And I didn't get a chance to get hold of everybody, so there'll be one or two people coming round tonight with presents for you. Well, you can tell them you don't want to see them. No, I can't, because I won't be here. Oh, no, because you're going out with Robert. Is there something wrong with that? Everything. Why? Because he's married. You're dead conventional on the quiet, aren't you? 
You that always claims to be independent and free. Well, we know who isn't free, don't we? Robert. You just don't like him. No, I don't. And apart from anything else, he's nearly twice your age. Oh, that's got nothing to do with anything. Age doesn't matter. I wonder if he was a lorry driver. What's that supposed to mean? You wouldn't look twice at him if he had no money. You, kn you know what, Angie? I've just had it with you. I mean, you don't like what I do. You don't like what I am. That's fine. That's your privilege. But I have just had enough. What's that supposed to it mean? It means I want you to get out of here. You're always in my way. You're always on my back. You're a pain. Find yourself somewhere else to live. I'm home, Mavis. Oh, oh, oh. Derek. What's the matter? Not that blasted boat, is it? No, it isn't the boat. No, it's Jack Duckworth. Liz MacDonald was in the shop today and she says he's determined to get the fox tonight. Our fox, Jack Derek. Jack Duckworth's all talk, Mavis. Any fox can outwit him. No, he's got this friend, you see, who specialises in hunting foxes. Trapping them, I don't know. We might be planning to shoot it. Well, they've got to find it first. That's yes. no easy well, task. They think it'll come back from Jack Duckworth's pigeons. Oh, Derek, we've got to help it. Help it? Mm. How can we possibly help it? Oh, well, they must warn it, Derek. We must keep it away from the Duckworths. Well, I, I think I've got it worked out. Oh? Oh, Derek, honestly, I'm sure you can do it. I'm sure it's well within your powers. <sighs> Will you stop moping over Kimble? It's not healthy. I can't help it, Vera. Of course you can. There's plenty more fish in sea. Tell you, I wish I'd have chucked our jack back in. Because between you and me, he's only a tiddler. Mind you, he thinks it's Moby Dick. <laughs> If you think you're getting any tea, forget it. It were made and you want here, so it's chucked in the bin. I've had my tea. Oh, you've had plenty of ale. I can smell it. I'll give a morning one when we've got company. Come in, bear lad. Uh, now then. Hey, boy. Come here. Hey, now what's that thing doing in here? You love that dog, V. Oh, yes. I love it like every other hound I've ever loved. Oops. Yeah, stole me food and then showed me its teeth. It's here to make amends, Vera Love. Get the ale up. No, no, quiet, quiet, V. Quiet, quiet. Just don't show yourself up, son. All I said was get the ale up. Now, look here, you. What's he doing here, eh? And why have you brought that thing? What are you up to? That dog is going to catch that fox, Vera. That's what he's going to do, eh? Here's an all. I reckon that calls for a drink. Get the ale up. <laughs> We lure the fox away from the Duckworth's backyard into our back garden. And then when it comes there, we make the most tremendous clatter with our pans and so on. We frighten it away and it never comes back. We'll never see it again, but at least it'll be safe. You know, Mavis, if people see us in our garden, banging away on our saucepans... Oh, what does it matter what people think? And then again. Luring it into the garden, that won't be easy. Yes, it will. I've got all this bacon ready, and all you have to do is lay a trail from the Duckworth's yard to our back garden. The fox follows the trail, and when he gets to the garden, we... Yes, I know, I know, I know. We bang away on our saucepans. But there's one thing you've overlooked, Mavis. What's that? This bacon trail from the Duckworth's yard to our garden. Yeah. Supposing the fox follows it the other way, from our garden to the Duckworth. You're just trying to get out of doing this, Derek, aren't you? Angie? Uh, Jenny not with you? You must be joking. Angie, can't you tell me what's up with her? There is something, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Well, I wish you'd let me in on it. I know you're a friend. Well, so am I. OK, I'll tell you. You know that new man she's going out with? It's Robert. We're about him. He's married. I see. Jenny, no. Of course she knows. She don't give a damn as long as she's having a good time, which is why she's chucked all her old friends, including me. See you. See you. Oh. So that's what's been going on. Beg pardon? I knew there was something. I knew because every time I mentioned this bloke, she didn't want to talk about him. Jenny, she's going out with a married fella. Married fella? Well, uh, who's this, um... Robert. I've not seen him. She wants her legs smacking. And now, hold on. You don't know the whole tale. This chap, he could be a very decent bloke, for all we know. Oh, give over, Reg. There's only one reason a married man takes a girl out on the side. Let's not fool ourselves. Brother of, the, of all living creatures. Exactly. 
Right, well, answer me this, then. Yeah, answer him this. Go on. Right, if, if it's wrong for us to kill a fox, why isn't it wrong for fo fox to kill my pigeons? Ha! <laughs> yeah, right, good point. Give us another can of ale, eh? Go on, you've got can't answer that, can you? No, I can't answer that. I can. I can. Oh, yes. I'm something about ale, are you? You see, the fox, it kills your pigeons because it has to eat. It has to eat to live. Yeah. Now, if you kill that fox and then eat it, then fair enough. Yeah, he's got a good point there, Jack. Look at his flaming side of you on there. He's got no idea with it, has it? Oh, you sit down, yeah. No. Oh, am I getting another beer or what? No, because a fox is it, firming like a rat, isn't it? Eh? Yeah, well, takes one to know one. You shut up, chip in and give Bert a beer or something. Well, uh, you get him a beer yourself. You see, the crucial point here is the food chain. Oh, flies. Nobody ever moans when you kill flies, do they? You know why, eh? Hey, why? Cos they're not cuddly and furry. Yeah. Me auntie imagine her. She had a fox. Furry, it was. Oh, she was really proud of it. She only wore it for special occasions, you know, not that there were many of them. Anyway, my uncle Jim came home one night and it laid out on the kitchen table, you know. Beady eyes it had. <laughs> anyway, he hacked it to death, him, with a bread knife. Swore blind it had gone for his throat. Man, she did have claw marks next morning. <laughs> but I think it were anti -manch. <laughs> It's the only way, Derek. Sure it is. Yes, I know you are, Mavis. And, and if the fox does come into the back garden, well, I'll start to shout and bellow and bang things. Mavis, I do know the plan. And, and I do think... The small pieces of bacon in your left-hand pocket for the duckwits end, and the larger pieces of bacon, well, you, you could start putting those down. Mavis, Mavis, I said, I do know the plan. Any qualms about its effectiveness, I am prepared to suspend. I am proud of you, Derek. At this moment, very proud. Yes, well... <laughs> any nature lover would be. Right, well, I'm off now. Bye, Mavis. I'll be waiting, Derek. We'll be shouting time in a minute. Are we having another? Yeah. Jenny. Oh, hello, hello, love. You been celebrating? Uh, yes. Um, I don't think you've met Robert before, have you? Uh, Robert, this is Rita. Hello. Heard a lot about you. Then you will have the advantage. What are you drinking? Oh, very nice. I'll have a whisky and Rita. Uh, no, you. thanks all the same. We're leaving as soon as we can. Yes. Well, nice to have met you. I'll see you, Rita. Yes, you will. A dog and all. I'll tell you what it is. They've got a fox on going. Well, you get out here and shut that dog up. Quick, try it, woman. Cut it here we go. Come on, tell it all. Come here, mad beggar. Stop fumbling and shame your damn self. Jack, Jack, I think I'm right in saying, you know, there's a law against this. You know, you, you can't hunt in built up areas. Never mind the law, Sonny Jim. The only law we know about is the law of the jungle. <laughs> Which way, boy? Come on. Find it. Seek! 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 Come Seek! 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 Seek!
Yeah. But come on, Kevin, we're after the fox. I don't care what you're after. I don't care if you've seen a flying saucer with a little green man on board. Keep the round down, OK? First time in a week she's gone to sleep and you've got to woke her up. Keep! Come on, get sure that bag is coming from Mrs. Wilkins by garden. I think we ought to investigate. Oh, you can do what you want, Percy. I'm going to bed. Right, I'll come with you. Would you like to rephrase that? Hey? Yeah, eh? Oh, no, no, I mean, I'll see you safely home. Well, keep over it, son. You're over road. Oh, no, no, I insist. There's some funny folk about you, know. Well, I can't argue with that. Run, poor hunted creature, wherever you may be. What did I tell you? They're hunting something. Hunting? Yeah, it's a duck egg and his barmy pal. Well, what do the daft devils think they're doing? Oh, take my tip, I'll just, just watch this animal, eh? Because it'll have it as soon as duck egg. Clear off the lot of you! You want locking up? Oh, it's the booze, Kev. They've been well at it. Oh, come on, Jack. Let's pack it in so we can go home, eh? Give over, man. The fox come up here, see? I don't know. The fox come up here? The fox, man. I've seen it. The fox? The fella's k line. Aye, oh, don't worry, Sam. It's hell talking, is this? Ah, well, it's not hell. They've both in my pub, that's for sure. There you go. Keep a keep a firm grip on that dog. And you, Jack, get inside and sleep it off. No, no, honest, boss. That fox for an hour back yard, and that dog damn near had it, and he's got the scent now. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. What on earth's going on? These daft beggars think they're fox hunting. Hunting? They're hooligans, harrying some poor creature to its death. And as for you, Mr. Sugden, I'm surprised at you. Oh, you've got it all wrong, Mrs. Bishop. I'm not with these hooligans. And you can shut up, Missus. You know no about it. Don't you talk to Mrs. Bishop like that. Go on, clear off. You don't come from around here. Go and hunt foxes in your own street. Come on, come on, come on Lale. Whatever can have happened to him, Harry? Mavis! Oh, oh Mavis! Oh, you've missed the fox, Derek. Oh, I saw it again. Oh, how anyone could go after such a beautiful creature and hunt it down. Never mind the fox, Mavis. They're hunting me. Hunting? Derek, Duckworth's me. yard was a trap, Mavis. Where's that bottle of brandy? Brandy, Derek, but we keep that for emergency. Oh, this is one. Nothing will ever happen to me, Mavis. It could be more like an emergency. Mm. Ah, the dog was lying in wait. It all but had me. Oh, Derek. It was inches from my throat. You were that close to being a widow. Mm. And I've been hunted, Mavis. Down the back alley, behind the corner shop. I managed to get across the street into the gardens at the far end. Oh. I think I've thrown him off the scent. Oh, well done, Derek. Oh, I came across the garden fences. I fell over twice. I cracked my head on oh, Barnes's stupid you, boat. You've done a and... wonderful thing, Derek, because you've drawn the pursuit away from the fox. Oh, I wish you could have seen it. I did see it. We passed each other in the gardens. Oh, that must have been a wonderful experience. Oh, Derek, I envy you that. Two hunted creatures. You must have felt a great kinship. Well, we're still staggering about out there. I'm not bothered what Jack Duckworth and his daft mates are doing. Mm -hmm. I'm bothered about Jenny. I thought she'd more sense than start playing silly games with a married fella. I mean, she's not stupid. She must know what he's after. What every married fella's after that takes another woman out. Well, I hate to contradict you, Rita. But fair play, fair play. It struck me as a decent chap. Well, you only saw him for five minutes and you didn't say more than two words to him. So how do you make that out? Well, you have to admit he was very civil. I mean, he offered us a drink, didn't he? Oh, well, that's it, isn't he? I mean, he's passed the test. Doesn't matter that her boyfriend's married, so long as he stands his round. My God, Reg. Oh, well, it's not just that. You see, you've taken my remark out of context there, Rita. No, what I mean is, in business, you have to learn to wake people up. And he just struck me as a decent sort of chap. And then again, you see, I know what it's like to marry the wrong woman. But everybody knows that. Your marriage is over. You're separated. It's finished. My guess is this bloke goes home to his wife and tells her he's been working late at the office. Yeah, but you don't know that, do you? Well, not for sure, no. But it's a damn good guess. Or else Jenny wouldn't have been so secretive about him all these weeks. Yeah, well, it's no good guessing. You'll have to ask her about it. No. Well, if she wants to talk to me about it, fine. Or I'll keep me two penneth till I'm asked for it. 
I shall always think of it as our fox. Actually, you know, I'm quite hopeful. Oh, I banged away like mad on that sauce. But... Yeah, I know, I can hear you. But I don't think he'll come back. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We gave him quite a fright. It's nothing to what I suffered, maybe. It's nothing. If I had to analyse my emotions now, I would have to say it's a mixture of joy that I think he'll be safe, but sorrow that we've probably seen the last of him. What are you doing? I'm trying to find my pulse. The ordeal I've endured, Mavis, can't have done the heart any good. Oh. I think I need another brandy. Oh, is that wise? I don't know. I just know that... They're here! They tracked me down, Mavis. They're coming in our garden. Oh, no, they are not! Where is he? must be down here. Where is he, Boomer? It's got Come a garden on, whiskey. Where, Where is he? You can't go in his garden. My garden? Ah, you swore blind there were no foxes round here, Mavis, didn't you? Well, there is, because Boomer's on his trail. <laughs> this dog's never wrong, missus. Ah, Come on, Jack, lad, let's get over first. Excuse me, you're not coming in my garden. You can't stop hunt, missus. It ain't natural. Uh, you're quite right, Mavis, and I'm not with these two. I just want you to know that. And if you go in that garden, you're breaking the law of trespass. I told you before, Sonny Jim. Thorny law, I recognise, is the law of the jungle. Ah. I'll get over it, fence, Jack, lad. You lift Boomer up. We'll go, mate. We'll I'm go. I'm warning oh. you. Stand back, missus, while I get oh. my leg over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet you've had that said to your time or oh. Oh, well, I, I warned you, Jerry, this is my garden, and anybody coming in here against my wishes, I'll do the same thing, and that includes you, Mr. Duckworth. Don't you raise your pad to me, babies. I could have you up for this, missus. There's laws against it in four. I, I know, no, Bert, law of the jungle, and I'm your witness, Mavis. I saw him head butt your saucepan. Oh, just come here off the lot of you before I set him out your dog. <laughs> Disgusting. So old men rolling drunk, thinking they were chasing foxes. Suppose next time you'll think you're chasing pink elephants. Old men, what, what do you mean, old men? And you ought to be ashamed and all egging them on. Look, Vera, I keep telling you, I was only there as an observer, just in case I have to make a report or something. Report? What are you talking about? Report? You'd never shop us to the coppers. No, no, no. The RSPCA or Friends of the Earth or whoever it is you tell when you've killed a fox. You know you're as fuddled as he is. There wasn't a fox in the first I place. I tell you, woman, the dog had the fox's scent. Look, the only scent round here was a sniff of eel on you and that Bert Latham. Look, just go to work, woman. Go on, go to work. You were K-Lied. Hey, you were K-Lied. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the dog were K-Lied. Because it gives it sources of eel down at that legion, doesn't it? Curly, just put us straight, will you? Tell him about the fox. I'm sorry, Jack, but I don't think there was a fox. I think Bert Latham's been having you on. Of course he was. He got you to buy his ale all last night, didn't he? Made a right fool of you. Yet again, that's twice him and that dog's got you to part with your money, you, you bam I off. tell you, there was a fox! Oh, come on, Curly, we're going to be late for work. There was a fox! There was! There was! Was. Uh, Andy, be a pal for me, will you? Ring work and tell them I'm going to be late. Oh, yesterday. It was find yourself somewhere else to live. Today, when you want somebody to do your dirty work for you, it's be a pal. All right, then, all right. Don't be a pal. I'll ring on myself. Tell them I've got to go and see the dentist. Well, it's nearly true, anyway. Seeing as though it was a dentist who kept me up late last night. A dentist? So that's what Robert is when he's... I was going to say when he's at home, but he's not at home much, is he? What's wrong with him being a dentist? Nothing. If you want your teeth seen to. Could maybe struck off what you and him are doing. Nah, it's doctors. Anyway, I'm not his patient. Well, what he's doing for you, you certainly couldn't get on the National Health. You don't know the first thing about it. I don't want to. Right, I'm off to Polly. Yeah, and while you're there, see if they can find you a room. Yep. You actually hit the blows on the head. With thy saucepan, and I would do it again if I had to, without a qualm. Do you know there's a vicious street deep down in you, lady? Hey, hang about. Was that you clanging and banging about last night, round about closing time? Well, possibly it may have been. Now then, I've got a ball to pick with you. Hey, wait a minute. I've just been hearing what you did to your daft mate. Yes, and she's very lucky that my mate Bert is a man of his word. Promised his mother he'd never raise hand to a woman. Well, 
I'm sorry, but... Well, he asked for it, trying to clamber into my garden without so much as a buy your leave. And this is a thanks you get for trying to rid the community of a vicious animal. There were three vicious animals last night. You, your friend and that dog. I am talking about the fox. The fox that Boomer trailed to your backyard. And... There were no fox in anybody's garden. All there was was a bee in your bonnet. You ask your mate. I reckon you were harbouring it, encouraging it. Go on, deny it if you can. I'm not going to bandy words with you, Mr Duckworth. And as for your friend, I think I was entitled to use reasonable force We to were entitled to use reasonable force on that flaming fox. Do you want to place a regular order for horse and hound? Your mate knows what I'm talking about. There was no fox in anybody's garden. Hey. That's why you were knocking seven bells out of that pan. You were trying to scare it off. Oh, I shall have to say no comment, Rita, but... Um... In the strictest confidence, of course. Ah, oh, Jack. Jack, the lady wife and I were just wondering, how are we fixed for tickets? Tickets? The Hunt Ball. You have one of those, I take it. The Coronation Street Fox Hound. <laughs> Try pounds, more like. I'm sure I've heard a song about it. Jack, go with some... <laughs> all right, you can have all the fun you want, but they win a fall. Oh, Jack. We put a fight in there for us, Jack, please, eh? I'm no playing silly beggars tonight, Look, eh? mate, we're after a fox. Yeah, well, Sally will be after you if you wake the baby up again, and I'll be with her. But we don't mind the cats making her out, <coughs> but don't go chasing her. Cats? We weren't on inflaming cats. Yeah, well, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Now, listen here. Well, most people around here reckon you was chasing your own shadow. Ah! Phil, nice to see you. Oh, Alec, can I, uh, have a word? Of course you can, then. Here's your life. You know, I always get the feeling there's something very dodgy about that love. Dodgy as the day's long, my husband. Do you know what? I didn't mean Alec. I meant Phil Jennings. Oh, well, yes, I agree with you. But then again, are we just being jealous of Deirdre? You know, in a way, I feel quite sorry for Mr Duckworth. Sorry for that bloodthirsty idiot? Oh, well, I don't excuse his behaviour, but he is being punished for it. In what way? Well, everybody round here thinks there never was a fox and that he's made a complete fool of himself. Well, I grant you he's capable of doing it for himself, but in this case, it was you and I who made a fool of him. I know, but it's a bit pathetic, though, the way he's going round insisting that he's not going out of his mind. Oh, I trust you to be soft-hearted. You know, you have a wonderful tenderness for all dumb animals, <laughs> including Jack Duckworth. Oh. I, uh, just popped in to find out what's going on. You know, with Phil. What about Phil? Moving in next door. Next door? What, you mean the Rovers? <laughs> Sorry, Liz, I honestly don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't, do you? Sorry. Well, as far as I can make out, he's going to be stopping at the Rovers. He's moving in tonight, I think. I overheard Alec tell him that. Oh, no, that can't be right. No, you must have misheard him, Liz. I don't think so. I was surprised as well. I thought maybe it's the closest he can get to Deirdre. Short of moving in with you? Well, he hasn't asked, actually. And if he did, I'd say no. Well, listen, I'm sorry to have dropped it on you. I mean, I just assumed that Phil would have told you. No, no, he hasn't said a word. Oh, look, I've got to go to this council meeting, but just keep me informed, will you? What, Phil do that? <laughs> doesn't look like it, does it? You're back from the hospital then, Mrs Bishop. As you see, Mr Sutton. Been a fair while. Mind you, they like that, hospitals. They are... Even if you've got a definite appointment, they're notorious for it. Still, it depends on which department you were at. Some are worse than others. Uh, well, I hope you managed all right. You know, without any dinner inside you. That lamb's liver was beautiful, by the way. Full of iron, you know. I take it you'll be happy with a light tea, Mr Sugden, since you had a good lunch. Well, I'll be happy to fall in me your wishes, Mrs Bishop. I mean, I can adapt to anything I can, within reason. I mean, if they put you on... A special diet, for medical reasons, I could adapt to that. Light tea it should be, then. Uh, do you want me to pop to the chemist right before they should? The chemist, Mr Sugden? Yes, I thought I might want a prescription making up. Oh, I see. Oh, no, thank you, Mr Sugden. <laughs> Though it was a very kind offer. Don't mention it, Mrs Bishop. Oh. Hiya. Hello, Jenny. Oh, what a day. That perfume counter. I don't know which is worse, you know, the smiling or the standing. Hey, give over. You've got young feet. Wait till you've had them as long as I've had mine, then you'll know. 
I'll take a paper on with me as well. Quite night in to make up for your tiring day. What? A night in with Moaning Angie? Since when's she been a mooner? Oh, it feels like forever. Nope. I'm a fight tonight. With the boyfriend? With Robert, yeah. Hey, what did you think about him? Did you like him? Well, I, you know, I didn't have a chance to talk to him much. I'll tell you what, he's a big improvement on the lads around here. <laughs> Not exactly a lad, though, is he, love? Oh, don't you see he's too old for me and all? I mean, he's 38, that's all. And he's clever. And, you know, I can really talk to him, Rita. <laughs> and he's so funny when he wants to be. He really makes me laugh. <laughs> I hope his wife's got a sense of humour, too. Shouldn't have said that. I suppose Angie told you. I've said more than I should. Yes, you have. Well, I can't say I'm over keen on the fella stopping you. Oh. Anyway, I thought you said you didn't trust him. Trust his money, it's as welcome as anybody else's. Yeah, well, we've got the room up there. I mean, why shouldn't we let it out? But why does he want to stop here? Yeah, I don't know. I don't much care either. I'll be right, uh, I'll be right with you, Phil. Anyway, he's <laughs> paid in advance, so will he not. Now then, Alec. Yeah, your bedroom's all ready for you. Come on through and I'll show you where everything is. Here, let me take this portmanteau for you. Give over. You'll have people thinking I'm going soft. <laughs> I know many things, Jack. I'm very good at general knowledge. No, 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 no. You know more than you're letting on about that there fox. Ah, yes, the phantom fox of Coronation Street. I believe it can sometimes be glimpsed around midnight in the vicinity of public houses. Don't you flaming start and all about the lovely folk round here saying I'm either plastered or potty or both at the same time. Shall we put Mr Duckworth out of his misery, Derek? You mean take him to the vet and have him put to sleep? <laughs> Derek, you are witty. No, seriously, shall I? If you wish. Well, Mr. Duckworth, there was a fox. I knew it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about your pigeons, but, well, it was such a beautiful creature, we couldn't let you kill it. And anyway, it won't be around here anymore. Derek and I have seen to that. Have you heard this, everybody? Hey, there was a fox. These two have just flipping admitted it. You know what you two are, don't you? Unsabotagers, that's what you are. Saboteurs, I think you mean, Mr. Duckworth. Well, yes, I suppose we are. I'll get it. Hello? Yeah, yes, she is. Hang on. Vera, she's Auntie. Well, Auntie Sissy, on phone. Hi, Auntie Sissy. <laughs> What's wrong? Curly, turn the pan down for me, will you? No. Oh. When did this happen? Yeah, I know, I know, she said, yeah. She always said that. Well, thanks for... Thanks for letting me know, yeah. Yeah, I'll be over. What's the matter? My mother, she's died. Of oh, Vera, I'm very sorry. I knew, I knew when you said it were Auntie Sissy. She eats phones. She, she eats using them. Um, shall I make a cup of tea or something? Do you know what I'm thinking about this morning? I don't know why it come to mind. I was only a little kid and she had this hat. You know, the big feather, it were all shiny and different colours. Oh, she loved it. She used to have it on top of wardrobe, you know, in a cardboard box. She only wore it for special occasions, you know, but not that there were many of them. I know I were playing with my friends, dressing up, you know, and and I got a chair and I, and I stood on the chair and I got the hat down and I went outside parading up and down. Oh, I felt like Queen of Sheba. And I broke the feather. They were all bent. And when my mum saw it, she didn't belt me. I wish she had. I 
she just she just sat at the table. She cried. She cried. She cried. <laughs> she never had hope. She never had hope, my mum. It's official! Bob Foxhall sworn to a witness! So all that business about me being... So, she's had some bad news. It's my mum. She's gone. Oh, come on, I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. Shut, could you? You had to go and tell Rita on me. Yeah, all right, I said something. I was pretty fed up with you at the time. Oh, so it was just out of spite, was it? You were just doing it to make trouble for me. Oh, come on, Jenny. You play games with a married man, getting found out is all part of the scenario. If I hadn't told her, somebody else would soon relate. I want you out of this house first thing tomorrow. Oh, yeah, and where do you suggest I go? We can sleep in a cardboard box for all I care. Just get out! You can't tell me to get out. I pay my rent to Rita, not to you. This house doesn't belong to you, it belongs to somebody else. Just like your boyfriend. No, son, it, it won't kick up with Lee Oldsworth, because she's really down, you know. No, no, compassionate leave, this won't be a problem. I'll, I'll sort it. A bit late for work. Yeah, yeah. See ya. He's a good lad, that, you know. I wonder if anybody's told Betty Hudson. Who's that? You know her. She had a, a sister in West Orton. Went to Canada and it didn't suit. Husband died. She was a real Trojan to me, ma'am, you know, when she was sick that time. And then they moved somewhere. Wigan, Widness, somewhere like that, I can't remember. I don't know anybody that would have their address. She were real good to me, ma'am, you know, Jack. Always popping in and out. Look, love, you can't be tracking everybody down, can you? I mean, you've got all the arrangements to make. She did more for me, ma'am, than I did. Oh, now, come on. She did. I mean, no, I never did all for me, ma'am. Come on, now, don't be daft. Of course you did. You're not finished yet, you know. But you've got to give her a send-off. <laughs> come on. Morning. Oh, morning, Phil. That the paper? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Cheers. Oh, if anybody phones for me today, anybody, I'm not here. In fact, you don't even know me, OK? You're not here, right. Any, anybody in particular you're not at home to? Anybody, whether it's three wise men or three wise monkeys. Do you want the full works? Describe it to me. Say when. Egg, bacon, sausage. Mushrooms, tomatoes. Bit of black pudding, fried bread. If you don't say when, you get the baked beans as well. Whoa, well, hold the beans and make it two eggs. We'll build your cock. Never fear. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll give her a hand. She'll need somebody to push the hand up at the sounds of it. Oh, and remember. to the backyard, Mr. Sugden. Please try to keep the door shut. And if I'm not back, there's some soup from yesterday in the fridge once finishing. Am I not to to pay you back for dinner, then? I don't know. I'm not sure how long I'll be. No, I know it's hospital, all right. Mind you, touch wood, I've had very little to do with it myself. Are you sure you wouldn't like me to come with you? Why ever should I want you to come with me? Well, I thought you might like a companion. Oh, no, thank you. Can I just tell you that there's no reason for you to worry about my health, as far as I know, touch wood. And if I have business at the hospital, it, it's not something I wish to broadcast to the world. Now, is that enough? Keeping things to yourself, you know, it's not always right, Rod. Perhaps not, but round here it would at least rank as a very remarkable achievement. So, for the moment, allow me to attempt the impossible. It's a way to go, innit? 
Bingo, she was enjoying herself. Chang bad in session, you mean? Just about to do the fly and she went. There you go, bingo. Yeah. Well, if you've got a heart attack. Middle of a bingo session, must be the place for it. Mm. Either that or the doorstep of the Mayo Clinic. You yeah, reckon? All right. They'd not be slow off the mark getting somebody to you. They want to be going on with a calling, don't they? Very comforting thought, that. Oh, it's right enough, though, isn't it? I mean, if there were any chance at all, they'd be there as quick as they could. Yeah. I must point that out to Alvira. Hey, I wonder if anybody checked a card. I mean, she might have come up. That might have been what brought it on, you know. Ah, she could have had some money come into her. That would have paid for the funeral. You know, and I bet nobody even looked. Bye bye. bye. Do you think I could have a word, Mr. Bolton? Certainly, Mr. Sugden. Uh, I'm on time, if you don't mind. No offence. <laughs> you mean a private consultation? If you'd be so kind, yes. All right, don't shoot. Hold my hands up. Who's going to shoot you? Well, you, aren't you? Oh, forget it. I'm sorry. It just slipped out. Well, things do, don't they? Has it made it a bit more awkward for you? It's not you, it's me. I keep wanting to thump her head. That's what makes it awkward. Yeah, I don't. I mean, she could have the pick of her lads, couldn't she? Or am I wrong? Of course she could. It's just like she's self-destructive. If a thing's obviously going to lead to disaster, that's what she does. Anyway, I've come to pay my rent. And uh, just so as we know, you're the landlady, not Jenny. Is that how you see it? That bad. You see, with some folk, it's hospitals, isn't it? Some folk, it, it's flying. Well, with me, it's funerals. Oh, it's funny. You want no one like some Jack. Some folk love them. I mean, take my auntie Flory. Remember, in, in, in the old days, you see, they used to lay them out in front parlour. Well, well, my auntie Flory, she used to do all the business, you see. I used to make the idea of my auntie Flory inquiring about the health. <laughs> How's that little chicken? Oh, she's great. Starting to sleep through. Don't talk to me. If certain people with big feet, big mouths and big dogs give it a chance... All right, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway, my auntie Flora used to have this big black hat. She only wore it for funerals with little black flowers on. She used to make them herself out of little pieces of ribbon. Different one for every funeral. She knew all the names. Well. Anyway, in the end, it was that big. It looked like a big pile of nutty slack on her head. <laughs> Ooh, she used to give me the willies, auntie Flora. You know, for somebody that can't stand funerals, you don't half go on about him, Dad. Sella. Hiya, Sammy. Yeah. Any news? No, no, same place. Yeah, no, no, nobody. What about the other angle? Look at him there. Dick Tracy. Well, at least it's not on our phone, Bill, I can't. You know, I think we'd have a case for charging a nominal rent there. I mean, people using their own telephones on our premises. You are? Oh, yes. I mean, we're providing a very comfortable phone box there, aren't we? I don't know what other people do, but I... You got to. Well, remember, those lads don't mess around. So keep your head down and call me any news. Hiya. Uh, I don't know why you don't just move in with the secretary. <sighs> you applying for the job and you've got a flipping cheek. What, well, it's no one asset, it's that. Cheek. Join me? No, Tal. Now listen, I don't like being made to look like a fool. Who's been doing that? You have. Oh, I see your mate Phil Jennings has moved in next door more than I knew, wasn't it? <sighs> it was something that come up at the last minute. Now, come on, what are you up to? Well, I'd rather have lodgings on the other side of the wall, but you'd have to say no. You've got your reputation to consider. Very thoughtful. Now, what are you up to? It's convenient. For what? Dropping in on friends. No flannel. <sighs> I'm staying out of the way of certain people for a certain length of time. That's all. Nothing dodgy. Nothing dodgy? Nothing. Look me in the eyes and tell me that. Read my lips. Nothing dodgy. Well, if there is a dodgy bit, it's got nothing to do with me. That's why I'm staying out of the way. Is that supposed to make sense? <sighs> Look, if I was to tell you the story of my life, everything, holding nothing back, you'd be so bored you'd be zonked out under the table. It's the not knowing that makes it interesting. Isn't that right, Alec? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Now, did you get on at the hospital, then? Oh, I can't get people to say one way or the other. But in the nicest possible way, it's nothing to concern yourself about, Mr. Subden. No, I dare say. Dad, somebody gave a bit of thought to lunch. I didn't go near a shop, it just went out of my head. Oh, well, I'm usual for from it, then. Yes, you are, Mr. Subden. You are. You look back on your life with some satisfaction, don't you, Mr. Subden? 
No, I don't know about that. I wouldn't say I was self-satisfied, no. No, I didn't say self-satisfaction or complete satisfaction. I said some satisfaction. You know, when I go to meet my maker, I shall stand outside those gates and I shall say, uh, well, uh, you know, I did my bit. Exactly. You feel you've done your bit. I'd like to be able to say I did anything. But you have, Mrs. Bishop. You have. No. I've done very little with my life. Don't say that. No, it's true, I'm afraid. I was granted slender talents, but some, and I've done very little with them. No, no, but what's brought this on? It's the voice I've been hearing all my life. It's a pity you weren't better educated, Emily Nugent. You might have done some it. It was Mrs. Sharples. You never knew her, did you? I think she said that to me when I was about 22. Well, she had a point there as well. Yeah, I thought she was mocking me, which is what I thought about everybody when I was 22. But I can still hear her. It's not mockery, it's sorrow. I wish I had done summit. But you have, Mrs. Bishop. They also serve only stand and wait. <laughs> I once had a boss who used to say that. I worked in a shop, you see, and it was. Doesn't matter. No, no, go on, I'm interested. Oh. It isn't very interesting. I used to stand and wait. And waited too long. You know, you have done something in real life, you've ventured to let me say so, something very important in this world. You've been an example. An example of decency and right-mindedness. An example of quite good table manners, Mr. Subden. Not much more. But I'd like to do something. Some little thing to point to when I stand before my maker. Silly cow. Jenny, I mean. Mm. How serious is it? I don't know. I don't want to come down on her. I mean, she's had a hard time in her short life, you know. Well, you've done a lot for that girl. If anybody's to blame, it's not you, love. Can I stand by and watch? Watch her dig her own grave. Well, you'll have to talk to her. That's all you can do. But don't expect her to listen. Did I at her age? Did you? No. Still got the scars. <sighs> Gazetting, is it? Mm -hmm. Almost sold out. Cheers. Thank you. Now, it's usually people who expect to see the picture in the paper start looking at it in the shop. I don't think they'll have my mug shot in here. People who've been protesting at crossings, getting certificates from the St John's ambulance, you know, what have you. I still don't qualify. Uh, that interesting? No, now, uh, you walking across? Not just yet, love. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, on, love. What would you say if Jenny started going out with my lad over? Bye, I can't put my foot down. I'm bagging for myself. I don't know why you want him in the house. Well, Maid, I find he's very good for my posture and breathing. I hold this in more. Mind you, if he hangs about too long, I get a terrible stitch. <laughs> Do you both find him attractive? Oh, he's not my type. There's no breeding in him. What's he doing round here? Well, my own belief is that he's got decorators in and he's allergic to the smell of paint. Alec prefers any answer that involves Lord Lucan. Am I invisible or something? Oh, so we're not speaking now, is that it? Speak to you, it gets taken down and used in evidence. I saw him at lunchtime. Not interested. And we went to a lovely little restaurant called Buchan's. It was very nice. And I had carrot soup and seafood salad. We talked about me joining the health club because he's already a member. I told you, I'm not interested. No, but I'm sure you'll find somebody who is. Hello? Yeah, she's here. Hello? Hiya. Um, yeah, can you just hang on? No, no, it's all right. Just getting comfortable. 
I had to put the cat out. Oh, there you are, love. Everything go all right, did it? It's all settled. Monday, just the one car. Auntie Sissy's doing some by with her. I want Vicar's been booked. You can say what you like about Church of England. They're always there when you want them. Christenings and funerals. <laughs> Even if you don't go in between. What are you doing at home? Ah, no, no, no. I, I told Alec you might want me to keep your company, like. Ah. Have you had out to eat? I'll clearly knock some up, but if you're doing out for yourself, I'll join you. <laughs> What's this? Uh, young Raquel called. I, th I think it's a condolence card from her and some of Ah. Ah, that's nice. So she didn't stop then? No, Curly was here. He, he took her down to the pub. That surprises me. Thought she'd gone off him with, uh, with him always on about Kimbler. She went off him tonight. Oh, that's why she came. Still. Hey. She took trouble, didn't she? I've been through this twice. There's no doubt about him or all that. Probably don't mean anything. It's just that Mary's not. Unless. Unless it's something that he knows is going to happen. Why? Well, I don't know, do I? I mean. You know, something where he needs an alibi. Maybe that's what we are. We are his alibi. 20 quid and a half. We can throw in an alibi, all part of the service. Look, I'm serious, Matt. Oh. No, I know I can rely on you two for a bit of support. Oh, what is it this time, Percy? Talking books for the blind. Go on, then. A pound a book, ten tickets. All right, give us a book. Yes, there you are. And may I say, Mrs Wilton, that uh, Mrs Barlow agrees with me. About everything, Mr. Sugden, everything. About Mrs. Bishop. Oh, we back to that. Well, I only mention it, uh, you know, it's a bit of a relief to find out I'm not peculiar. Oh. I'm not the only one who cares about other folk. How dare you, Mr. Sugden? How dare you suggest I don't care about my friends? Well, is it caring when you're not interested in somebody's health? Because if it is, it's a very funny way of caring. I'm saying now. You're saying more than I'm prepared to put up with, no, Mr. Sugden. I don't know what all this is about, but it's not what I came in here for. No, nor me, and it's not what I'm staying for, either. I'm not going to stay and discuss somebody's private concerns with a, a walking megaphone in a flat hat. You finish your drink if you want to, no, Derek. Will you I'm kindly going. tell me... Percy, what are you doing? You come in here to drive my customers away. What? What's all this about? Well, she's right so far. It's not a thing I'd like to broadcast. Well, to be a rummer all world without the lights of person. Sight rummer with in mind. I wish people wouldn't get Mavis so wound up. It's me that has to do the unravelling. <laughs> no, 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 Raquel. It was... it was my fault. No, I was being stupid. Not as stupid as I was being. I, I mean, it was, I did. I mean, all I did was talk about Kimberly all night. Yeah, well, you did and all. Yeah, well, I, well I, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it, it's just that nobody likes to think they're being compared, do they? You're quite right, quite right. And it has to be said, Raquel, that, uh, you compare very well with uh, with anyone, or in fact uh, any uh, compartment uh, department uh, that I can think of uh, right now. Now flattery will get you anywhere. And I, and I'm very flattered that that you came round. I mean, you didn't come round just to sign the uh, the book of condolence, now, did you? Uh, you've seen through me. And um, I'd just like to say, uh, I, I promise that um, that you won't hear me uh, mention uh, her name again. Oh. Oh, you know. What's her name? Thingy. Well, he's not back, is he? I mean, I wish you he wants this room tonight. So he said. Well, if he's not back by the time I go to bed, he's had it. He's locked out. Well, I'll give him a key. Well, you shouldn't have done. Well, sooner that than stop up. Yes, but he could have the run of the place. He could be bringing people back. He won't be. He could have the key copied anything. Alec, with an arcade, he's found an easier way of getting money than sticking a jemmy in your piggy bank. Give over. <laughs> Hi. I need some help. I've told you, don't come to me. But you're the only one around here who appreciates a fine bottle of wine. Now, I can't drink it on my own. Help me, please. You're outrageous. I should have the chain up on that door. Well, don't I get a little kiss, then? Have you been good enough to deserve it? No, but how about if I promise to be good? 
Good at what? Oh, you say I'm outrageous. Trouble with living over at road. I can always see when your lights are on. And you out, is she? Yeah. They've all gone off somewhere playing rock and roll. It's gonna save the world or something. Right on. I suppose it needs saving. Well, I can't see why. Oh, Jenny, love, the voice of despair. No, it's not despair. It's just disappointment. Well, why don't we go and discuss the state of the world over a drink at the Rovers, eh? No. I'll tell you what. If we're gonna have it, then let's have it here. Cos then, when you get around to it, you can yell at me. I don't want to yell, Jenny. Yelling's no use. Well, to be honest, now this chatting over a drink's a wide bother. Look, I said I didn't want to yell, so don't go out of your way to make me. I am me. just trying to save you the trouble, Rita. I know exactly what you're gonna say. You must have ever so much experience of life to know everything anybody's going to say to you. Oh, no, I don't know everything. But I certainly know more than you think I do. Because you think that I'm going around with my eyes closed and me head in the clouds. And you're not. Am I? Well, if your eyes are wide open, why are you going round with a married man? Well, if you're going around with a married man, you'd better have your eyes open, hadn't you? Oh, Jenny, you sound so cynical. No, no, it's just another way of saying I'm not kidding myself. And I'm not. Then what do you think you're going to get out of it in the end? Well, in the end, we're all dead, aren't we? It's what we get out of it in between. Oh, Jenny. Look, Richard, I've told you there's no use talking to me. Well, what about his wife? Eh? And his kids? He's got kids? Have you thought of them? Of their happiness? That's his job. You are trying to make me yell, aren't you? Look, I can't talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. It'll only come out wrong if I do, so please just leave me alone. Jenny, why are you throwing yourself away? You've got so much. There's so much you could do with your life if you just don't think about... Don't tell me about my life. Don't tell me what I can do with it. Everybody else but me has had a go at my life so far and it hasn't been much fun. You have got no right to tell me what to do with my life. No, but I can tell you what not to do with it. And shall I tell you how I know? Not because I'm clever or wise, but because I'm a fool. And because most of the learning in this world is done by fools, love. Fools reaching into the fire and they have to learn over and over again. But there's still fools who'll do it. This fool's here to tell you. Going round with a married man's damn near straight road to grief. Well, maybe that's the road I'm cut out for, then. I said I weren't going to yell, so I'm going. But think about what I said, Jenny. Think! What do you want? Who are you? Well, how do you mind? I live here. The police are only around the corner, you know. Is that right? Yes, it is. Now, now, what do you want? I'm looking for a fellow named Jennings. Oh, are you? I was told I'd find him here. Oh, yes, and who told you that, then? <laughs> Phil Jennings is the name. Now, is he here? No. No, no, he's, he's not. And I'll, I'll tell you this, I've no idea of his whereabouts, none whatsoever. What's the There's no good coming here. Well, that's most peculiar, because they told me. Definitely. Ah, well, they told you wrong then, didn't they? Uh, there, there's nobody here, only me and the missus. And the two dogs. <laughs> well, where does that leave me? I've got boys come a long way to do a job, and they're not going to hang about. So when you see them, tell them Scotch told me and the lands are here, and we'll be ready for them tomorrow across the road. Now, can you give him that message? Eh? If I if I happen to see see, see her, yes. Yes. Right. I've been wiping blood off the walls. I think I'll switch to herbal. 
cut out caffeine altogether. Because it's not just coffee, you know, that has caffeine in it. Filippo, son of the Godfather. What were his tale about last night's little visitor? Well, I didn't ask him, did I? Well, I could hardly go barging in when he was shaving and say, my wife reckons the local mafia's after you. Is this right? I reckon you're the one that did the first-rate impersonation of half-set lime jelly when that gorilla come to the door. Well, only because he took me by surprise, that's all. Anyway, it was, it was probably business, like he said. You can talk your way around anything, can't you? Ostrich, Gilroy. OK. Phil Jennings may just be purer than the Pope. But if he is hiding out here because he's mixed up with a set of villains, where does that leave us? Oh, it's not let anything happen to you, Bet. You know that. Oh, well, I'm very glad to hear it. Just don't sit wobbling on the fence till it's too flaming late, that's all. You pull well there, son, a right little raver. If you're referring to Raquel, Jack, I haven't pulled. She just happens to be a girl I work with. So was Kim. Not in the same league, though. But despite our differences, Kim was a good person and a caring human being. Oh, she was indeed. I mean, let's face it, she wasn't exactly page three material, was she? Well, I suppose some men would find Raquel sexually attractive. Like you don't, eh? <laughs> I'm not interested in outward appearances. I'm interested in what's underneath. So am I. Problem is, every time I try and find out, I'll get rid of slaps. <laughs> ah, you didn't sweep well, did you? Do you know, I was thinking of all rotten things I've ever said to her. No, oh, well, it's always the same with bereavement, feeling guilty about the things we didn't do. Yeah, well, she wasn't a bad mother, bless her. I mean, she tried her best. So did you. You've got no to reproach yourself with me. Yeah, but I could have visited him or I could have invited around him or... Oh, I suppose you can blame that on me if you want to make me feel better. Well, I do. You made it quite obvious you couldn't stand the sight of her. All water under the bridge. I'm sure Amy didn't bear any grudges down she's up there with the angels. Yeah, well, all the same. We're both going to beg her forgiveness when we stand at the side of that grave on Monday. Oh, Dee, you don't really want me to go, do you? No, no, you'll go off somewhere for day. you Blackpool. That's breezy this time of year. With any luck, you'll be blown off end at pier. Oh, Dee, you, you know me and funerals. I come over all queer, get palpitations, you know. No one enjoys them, Jack, but you have to go for Vera's sake. It's for her sake I'm thinking about. Be more of a liability than out else. So tell us something new. All right. I'd be setting the bar up if you need me. Yeah. Um, is there anything urgent you want to discuss? Right, right. Uh, morning, Phil, lad. You, uh, slept well, I trust. Log like. That's a real state of the art little mattress you've got up there. Well, well, we aim to please. You had a caller last night. Oh, yeah? Yes. A big fella. Not the sort I'd like to tangle with. Said his name was Scotch Tommy. Oh, he's turned up, has he? Yeah. He said he and the boys were going to be waiting for you this morning. Good. Good? Yeah, he's been doing some work for me. Him and his gang. Just finished a job up in Aberdeen. What sort of job? Fitting places out, you know. Ah. Oh. Hey, come on. You didn't think he was some kind of a hitman, did you? Scotch Tommy is a pussycat. Oh, well, it is the wife, you see. She's easily nervous. I mean, you know how neurotic women are. Well, you set her mind to rest. Nobody's got a contract out on me. At least none that I know of. Oh, well, we didn't think that. No, no. Mind you, we did wonder, like, why... Why I'm holed up here. That's fair enough. Alec, can I trust you? Can fish swim? It's this court case, you see. Court case? It's all right. It's nothing to do with me. It's just that this goon they've been looking for for the past couple of years, well, they finally nailed him bang to rights. And the trial starts this week. So what's that got to do with you? Well, the defence want me as a witness, so it suits the prosecution if I do a discreet little disappearing act just for a few days. Why, why would you want to help them? A because this particular joker deserves everything he's got coming to him. And B, because having the law owing me one can't be bad, right? Oh, well, well, no. But... Only not a word to the lovely Elizabeth. Women are wonderful, Alec. I adore them. But they do have this little habit of rabbiting on to others of their ilk. Oh, oh. And if anyone found out, oh, I would... Oh, no, my lips are sealed. I shall say nothing. Oh, no, no. Alec Gilroy knows when to keep it buttoned. Yeah. 
Oh, we are all over. We don't usually see you top executives in here of a lunchtime. No, well, I made the short pilgrimage from Batterby's on the expectation of congenial feminine company. I see I'm not to be disappointed. Mm. Oh, Jack, I'm very sorry to hear about your poor mother in law. My sincere condolences. Can hardly contain his grief, can you, Jack? Uh, naturally, I told Mr. Doug to take the Monday off. He'll feel better after the funeral's over. If I don't have a nervous breakdown on the spot. Uh, your sensitivity does your credit, Jack. See, a lot of men, they have little time for the mothers-in-law, of which I am one. It made me feel ashamed. Bitter. Please. You know, I'm surprised at you, Rita. Being taken in by his off and puff. Well, there was a time I thought you were now a pompous little windbag. Yeah, and now? Oh, he's still a pompous little windbag. Mm. But he's good at it. He's good for me morale. Um... Actually, I did have an ulterior motive for seeking you out. Uh -huh. um, how would you feel about the taste of Tuscany? Because I have booked a table at this charming little trattoria, to which I'm quite partial, and I'd be honoured if you would prime the evening with your own special brand of luster by agreeing to be my guest. See what I mean? Thanks, Reg. Love to. I do dislike February. Such a mean little month. Clinging onto the coattails of winter with not even a whisper of spring. Yes, it's a, a sort of depressing time of year, really, isn't it? It's when you any worries that you have seem even worse. Oh, is something in particular troubling you, Mavis? Uh, well, I have been meaning to mention it actually, but I, I just thought you might be annoyed or, or embarrassed. Why would I be? Well, a woman's physical problems can be very personal. Well, as old friends, surely there's nothing we can't discuss. <gasps> Rita said all I had to do was ask. Oh, you, you've talked about it with Rita. Oh, well, not the details. No, no. And, and Derek? <gasps> oh, no. I wouldn't discuss anything like that with Derek. There are some topics it's easier to speak to another woman yes. about. Forgive me, but do I assume it's marital? What is? Well, I wasn't exactly in the first flush of youth either when I married Ernest. Ernest? Anyone who weds late in life can usually expect some slight difficulties. Oh, Emily, I'm not having any difficulties. You're the one who's going to the hospital all the time. I see. No need to ask how you know. Percy didn't mean any harm, love. He was worried about you. You as well? How about Uncle Tom Cobley and his henchmen? Have they been informed? We've all been concerned about you. Well, you needn't be. I've never been in better fettle, thank you very much. Do you believe her? Well, she seemed definite enough. You see what he's doing now, have you? Well, I'm sick to death of shoplifters and people breaking my windows, thank you very much. Well, who's up to? What are you had about, Al? This boyfriend of yours, this Mr Flipping Jennings. If he thinks he's opening a slot machine arcade down this street, he's got another thing coming. Come on, look. PJ Ledger. That's him, isn't it? Yes, but... Great canny operator, our fell. Always on the lookout for another wee earner. Well, I hope it's not going to be an amusement arcade. Derek will go mad. Derek won't be the only one. I'm sorry a bit tardy, Mrs Bishop, but this lady in the, in the lab had lost one of her contact lenses, so naturally offered to help her find it. Uh, why have they were those things, I'll never know. Can't be the good old fashioned fair of spectacles, I told you. Never mind poking fiddly bits of plastic in your eye, it's unnatural. Mr. Sugden, over the years, how many times have I asked you not to poke your nose into my, not to mention other people's business? Oh, well, several. Dozens, in fact. But it hasn't made any difference, has it? Oh, I wouldn't say that. I'm still dedicated to the interests of my fellow man. But I flatter myself I have a more subtle approach now, thanks to you. There was nothing very subtle about telling Mavis and Deirdre that I'm practically at death's door. Well, Mrs Wilton and Mrs Barlow are, are close friends of yours. And if you're in poor health, they've a right to be concerned. But I'm not in poor health, Mr Sugden. I am not suffering from any health problems, female or otherwise. And even if I were, I would not appreciate you discussing my personal affairs with all and sundry. Well, is that understood? If you say so, Mrs Bishop. I do. Only six months. Are you sure? I was told at least a year. 
I think I'd better come round and see you right away. Mr. Sugden, I have to go out for a while. Take my lunch out of the oven, will you? Speaking. Yes, I am. Does nothing I say mean a thing to you? It means a lot, Mrs. Bishop. It means you're a very brave lady, shouldering a burden on her own. Mistakenly so, in my opinion. Let's go home, Mr. Sugden. I think it's time I told you the truth. Well, I've been trying to encourage you to do that for the last few weeks. You know what they say about a trouble shared. Come along. According to my little fat landlord, you want to see me sharpish. If I ask you a straight question, would you give me the courtesy of a straight answer? What else? None of your ducking and diving and verbal dodges that leave me none the wiser. Well, I'm flattered you think I could pull the wool over your eyes, ma'am. I think you overestimate me. I don't. Are you opening an amusement arcade in this street? Well, I'd have lost me marbles if I was. It's hardly a hotbed of passing trade. Well, what's the PJ Leisure outfit across the road in aid of, then? Oh, the factory unit. It's a storage and repair shop for my machines, OK? Oh. Well, not that it's any business of mine. Well, now you come to mention it. But if it had have been an amusement arcade... <laughs> Which it isn't. I would have done everything in my power to block you. Oh, I don't doubt it. Still not sure I totally believe you. <laughs> Which leaves me in a no-win situation. If I say no, I'm lying to you. And if I say yes, we're enemies. Boy, you're just so slippery sometimes, Phil. I mean, you move into the Rovers for no good reason that I've heard so far. You rent across the road without mentioning you're even thinking about it. <sighs> Maurice Jones made me an offer I couldn't refuse. He's having trouble getting shut of the place. You do play your cards close to your chest, though, don't you? A bit of a lifetime, sweetheart. <laughs> I thought we were friends. Oh, I hope we're more than that, but... I still don't see that that puts me under any obligation to give you chapter and verse of every move I make. A shop? What sort of shop? It's a charity shop, Mr. Sugden. It's the new one opposite the Rovers. I'll be running it for the Friends of Weatherfield Hospital. Heaven knows they need all the extra cash they can get right now. I don't understand. Why all the secrecy? Because we were trying to talk Morris Jones into letting us have it at a peppercorn rent. If the other charities had found out there was a chance of cheap premises, they'd have been in there like a shot. No, what's all this about you only having six months? Not me. It's the length of the lease he's prepared to give us. See, we were trying for a year, but he hopes to sell it before then. Hmm. Well, I wish you'd uh, take me into your confidence, Mrs Bishop. Well, I told no one. Not even Mavis. Trying to get this project up and running's been my top priority. At least it's all signed now. This community is very fortunate indeed to have a lady like you. Now, if you need any assistance, you know you can depend on me for your strong right arm. Indeed I do, Mr. Sutton. Oh, hi. She's just come in. Jennifer, visitor for you. How are things? Mm. I've had another go, but we're still into brick wall territory. It's down to where now. I'm putting it out. Oh! If I'd known you were coming, I'd have made some cucumber sandwiches. Right, I'm off. I'll see you later. I don't know when I'll be back. She's been tactful. I think she's just getting on with her own arrangements. Meaning the world doesn't revolve around me. You're getting very touchy. Can I come in? Well? Oh, Jenny, love, don't be so aggressive. How can we even talk if you start off by taking up a battle stance? Politely. 
I'm telling you that I've had it up to here with interference. Look, I know you didn't take a blind bit of notice of what I said yesterday. Hasn't stopped you coming back, though, has it? Well, when it comes to stubborn redheads, we're two of a kind, thee and me. Rita, you can save your breath. I know all the arguments. I can recite them backwards. But it's not a case of some dirty old man luring this poor victim to a horrible fate. It's not like that. What is it like, then? Well, first of all, I'm not a victim. I know what I'm doing. You think you do? Well, does anybody know for sure when they first start out? I mean, did Sally or Gail? Well, what they got to do with it? Well, look at them now. Both knee-deep in nappies, tied by their apron strings to the kitchen sink. They seem perfectly happy to me. Both leading boring little lives with boring little men. Martin used to be a friend of yours. Well, I outgrew him. Oh, what about your flighty pal, Steph? She doesn't seem bogged down in domesticity to me. Oh, it'll happen. It happens to them all once they've been wed a bit. You're not only exaggerating. You're being grossly unfair to a bunch of perfectly contented people. Well, maybe I am, but it's still not what I want. I want what Robert's offering me. Which is? A buzz. Something different. Independence. Independence? Oh, sorry. Didn't I tell you? Robert's getting me a fancy little flat of my own. Is he getting you a French maid as well? <laughs> Rita, don't be so old-fashioned. It's just a practical arrangement that'll suit us both. I mean, he can stay whenever he can. We'll have a wonderful time. But when he's not there, I certainly shan't be sat in crying. And where does love and companionship and sharing come into this little idyll? At least when we are together, it'll be special. We won't get bored stiff living in each other's pockets seven days a week. You didn't answer my question. I've not had much experience of the kind of cosy, lovey-dovey relationship that you seem to think I should want. If it ever exists. Because it certainly didn't with me mum and dad. Or with him and you. How can you be so sure that my way won't bring me less grief? Well, I do think you might have told me, Emily. Don't you stop. Please, Mavis, I've had quite enough with Mr Sugden. Well, I don't know what Derek's going to say about having a charity shop as a neighbour. It was bad enough thinking there's going to be an amusement arcade. I can't see why it should affect Derek. Well, there'll be old clothes, household junk. It'll attract all sorts of people. Well, that is the intention. Including down and out. That's hardly a very Christian attitude, Mavis. We're helping both the hospital and the community and recycling unwanted goods into the bargain. I should have thought green Derek with his green conscience would have been the first to approve. Oops, sorry. Um, is Mr. Fertile upstairs? Oh, no, I think she's just gone across to Jenny's. Oh, you were right. Shouldn't have gone. Shouldn't have wasted my breath. Oh, hello, Reg. I thought you said seven o'clock. Uh, no, no, I'm afraid I'll have to postpone our little soiree, Rita, low as I am. Oh, well, some other time then, eh? Yeah, well, something's come up at the last minute which I can't get out of, unfortunately. And much as I'd rather spend the evening with you, business. A thousand apologies. Say you forgive me. I forgive you. Now, look, don't stand there getting worked up. If you've got something else to do, you go. I shan't disintegrate for a lack of taste of Tuscany. Well, another time, eh? Yeah, why not? All right. Sarah. Goodbye. Oh, what a shame. At the last minute as well. I know. Could have done with relaxing over a nice bottle of Chianti and a mm. meal somebody else had cooked for me. Did she give you a hard time? She's given herself a harder one. But she's right about one thing, though. She's not had any brilliant examples in her short life of how a good relationship works. Oh, we can all blame our failures on our past, Rita. I mean, my parents were happy enough, but they weren't very demonstrative. There was never a lot of warmth shown. Well, that hasn't affected the way I am with Derek. On the contrary. Maybe. Maybe she's just looking for excuses to do what she wants to do anyway. Whichever. There's nothing more I can do. What were up with old Smith? It looks as if he'd want poles and forgot to post Colton. I don't know. I suppose it was personal. Maybe his mother-in-law would be the last. No. Not only from what he was saying at dinner time, I don't think that would exactly plunge him into depths of despair, you know. Joking about mortality at this present moment in time is in very poor taste, Jack, even for you. Yeah, but it's the only way I can handle it, son. The idea of death depresses me. Well, that's funny. Makes the rest of us feel full of the joy of the spring, doesn't it, Curly? You ought to relax, you know. You're working yourself into a right state. I will only relax when I'm back in my own home on Flaming Monday. Yeah, well, don't think you're sneaking off, you know, after the internment. 
Oh, no, because you're staying till the will's read. Will, that's a joke she had now to leave apart from a pair of false choppers and a couple of dozen summonses for shoplifting. Look, if my mother wanted to do it right in disposing of her little bits and bobs, well, the least we can do is, will it stay and hear her wishes read out? Well, I suppose the old girl might have done us a favour and need a couple of hundred quid in a mattress somewhere, eh? Give over. If my mother did have any savings, which she didn't, you won't get your sweaty mitts on them. See, that's what I get for supporting my wife in a, in a time of sadness and bereavement. I've a good mind not to go now. I'll be there, my little swamp duck. I'll be there. Yeah, well, you better add. Cos if you're not, they'll be digging two holes. Veronica? Mm. I thought you got lost. Got stopped by customs on top of everything else. They went through every single little thing. It was humiliating. I mean, do I look like a smuggler? Well, no, of course not, dear. Was it a good flight? Long. Yes, yes, well, it would be from New Zealand. Mind you, I was taken aback when your sister rang and said you were going to arrive today. It was quite a sudden change of plan. Well, I'm very sorry if it inconvenienced you. No, not at all, dear, not at all. Delighted to have you back. The sooner the better. Only, uh, Eileen did sound a trifle abrupt on the phone. I thought, not a usual self. Really? Yes. Oh, well, perhaps I'm imagining it. Right, well, what we need to do now is get you home, hot bath, good old English cuppa, see if we can cure the jolly old jet lag. Right. Hillside Road, driver, please. My lady wife would be obliged if you'll keep your foot down. She's just jetted in from the Antipodes. Not Hillside Road. Take us to Coronation Street, Weatherfield. Where? Well, that's where the cabin is, I believe. The little shop your lady friend runs. Coronation Street, Weatherfield. But don't stand there like limp lettuce, Reg. Get in. £9.50. £9.50? We've only come from Manchester Airport, you know, not Heathrow. £9.50. I ought to charge you another fiver for the damage you're doing to my eardrums. Uh, hang on a minute. I'm not Mrs. Fairclough. Not guilty either. Uh, these are a bit shop soiled, right. Deirdre, but you're you Mrs. Fairclough, a... aren't you? Yes. Who are you? I'm his wife. And according to my information, you're his latest fancy piece, which gives us rather a lot to talk about, wouldn't you say? Now, just hang on a minute. Veronica. Please. She's a bit overwrought. It's jet lag. You see, it's, it's, it's a 10,000 mile flight from New Zealand. And she probably hasn't slept for 24 hours, plus a zero, you know. You're not going to deny it, are you? I'm not going to do anything except tell you to get the hell out of my shop. You don't know what you've landed yourself into, do you? Do mean you mean landed myself into? How I know he's been sniffing around oh. here. I've had a friend keeping an eye on him while I've been in New Zealand. Not that I need have bothered. I had known him be up through streets in the back garden with our next door neighbour while I was cleaning the front windows. Now, that has to be a lie, hasn't it? I mean, you see, her metabolism's on the blink. Yes, well, her head will be on the blink if she doesn't leave my shop. Oh, don't worry, I'm going. Back to New Zealand, as it happens, just as soon as I've attended to a few matters here, like uh, selling the house. Eh? Oh, didn't I tell you, Reg? I've met another man over there. A proper man, not a jumped-up little shop assistant like you. That's what he was, you know, when we met. And who kicked him up the better by ladder? Yours truly. Oh, we'll give him his due. He did contribute the flannel. He's great on flannel, is Reg. Flannel you into bed, did he? Hey, now, that is quite enough, Veronica, really. Look, I'm are sorry you leaving? Do you know, you're the first of his many lady friends I've managed to corner. Still, flannelers do have to be slippery sods, don't they? Have you no dignity, Veronica? Not a scrap, Reg. Oh. Well, I can't have, can I, stopping with you all these years? Still, it's done me good coming here, getting some of the anger off my chest. Uh, no. No, I won't flatter him, not anger. 
contempt. <sighs> So I owe you a favour, Mrs. Fairclough. A favour? Well, if I'm going back to New Zealand, which I am, I've really not got a lot of use for old Pumpkin Face here, have I? He's redundant to my future, so you can have him, love. Though I warn you, he could do with a new engine. That's if you didn't know that already. <laughs> I'm off now. Cheerio! She doesn't know what she's saying, Rita. When she's had a lie down, she'll be a different sort of woman. 24 hours, she won't know what's happening. I'll be in touch. Don't right. bother. I don't want to see you or your flaming wife in this shop ever again. Now, we shouldn't sink down to her level, Rita. That shows a definite lack of... Get control. out! What do you two want? That packet of envelopes you've got in your hand. Quarter of mint humbugs, please. So, I thought if you could spare anything... Oh, I'm sure I could, Emily. Half my wardrobe's out of date. Well, when I tell you most of it's pre-new look, you'll know what I mean. Well, anything would be more than acceptable. I'll be in the shop in the morning. I'll sort you some out, Emily. You can bet on that. Oh, thanks. Is bothering you? Oh, it's You're as subtle as a cannonball you are sometimes. What are you on about? Well, you give half your clothes to this charity shop of Emily's next year, she'll want to replace them all. But of course. Keep looking in a half-empty wardrobe can play havoc with a girl's morale, especially in February. Why don't you just tell Emily's customers to come over here? I'll give them brass in their hand. Charity. Nobody gives me handouts. Uh, boss, what do you want? Every patient by any chance got a black tie? Yes. Well, can I borrow it for tomorrow? No. Oh, I'll go on. I, I need one for a funeral, you see. Why? I thought you'd be going in your Vincent Clare outfit, then you could nip straight at pub afterwards. Well, no, no, you can't, can you? You've got to show a bit of respect. I mean, after all, this is the wife's mother. Oh, I see. You're hoping to hear something to your advantage, are you, from the will? No, 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 no. She never had no, did Amy? Apart from what she pinched from club. Yeah, go on then. Remind me later on. I think I've got a black tie I once bought for the funeral of a wall of death rider I had on my books. No, a terrible thing, you know. Yeah. It's from fork, snapped. Yeah. Ah! Phil. A post brandy old brandy, perhaps? Oh, I thought you were supposed to smoke a fag after that. Oh, yes, very, very droll. <laughs> well, I'll have one if you'll have one with me. Uh, well, it could lead to a session, the mood I'm in. Why not? Why not indeed? <laughs> Yes? Hello, Rita. It's me, Reg. Get lost. No, please, Rita. Can I come over? I'll say it again. Get lost. Yeah, I've left her, Rita. I've left Veronica. You mean she's thrown you out? Yes, well, let's not split hers. If she hadn't have asked me to leave, that is, I would have. I've left her, that is. I can't live with a mad woman, Rita. That's your business. Well, I, I had rather hoped it might be yours as well, Rita. Mine? Yes. I mean, I haven't got a roof on my head now, have I? And it's not exactly a tropical night out here. Well, that's a fact. Yes, well, you've definitely got a roof over your head. I can actually see it from where I'm standing. Please, Rita. Reg! Yes? You're a liar. You led me to believe that you and your wife had split up. Otherwise, I'd never have walked a dead street with you, let alone go out with you. And you're obviously a practising womaniser, which, as I know to my cost, is a lethal combination in a fella. Grubby little habits and get lost. Oh, Rita, please. Rita? So I'll tell you what it is, should I, Phil? Go on. You're standing there, sure of yourself in your prime, thinking you're in control of your own life. You're not. You no, nah, I used to think that when I was your age. I knew exactly where I was going. Where? To the top. Where else? Oh, yeah. Boy, I, I've always been smarter than practically anybody I've ever known. Hello. Where have I finished up at here? The Rover's return. Oh, what's wrong with that? It's a good little boozer. Small time, Phil. Small time. Do you know what my favourite word is? What? Yeah. Impresario. It's got a ring to it, is that? Impresario. But what does it mean exactly? I mean, what does an impresario do? It means you can make your own sunshine. That's what it means. I used to see myself as another Lou Grave, you know. Yeah? What went wrong? 
nothing, nothing went wrong as such. I'm still smarter than most. It's just that nothing ever fell exactly into place. You know what I mean? There was a snack. For instance, I used to have a singer on my books. Oh, great voice. It looked like Charles Charles Nest. You know, I used to think, Frankie Vaughan, eat your heart out. What happens? He's practicing his top B one night. A wasp flies down his throat and he's dead within ten minutes. You see, you can't fight look like that, Phil. Oh, that must have been terrible, Ali. Uh, it was. I'd just bought him three new stage suits. Ed, you should have been in the cabin last night. Why? What happened? You know that fella Rita's been going out with? Reg. Reg Oldman. His wife only turned up. Gave Peter a right earful. Ooh. Tell me more. Well. I'm warning you, Will. Don't you dare. Why? Who is it you don't want to speak to? Never you mind. Oh, it's Reg better by, isn't it? My, he's becoming the attentive swain. Never off the phone, always wanting to whine and dine you. Well, I'd answer it if I were you, Rita. I mean, opportunities don't grow on trees at your age, do they? I'm warning you, if you don't stop phoning me, I'll be phoning somebody, like the police. Are you getting obscene phone calls? I'll be obscene if he phones again. If who phones again? Oh, you might as well know. If I don't tell you, somebody else will. Reg, I'll give him his cards. Why? It seems they weren't separated at all. His wife came marching in here last night. His wife? Really? And don't say really like that, and don't look at me like that, either. Like what? Like you think it's funny. <laughs> well, you've always tended to laugh at me in similar circumstances. I'm never getting involved with another fella. <laughs> right, are you ready? Mm. I wonder if Alex got a black ball or that. I think I've got dead smart in a black ball. <laughs> I think you got a job as a bailey. Now, come on, hurry up, we're going to be late. Who knows how much she might, might have left you, Mother? <laughs> Is that all you can think of it? We are going to a funeral, you know. Isn't it? Could be a few, Bob, you know. I mean, if she was still shoplifting, she wouldn't have had to spend a pension, would she? Oh, Jack. Yes, Peter, my love. Look, I know you didn't like my mother, but she was my mother, and we are going to a funeral. So, look, I want you to behave yourself. I don't want any cracks about shoplifting. I don't want any questions about how much you left. Just keep your face straight and your gob shut. Got that? Yes, Vera. And try not to make a pig of yourself at boil down. No, Vera. <laughs> Word. Oh, thank you very much, Beth. Where shall I put them? Uh, well, let's have them over here, Beth. Right, <laughs> oh, that's great. Thanks very <laughs> much. Hey, are you sure you want to get rid of some of these? They look brand new to me. Don't you start. Alec had tears in his eyes when I left the pub with him. <laughs> well, you seem to have a fair amount of stuff already. Hey, we're not doing too badly, though I'm afraid a lot of it's rubbish. Oh, I won't worry about that. Phyllis Pierce sent a jar of old lentils to a jumble sale last week and they were snapped up like that. <laughs> hey, listen, I have a couple of pairs of shoes I can let you have. Oh, and a pair of boots that stop my circulation. Oh, <laughs> bye, you. bye, and See you, Beth. Hey, Emily, do you see me in this? No. Can you see anybody in it? Apart from Beth, that is. No. And don't be catty. Oh, is it? <laughs> Three currants, I counted. Did you? Three, and she has the nerve to call them fruit scones. Is that a fact? And they're five pence dearer than the plain ones. Uh, really? Yeah, I've not complained, though. Oh, haven't you? No, I went until the day she got a shop full. Yeah. Percy? Yes? Have you ever kept terriers? Terriers? Yeah, terriers. Because you've got the same belligerent, unattractive characteristics, and it's very, very boring. Hello, Percy. All right, I love. Well, I was till your husband just insulted me. I don't come in here to be insulted, you know. Where do you go? Oh. No, it was a joke, you see, Percy. And fellas are the ones supposed to have a sense of humour. What's Percy been doing to you? 
Breathing. Look, love, if it's upset you that much, I'll go and get them clothes back and I'll wear them till they drop off me back. Yeah, it's not your clothes. It's Percy and this place. I should have done something better with my life, better. Everybody feels like that. I bet a jockey wishes he was riding an elephant sometimes. No, but I really think I had it in me, you know, to make me mark in the world. Instead of which I finish up landlord of a backstreet pub. And this is where I'll end up now, no danger. You know what your trouble is? You've got a hangover. Everybody's life looks worse through a hangover. You must have a permanent hangover then. Oh, my God. Do you know, there's nothing more pathetic than a middle-aged fella feeling sorry for himself, except perhaps a wet bee. You've got it over with, Vera. Right? Yeah. The funeral, I thought it went very well. Oh, yeah, it did. I had Snapes' funeral services for Harold, you know. I had no complaints. But you were old, didn't you? Hey. <coughs> for what we are about to receive, May the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. 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 Didn't know your sister be religious. She's not. I think it's just because she's just been to a few. No. Who's the fancy fella? Joss. Some of the drug. I think that's what Auntie Sissy said. Relation, is he? No, just a mate of my mum's. Seems to know you. Well, let me just say that. Keeps looking at you. What is this I'm supposed to be sucking? Oh, it's been so anti-sissish, just too tall. Yeah, well, I'm flaming not, am I? But this lettuce is making me am damp. Oh, stop complaining. You were supposed to enjoy a funeral after the cemetery. It's like a... It's like a flaming wake. Mm. One thing I haven't a chance to tell you, Vera. Oh, yeah, what's that? Your mother left a will. Oh, yeah. Witnessed properly and all, weren't it, Joss? Just days before she passed away. Very harrowing. Where is it then? Uh, no, well, it's in my handbag. I'll show it to you. After we've had this tease. This is going to be a carve up between these two, but on me, we're going to finish up with all this rubbish furniture. A photograph of your mother. Isn't that the one the police took? Robert not with you, is he? I mean, I wouldn't want him to see me like this, otherwise he might think all women look completely revolting when they've just washed their hair and go completely off of you. Oh, I'm forgetting, though, he's much married, isn't he? He'll have seen his wife doing her ablutions often enough in their avocado bathroom. You never let it drop, do you, the fact that he's married? Boring you, Anna? Yes, you are. I was hoping it might be just beginning to prick your conscience. Well, I'd save my breath if I was you. No, I'll go on boring you till the minute I leave here. I'll keep saying you're making a cock up of your life before you've even started living it, Jenny Bradley. He's married, he's too old, and he's too good looking. How can you be too good looking? Because he's got to keep proving it. Oh, God, Freud, according to Angie Freeman now. He's married, he's too old, Do you know and he's. What? I could say the same about you. I mean, you're not exactly conforming, are you? Look at you. You're not far from being a weirdo. You'll probably marry another weirdo. And he'll sod off to Kathmandu or somewhere, and you'll end up a one pair of weirdo family. It's some stones. Yes, if you just stop preaching at me. Because you're not perfect, not by a long chunk. Just like Rita Fairclough isn't. And talking of stones, people like you and her that live in glass houses. I don't need to say the rest, do I? He's married, he's too old, and he's too good looking. Oh, she was the right card, was aiming, and no mistake. And couldn't she tell a tale? Yeah, like when they were kids. <clears throat> used to go down to chip shop down Conran Street. <laughs> Flicking peas onto brims of those big hats the women used to wear. Seems to know a lot about your mother. And there was uh, this well-off woman uh, she used to tell about who lived in uh, Law Victoria Street. You know, she had an ear trumpet. You couldn't believe everything our Amy said. She tended to exaggerate. Well, I suppose you want to know what's in her will, Vera. This will be a waste of time. Yeah, I would. She didn't have much to leave as well, you can imagine. Mostly what you can see in here. And her clothes, such as they were. Joss has arranged for somebody to come and do a valuation. He's a pal of mine, has a second-hand shop. Let's tell you. But she wanted you to have her ornaments, Vera. Like a, 
Anne Hathaway's cottage and the Tower of Refuge from the Isle of Man. She left me a Westminster chime. Ask her if there was any brass. Did she leave any money at all? Only debts. She hadn't paid the milkman for a month. I settled up with him. Not before he got a pension, I suppose. Mm. Is that it? No, you forgot the locket with a piece of Vera's hair in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that'll make a bum. <laughs> but your mother's last wish, Vera, nearly the last thing she said before... Joss wrote it down as she spoke, didn't you, Joss? Word for word. Though, uh, it wasn't easy to hear that. Well, what was it, a last wish? Hmm. <clears throat> I would like my daughter, Vera, to do everything in her power to look after my dear friend and companion, Joss Shackleton, and to see he comes to no harm and wants for nothing till the day we meet again in heaven. Brings tears to your eyes, doesn't it? Ah, recovered, Alec. From the general despair of the spirit, no. I was thinking more about last night. We must have done for a bottle of brandy between us. We did? Yeah. But buried in that alcoholic fog, I think there was the glimmering of an idea there, you know. Oh, what? Well, like you said, I used to be the Rick Blaine of Weatherfield once. You know, the Humphrey Bogart character in Casablanca. Yeah, I know. Well, I could be again, couldn't I? I mean, we're short of a good club round here, in a classy place. You know, nothing like your grotty Shabine. Couldn't agree more, Alec. Really? Absolutely. Ah, well, I've not been put out to grass. Not yet. Not by a long chalk. Yes. Filippo, lovey. Yes, Ben. You wouldn't be the cause of the present low in my husband's life, would you? You wouldn't be trying to put red-blooded ideas into his greying hair? Me? No way, Ben. If I have ideas, I normally keep them to myself, because they're usually worth money. Yes, well, remember. I'll be the one having to push his wheelchair if he ruptures himself reaching for a pipe dream. Thank you very much. I should have known that. I don't think we ever grew up in America. Um, do you mind if we go and join Rita? Well, she seems to be with a friend. Sir? She drinks vodka and Johnny. And a friend? Lager, Bobby. Hi. Hello. I'm with Robert. So I see. Do you mind if we join you? No, why should I? Oh. Well, I don't suppose you can really object to Robert anymore, can you? Can't I? It was just that I heard about Reg Holzer's wife calling into the cabin last night to give you a piece of her mind. I thought you said they were separated. He said they were. Really? You could have tried very hard to check up, could you? Unless, of course, you weren't that bothered whether he and his wife were still together. That's enough, Jerry. Oh, I see. When the boot's on the other foot, you don't like it, do you? I call that being a hypocrite. What do you think, Here we are. Oh, I've got this right. Vodka for you, Mrs. Becker. Thank you. Lager for... Uh... Uh, Deirdre. Deirdre Barlow. Robert Weston, how do you do? How do you do? Well, this is cosy. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, darling. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. You know, I really like this pub. And the beer's so good, too. Well, I don't mind telling you, it's come as a complete surprise to me. I thought I knew all of my mum's mates. I don't want to criticise you, Vera, but you haven't seen all that much of your mother in the past few years. Well, it's as much her fault as it is mine. She didn't exactly make herself popular last time she came to stay with us. Well, I think she was under a lot of stress, caused mainly by your Jack's attitude. Mm, well, that's understandable, I suppose. That's as maybe. How friendly towards Amy was this Joss fella? Oh, they'd known one another for donkey's years since she was a girl. He lived in the next street. Funny she never mentioned him that time when she was stopping with us. Oh, well, I think he were caught in somebody then. Uh, somebody he met at one of them lonely arts clubs, but she died. Are you sure it was Amy's idea for our Vera to look after him, or was it Joss's? Because he looks a bit of a sponger to me. No, it was definitely Amy's. 
She was very fond of him. If you ask me, she thought more about him than she did her husband. Anyway, she made amends in the end, didn't she? How do you mean? Well, she brought us together, you and me. Oh, yeah, I wanted to have a word with you about that part of the will, you know. I mean, it's all right you and her being close, but you're a complete stranger Look, to me. She, she knew what she was doing, Vera. What do you mean? Well, she was trying to right a wrong. Right a wrong? Hasn't the penny dropped? What penny? Well, I was a lot closer to your mother than just a friend. Oh. A lot closer. I'm your father, Vera. My father? That's right, Vera. Your father. Amy's will makes a lot of sense now, doesn't it, love? Freezing. I can't sleep. It's, it's all these pictures, me and my mum, and a lot of those will near where my mum's smiling. <laughs> and I found this one at yours. It is him, isn't it? Only when I were younger. Yes, that's Joss, yes. And I found one of me and my mum and dad. <laughs> dad. I don't feel right saying that anymore. I mean, I feel differently now, you know, knowing what I know. Vera, your dad was your dad. All right. So why did Joss say that I were his daughter? Do you really want my opinion? Well, of course I do. Because he's a nutter. Oh, cut it out. Oh, Jack. come on, V. You've seen him. He's off a different flaming planet. He'd say anything to anybody to get a bit of attention. All right. So why did my mum, in her last will and testament, tell me to look after him? Because she'd left everything else to Auntie Sissy. That's why. Wonderful sense of you, me, your mother. Well, I just keep seeing things, remembering things. I do remember Joss. I just woke up now, having dreamt that he took me to the park. I do remember him. He's in my past, Jack. And look, there's one of him here, standing right next to me, ma'am. Standing next to her, yes. I stand next to Betty Turpin every day behind the bar. Doesn't mean I have fathered a child. You're going to need more evidence than that. The only real witness to all that was your mother, God rest her. No, no. Look, my mum asked me to look after him for a special reason. Love, he loved. Hang fire, will you? This is a bad time to be handling all this. You're grieving too much, love. The, the, the last thing I want you to do is be jump into conclusions because you've lost the last member of your family. Now, promise me. Promise me you will think things through properly. being very clever about this. So what? You've definitely got a destructive streak. Prefer enemies to friends. Well, in my experience, there's not much difference between them. You shouldn't have shown her up in the pub. It's just put her back on. <sighs> she needed reminding that nobody's perfect. At least of all her. You know, this moral judgment stuff about married men. Let her without sin love the first brick. <sighs> Come on, let's go. And no wonder it keeps falling off. It's like department of no idea these days. Coffee? No. Uh, yes, yes, sorry, yes, I'll have a coffee, maybe. Thank you. It's on your side, Mrs. 
No, it's not. It's on yours. I beg your pardon. I better change my water. Morning. Morning, Deirdre. He must have been up at the crack of dawn. Morning. Morning. I'd be surprised if he slept at all. He didn't even give me a chance to finish my breakfast. Well, you've a good, uh, what, six hours yet before the ship sets sail? Really? Well, I just might be screaming man overboard by then. Oh, thank you for offering to perform the official opening. It means a lot to us, and the hospital, of course. I'm honoured. Only, don't crack onto your customers. You saw me and Miss Lippers buying cornflakes. They feel distinctly let down. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you later in the two-piece. Right. Bye, love. Bye. Club. Well, it, it doesn't exist yet. You and Phil Jennings, is that what you were talking about? Setting up a club? Uh, not a club. The club. Well, I mean, he's an entrepreneur and I'm uh, godfather of Clubland. Well, I was in Weatherfield. And who'd own the club? Well, both of us. But I'd get the best deal, you see, because on top of coming out with partners, go to management salary, I'd sling artists in there and take a percentage to be a gold mine. It's not a bad idea. Call it that, eh? Gilroy's gold mine. What, Jan? Eh? We've got this place. Oh, for now we have, yes. But, I mean, money they spend in here is not going to lie as in luxury, is it? Oh, you've got to think ahead, Bed. What with? Where does the money come from? Oh, don't worry about that at this stage. Now, look, look, just, uh, just suppress your tunnel, vi tunnel vision for the moment and consider the chief disposable income comes from the 18 to 25-year-olds, doesn't it? Well, the only repository for their money to burn at the moment in time is that Maxine's down Dale Street. Well, have you seen it? It's a bin liner with a glitter ball. They can't get to a bar for a drink, you know. Their feet stick to the carpet. We could outshine that dive, no danger. It's a minute, it's a minute. Just coming back to my tunnel vision, just mm. for a sec, have you forgotten the form on your so-called partner? Phil, he's a good businessman. Borderline craze you once in plan. Nah, no, he comes in for a lot of stick, but it's only because he does so well. Alec is bent. They're all bent, bent. Bank charged me a tenner to cash a cheque to the day, a tenner. I knew they'd get away with it, you see, because they've got letter heads. Alec is in a different league. Promise me you'll be careful there. Uh, you won't agree to anything, will you? Uh, you have no ambition, you. Morning, workers. Ah, sleep well, I trust, Phil. Wonderfully. Just nipping across to get a paper. Oh, well, Betty will get your breakfast, won't you, Betty? Thanks, Betty. All right. I say. Please, Betty, wouldn't go amiss, you know. I am doing these breakfasts as a favour. Yes, small-mindedness. I'm plagued by it. Is it me, or do all men smell of old men? I think it's just because they've been hanging around for a while. French Revolutionary, to guess. He wants turfing out, this. Nonsense. Oh. No. <laughs> it's worth a fire of anybody's money now. You know... I've heard you talk about this lodger of yours, but seeing is definitely believing. He puts me in mind of a Jack Russell we once had. Well, I'd be very grateful if you'd keep him busy, Ruby. But don't ask. He responds best to orders. Percy, this carton wants emptying if you're standing idle. I didn't swan in here half an hour ago, and it's Mr. Sugden to you. I'll have to pop home for a moment. I've got to make a phone call. I'm trying to generate some interest from the Gazette. Oh, best of luck, then. We asked them to do an article on the Walton Street shop. Not a word. Oh, uh, Mrs Bishop, who's in charge while you're not here? Oh, uh, I'm a friend of Weatherfield Hospital. Well, what do you think this is, sabotage? Uh, I'm sure you'll both look after everything very well. What say? You're very active for your age, Percy. It's a pity you are not. What? <laughs> now, I know you said I shouldn't come here, but well, I just wanted to see where you worked, not just from the outside. Yeah, but, um... It's all right. Your receptionist has just gone for a lunch. It's not her I'm worried about. Senior partners. Oh. New patient, Jenny Bradley. Acute toothache. And I'll skip the NHS to get it sorted. You are too cheeky. Mm. 
It's all part of my charm, though, isn't it? Young, free-spirited, no ties. Jenny. All right, come on, we'll escape to Pizza Express. No. But my wife, Linda. You promised not to talk about her. I already know more than I want to. Look, I'm not stupid. I know the score. And I know the pitfalls. Being? Well, when you've had enough of me, you start telling me how wonderful Linda's been to you. How she looks after the kids. How she saw you through college. And then it's goodbye, Jenny. Hey, but I'm not pretending otherwise. I mean, I saw enough girls at Polly get roped into that scene not to have picked up a few tips. First of all, I want you to know how difficult this is for me. You what? It isn't enough. It's not satisfactory. I can't go on the way we are. Last night, at home, the kids know they can pick it up. The atmosphere stinks. They seem to bear the brunt of mine and Linda's differences, and I just think it's time I got out of there. What? I'm leaving her. I love you, Jenny. You don't know what that means to me. Try me. I do need to know where I stand. I love you, too. You've got to believe that. I'll tell her tonight. Shops are quite important, really. I mean, didn't everybody can shop in boutiques? You look perished. Oh, Haven't you go? I only work down there at the cabin. Watch this space. Oh. Hey, do you mind? Oh. Not at all. Get out of it. Go on. Oh, Mr. Mistress. Nervous. Quaking. This is what politics is all about, you know. None of your front and back bench stuff. If I make a mess of quitting that ribbon, I've lost at least 20 voters in the May elections. <laughs> Seriously, I think you're just what they need. Thanks very much. Problem. But uh, I'm afraid we're running behind schedule, so can we? Um... Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes. Um, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the, the purpose of this shop is for the Friends of Weatherfield Hospital to raise funds. And we've been granted a temporary lease on this shop by the builder, Morris Jones, whom we'd like to thank most sincerely. And good luck to him. Yes, Waiting sure. for another property boom. <laughs> but thanks in particular to Councillor Deirdre Barlow for coming to give us the official send-off. I hope there's a film in that. Well done, Deirdre! I'd like to ask her to officially make everyone welcome to the new premises. That's right, yeah. I need to speed things up or the press might disappear. Oh, fine. All right, okay, yes, all right. Oh, can you manage? Yes, right, okay. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> 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 
Well, there's not a lot I can add to that. <laughs> Mind-blowing, isn't it, eh? Come to Weatherfield and raise your boredom threshold. Shut up, misery. Well, it's only because Emily and Percy fancy the sell behind the counter. Why don't he wed her and I don't know? It's called charity, Alec. A word that doesn't exist in your vocabulary. Yeah. And to all who say it. <laughs> Could we have Mrs. Bishop with Councillor Barlow, please? Get up the front row, Percy. <sighs> Does a good job, doesn't she? I mean, some councillors just sit on their hands. At least Deirdre's got a grip on what the uh, community needs. Alec, phone call. All oh, right, thanks, Betty, love. <laughs> Big plans afoot, then? Oh, Alec told you. Weren't well, meant to be a secret, were it? God, no. Plans like these, you shout them from the rooftops. Advanced publicity. That way you inform your competitors just enough to rattle their confidence. Imagine if somebody said they were opening a pub across the road. Half-priced booze, taxis home. You'd soon throw in the towel, wouldn't you? Not me, Cocker. I come from a long line of fight to the death merchants. In my teens, I won fellas I never dreamed I could have. It's all to do with having the bottle. Still, in my midterm, I'm happy to settle for Captain Pugwash. He steers a good ship, providing his compass isn't tampered with. Hey, hang on. This club was as much his idea as mine. I mean, I started the ball rolling, but Alec dived in with a stack of good ideas. Yes, well, I wish you'd do me a favour and drop it. He's dangerous let loose on fantasies, my Alec. I don't know what your problem is, Bert. Seriously, a club like this, the easy part's the investment, the hard part's running it. That's where I thought you would have been a masterstroke. Me? Yeah. Half the clubs round here are run by fat, big old greasy barrels with fags hanging out. No class, no presence. You'd have been a smash. Alec never set out to me. Didn't he? The mother dying, you know, Betty. It's knocked up a six. Well, it does, you know. It makes you suddenly start to count in where your days have gone. I mean, there's a lot younger than her that slipped off, you know. Oh, yeah, it's more complicated than that, though, Betty. Oh? She got left an Uncle Joss in the will. Uncle Joss? What's that when it's at home? An old fella. But you can't inherit people. Funny, I said that. She's fond of this Uncle Joss. Well, she's never met him before the funeral. I mean, not to recognise, you know. This could only happen in your family. Vera's. <laughs> You've not heard the worst of it. Oh, again, Betty. Oh, Betty, yeah, hang on. What are you doing out after work, love? Um, uh, no. Well, can you come over and talk to her, make her laugh a bit? I mean, I'm, I'm trying my best, but the more the merrier, you know. Yeah, of course I will, if it'll help. Probably. Thanks, Betty. OK, my love. Thank you very much, Mrs Hargreaves. I don't believe it. Everybody's bringing and nobody's buying. It's always like this when you first open, Emily. I think we've got machines in there for recycling them. Have we taken any money yet? I have. Oh, Bobby Dazzler. You know, it's uh, it's got the cut of an old WAF uniform. Very fetching, very fetching. You see... There's nothing here for your good timers. It's all pretend hippies who can't even remember the first coming, and heavy drinkers who'll stop at nothing to stay away from home. What do you reckon makes a really good club, then? I mean, come on, you're the expert. What is that magic ingredient? Front man. Oh, yes. You could open a club the size of Old Trafford and give the beer away. They'd not come near. Not without atmosphere. Front man? Ah, uh, absolutely. Remember that club I had in Stretford, you know, in the 60s? It was just me, two acts a night, and a well greased till they flopped in. Phil Jennings seems to have slightly different ideas than that. Well, what's he been saying? Well, same as you, except he'd put a woman up from. A woman? Hmm. Me, in particular. It's my name he'd put up over that door. When? When did he say this? 
This dinner. He reckons that I'd be the kind of magic that you'd both be looking for. Still, it's academic now, isn't it? Cos you've gone right off the idea. Tell her what you like. Alex broke his neck if you want, as long as it's cheerful. Yeah, but I can't avoid the subject now, can I? I mean, Vera's mum's died. She's got to be talked through it. Yes, is it? But I want you to point out the positives. Yes, yeah, but listen... <sighs> Look who's come to see you. Oh, hiya, love. Come in, sit down. I've just brewed. I just thought I'd offer my condolences, love. Yeah, shame, on it? Mm. Uh, Man, she didn't have a bad life, did she? And she walked back end of six, mm. eh? She's flipped, Betty. Hello. What's he doing here? Oh, grand pigeons. One or two got claw rot, but uh, all in all, a very impressive setup. <laughs> uh, Joss, this is Betty. Uh, Betty, this is my dad. <laughs> I'll do. I'll do. <laughs> it's all right. I haven't come for fisticuffs, Jenny. Not here as landlord either. She's told you then? Yes, she has. I don't happen to agree. But that's for another time. We always do that, don't we? Another time. Do you know, I don't think we do. I mean, we have had our different views, Jenny, but we've always got over them. It's not me that likes rowing. You don't like to think you do. Can we start again? I'm here to tell you it's you I'm thinking of. Ah, uh, that's not the first today, Rita. Andy tried that one earlier. You know what? Everybody's pretending to be on my side without actually listening to what I've got to say. It's a farce. What have you to say? Robert's leaving his wife. I'm moving in here. Well... No one's thought that far ahead yet. No. Still, there's plenty of time. And in the meantime, what? Angie out, Robert in, while you make your minds up? Would it matter? Well, of course it would. This is still my house. You're a lodger here, like she is. You're rich, you are. On the one hand, you claim to treat me like I'm your own, but when it suits you, I'm a lodger. That's not what I meant, and you know I'm it. I'm 20, Rita. Like you said, I'm not a teenager. Look, all I did was fall in love with him. It's not a crime, you know. It doesn't make me simple or naive. No. You're 20. He's touching 40 with a family behind him. You start by saying that you're not going to elect me, then here it comes. Well, shall I tell you something, Rita? You've had a lot of disappointments in your life. Letdowns. What I don't want is your hang-ups. Taking whatever fate throws at me because you let things happen to you and I am not going to follow that you pattern. you dare speak to me like that. Yes. Yes. Yes, I have made mistakes. Moves in here over my dead body. 